Israel, Yahweh we <laughs> Hallelujah. So, Shema Israel, Yahweh Eloheinu is our powers. Yahweh is one. And you shall love Yahweh, your powers, with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your soul. And it was these words or things that, you that I command upon your hearts this day, that you shall drill them to your children, that you shall speak of them when you're going in your way, when you're sitting in your home, and you're laying down and you're rising. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hands, and they are frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Hallelujah. All right. So now, now for the opening of the Torah. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, King of the universe, who has chosen us from amongst the people and given us your Torah of truth. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. For the reading of Exodus 20. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim which have brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other Elohim before me. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous El visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands and thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments. You should not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the day of the Shabbat, keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, for the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the day of the Shabbat and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land, which Yahweh thy Elohim gives you. You should not kill. You should not break wedlock. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You should not lust after your neighbor's house. You should not lust after your neighbor's woman, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the shofar and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moshe, speak with us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moshe said unto the people, fear not, for Elohim has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moshe drew near into the, thick, into the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, thus you shall say unto the children of Israel, 
you have ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make with me Elohi of silver, neither shall you make me make unto you Elohi of gold. An altar of earth you shall make unto me, and shall sacrifice therein your ascending smoke offerings, and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto you, and I will bless you. And if you will make me an altar of stone, you should not build it of hewed stone. For if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. Neither shall you go up by steps unto my altar, that your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Say what? Say what? I guess I guess I start. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Yeah. To the remnant, to the return, to the called out, to the chosen and those that remain faithful into the end. This is Sibaya Meek Note Milk Ministries. Uh, we are joined together um, on this virtual uh, Zoom box with our fellow brothers in the return, uh, undiclo undisclosed, but in, in the return. Of the returns, hallelujah. Yeah. hallelujah. Giving praise, hallelujah. hallelujah. Giving praise to Yahweh, our Father, Yahweh El Elyon, the most high power in the heavens above. Uh, to our husband man, Yah Yahushua Hamashiach, and our high priest after the order of Malki Tadik, forever sitting on a throne, mediating on behalf of our sins as we give a daily sacrifice. And to the Malik Yahweh, the angel of Yah, the Holy Spirit, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh to the three of them. Bless them that they may bless us in return in this return. This is Sibaya coming with another. Uh, right now, we're going to do this a little different. It's not Sibaya just talking. We have um, our main spokesperson uh, that we're going to do a roundtable today on the come out of her so-called doctrine, right? Is this command spiritual or just physical? There are many other um, demonic arguments and straw man arguments and foolish arguments that ignorant people throw on the table to throw a wrench to block those that could be in fear, uh, just don't understand or are blinded by what the Christian uh, prophetical evangelistic uh, foreshadows have predicted the whore of Babylon comes out of her, the Christian church may meet. And they do this because these devils uh, that call themselves um, bruised or the awakened don't want their, they are rebels and they are violent against the command of Yah, the law of Yah, the covenant of Yah. And they don't want truly a real return to come under the state that Yah wants to bring, to bring us back under the bond of the covenant and under complete control, control under his rule. They don't want that. These are the ones that are stealing the vineyard and don't want to give it back. These are the murderers of Messiah and all the prophets that he sent before and after him. These are the ones amongst us that are traitors of the truth and will turn us in in the end. These are the ones um, that will do anything to make sure that this return actually is hindered. These are the ones that have the blood of all the holy prophets on them found in Babylon where they sit. So I don't want to do a nine hour, 10 hour. I could do another 10 hour, 20 hour, pulling out brand new scriptures, proving all of this stuff all over again a thousand times. Like I said, every prophet spoke about the end. And what we want to deal with the specific dumb man arguments, straw man arguments, right? Um, that, hold on. Let me give you the arguments because they so dumb it's hard to say. The main argument, so anybody watching, I've, I've, I've opened up my comments recently because I want an opportunity, one, uh, to see what the devil got the brain that's any different than that I've already spanked his butt with. But you know, the devil is rebellious. You can spank him a thousand times and he's still going to get up and wag his tongue at you, right? Um, but I have to entertain some of this stupidness because honestly, our people are ignorant and they slow to hear and they don't read themselves or they're lazy or they are in fear themselves, right? Um, so I have to bring the argument for the people to hear because 
that's how the message has got to get out. That's just what it is. Unfortunately, we have to have a fight with a stupid man and a stupid mind for our people to see we're going to win the fight at the end of the day. Sometimes it's helpful to know what it's not, not just learn what it is. That's right. Uh, as my sister said, it's helpful to know what it's not, to know what it is. So I got to show you what it's not. <laughs> or we're going to show you what it's not, but we're going to have a round. Let's make sense, right? Now, one of our brothers here always say, like, make, make it make sense. Say, come on, y'all. Stop being a stupid people, right? You could admit that you might be afraid. This is a fearful return. This is a, yeah, this is an altering of our life and an altering of the world as the world is altering right before us. And every time that there was a shift of world powers and an altering of the rulership of this world, it always was in war. And in each one of those wars, we, we got more scattered, y'all. We was the ones that was greatly affected by all of these world wars and these shiftings of world powers and world rulers, because it was always about us in the end. So one of the dumb arguments that you'll see some fool named Zachariah Fritz, but that fool represents just about a lot of our people right now mm -hmm. and, and the rebellious fools that think they know something, right. that Babylon is, I must say, just a system. I said again that Babylon has a system. By this system, he has caused the whole world to fornicate by the system, he has sat on the neck of all the nations and ruled. N notice that ruling can be by force or by compliance. This is what they're not understanding. That when this Babylon has ruled all nations, it doesn't mean, mean that they was in compliance with the system, right? That Babylon is a system. That we just need to come out the system. And I keep asking people to explain this system of Babylon. Because by the time you explain the system, I'm going to prove to you once again that there's only one way that has been prescribed that we're going to get out this system. Name the system. If you say it's the economic system, then there's only one way that we're going to get out this economic system, right? Mm -hmm. Go back to the wilderness where our food mm -hmm. and our shelter is totally dependent on Yah. But that's a courageous, miraculous step that y'all not ready for. So y'all is bringing us out in a way that we can learn his faith and trust in him little by little as we shed off our faith in money, our faith in homes and property, right? Describe this system. All right, I'm not gonna do too much. All right, I know. Babylon's sins are just spiritual, right? That, the, that come out of her sins, right? They, they, they remove the plagues. It says, you didn't address come out of her sins. And sins is everywhere. This is what this fool says. Sins is everywhere. Right? So it just means come out of her sins. And that's why it's not physical. <laughs> it's just spiritual. You got to just stop. Keep the commandments and stop sinning. Right. Okay. While in Babylon. While, while in Babylon still, right? Uh, right? Babylon is everywhere. Right? Basically, either by its sins. The sins are everywhere, the whole world, or the system that's everywhere that you can't escape. Yet, y'all told us to escape, right? Um, and when you show them that it implies something physical to do, not just spiritual, that Babylon's destruction or wrath is on the whole world. So there's nowhere to run. Where are you going to escape from the, the raft of Babylon or the raft of sin? or the raft of a system, right? This is their argument. And when you, most people are familiar with Jeremiah 50 and 51's prophecies clearly about the destruction of Babylon, where you can see a lot of what John the Revelator in Revelations has precepted a lot of his verbiage from. And a lot of Christians actually do understand that Jeremiah 50, 51 is talking about Babylon today, right, America. They may still say it's a system, but you can't. By the time you believe in Jeremiah 50, 51, you know that the command is not spiritual. It's physical, right? And that it's not a spiritual raft. It's a physical raft. And it's in a specific located place in the world, but not the whole world. But Where a lot that? of people dismiss Jeremiah 50 and 51 
by saying that it's already happened. It's history. And those that use that argument, if you clearly show them how it's not, which we're going to do today, then they'll jump to AD 70. The fleet, right? They'll jump to AD 70, but AD 70 is not the command. The, AD 70 is, there's no command to flee Babylon from AD 70. You know what I'm saying? AD 70 ain't got no place in this come out of her doctrine. But somehow they throw that on the table. They mix it up with the ba Babylon Nebuchadnezzar with AD 70. They, they, go, they jump from one to the other and confuse you about a siege against where we mainly was that we supposed to be fleeing from. And we're going to prove here today that even though in AD 70, uh, Yahushua gave a command for that present uh, beginning of destruction of Jerusalem and the siege that's going to happen to us in Babylon to flee from her, everyone counts that as just AD 70, not realizing it's in time prophecy that when Yah says Jerusalem, it also is wherever the majority of us are located. That is Jerusalem, as in you can find so-called maps where we had Judah land right in west africa and everywhere we go we would obviously name our towns and cities after the memory of where we came from we do that in america now right name streets and neighborhoods after our leaders or kings right <laughs> uh or great nations that we remember or worship as you know America does that. A lot of people does that. So just because you find a map in Africa that says Jerusalem, that's not the literal Jerusalem. That's where we as a people now hoovered and located and gathered again to reform who we were as a people, whether in Torah or not, right? And so this is one of the uh, big misunderstanding that we have that people that are just listening to people because it sounds good and they don't fact check and read it the book themselves to find out what is what. We're gonna prove that Jeremiah's prophecies of Babylon did not already happen concerning Jer uh, flee Babylon and the destruction of Babylon as he spoke about it in Jeremiah 50 and 51 and others. We're not gonna go through all the prophecies because we wanna to try to keep this short and just stick to these points. Even though there's a lot of other points we could bring out in each prop, very specific things that these prophecies uh, connote. And um, we're going to dismantle it and hopefully that our keyboard warriors and our trolls and our monitoring spirit angels Amen. sent by Yah Amen. will get this message across to the four corners of the world. Amen. Amen. Zoom out yeah. to the four winds, <laughs> wherever we are. Amen. Amen. That's our job. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm going to sit back. I like to jump in there a lot. Some of y'all may not like the way I jump in, so I'm going to do my best and hand it over. Uh, to the other assemblies to um, go through this argument and hopefully that we can open up people's eyes to see the truth of the matter. Now, fear is another issue, right? We know that we still have to deal with the fear of the commands. Granted. Amen. All right. Amen. And since Malka is in control of the keyboard from this side, she has the control of, so she has to uh, work this. But y'all, we're gonna get into a conversation. Um, and anyone in the behind uh, the heads of the uh, conversation, if they have anything to say or bring to the table in our discussion, feel free, but come up to the mic wherever you are so that we don't have that lag time. All right, let's have this discussion. Round table talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'll leave it to uh, one of the brothers to start off with the scripture if you want to read this. And uh, we'll start it off that way. All right, I'll take it. Read it. Hey, Kia, one second. Brother Brett had something uh, that he wrote up. Uh, that he wanted to kind of kind of set the tone with. Okay, go for it. And then go, go from there. Okay, this is this uh, statement about the beginning 
of Babylon, America. In the late 1500s began the intense colonization of the West or the New World by Europeans. The English, the French, Spanish, Scottish, Irish, Dutch, and Portuguese colonizers. What we see in the histories is that the colonizers ultimately began to kill the indigenous people of the land. They stole their land and destroyed their civilization. Who does Torah teach us comes but for to steal, kill, and destroy? Thus began the spilling of man's blood from the East Coast to the West Coast, leaving a trail of tears across the land that continue even unto this day. Subsequently, creating a system of sin with New York becoming the center of its commerce and the major influence of commerce all of, of, of commerce to all the nations of the world. So in wanting to stay in and claiming America as yours, hmm. you make the decision to take responsibility for her actions, participate in her sin, and contract her plague. Mm -hmm. Know a tree by its fruit. Come out of her, my people. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. I mean, you a part. You a partaker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even before our blood blood was shed on that land, right? Yah has a universal law about a man stealing somebody's land and building a house by bloodshed, mm -hmm. and that is the whole case of America and mm. Canada, y'all, mm. and even Mexico wow. and Brazil, right? Yeah. You cannot say that about Britain. You can't say that about France, right? Even though they did, but they, them the same people. That's a family at war, mm. right? Uh, that's Japheth fighting over Japheth's lot. Right. But <laughs> they came and stole a whole land and killed the people for it, y'all. So there's blood all across that country, right? And I say innocent, no, they may not, they may have been some of our people, Indians, they may have worshiped other deities, but Yah still abides by his righteousness that just because they worship other deities don't mean that you come in their land, kill them and steal their land, right? Yah doesn't allow for that. And so there's blood all over that land. And, um, uh, this whole indigenous, I, I know people want me to deal with this Mormon doctrine that has come and uh, created a fable that has created a, a confusion amongst our people, but that's not what we're doing now. There's blood on that land and it has to, um, it has to pay it back. That land is crying out. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so we start with Second Peter chapter one, uh, verse 19. Second. All right. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, unto the day dawn, and the day star rise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of Elohim spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's right. And so the scripture must interpret itself, the prophets must interpret itself, or a prophet must interpret prophecy. If anybody is not a prophet, the Holy Spirit can give them, right, the gift or word of prophecy to give them understanding on something that they may have known, not known. But the prophecies and the school of the prophets always existed and no prophet came along and said anything to undermine what the prophets had already established and what they taught these things had meant. But this was laid up and kept in the spirit of the prophets to reveal to the people. I mean, and so uh, this whole argument uh, is this, right? The question is this spiritual, what we about to read Ask yourself, what does the prophecy interpret by the prophets, right? Describe the system. Describe the system. 
Okay. And before we get started too, there is a point that we were saying, uh, and you were uh, talking about it, Talia, is that there's, there's no physical without the spiritual, and there's no spiritual without the physical. So we know what we do in this physical realm has some, mm -hmm. uh, something happens in the spiritual. And then when Yah curses you in the spiritual realm, something's going to happen to you in the physical realm and also in the spiritual. And so we must take that and understand that going forward with this, that we're not speaking about anything. We are speaking spiritual things, but also we have to do something physical to be saved in the spiritual world. Amen. So. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Revelations. 18, starting at verse 1. Mm -hmm. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and a hole of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Okay, yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. And so before we, we continue on that, there are uh, several points that we can make from one, two, and three alone, mm -hmm. that a lot of people uh, make a point of contention about, more specifically verse three. The whole world is Babylon, for all the nations have drunk enough for wine, right? Can y'all can y'all speak to that a little bit? Well, that, that plays into the, the point that Babylon, um, Babylon's destruction is upon the whole world, but it says, uh, we, we, we speak about it, that Babylon, and it says the merchants, it says uh, in verse mm -hmm. four right here, yeah. verse three, all the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And so all the kings of the earth, they've come, they've come to, they've come with Babylon, they, they tasted of her riches, they lived a delicate life. They basically they come rich through her bloodshed, mm -hmm. through Again, the adultery and, and selling of men's lives. We're, we're going to continue to read into this. Um, but um, and they've joined hands with them. They've joined, they've joined hands with Babylon in war, in conspiracy, in uh, money, in agreements, right? And so, uh, verse two, I know is a is a real chunk of this. Uh, where are we? And has become the, inhabit the habitation of devils and the hold or the holding place of every file spirit, every unclean spirit, every dirty and evil spirit, right? And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So this is very distinct about a particular paid place in the world, right? And it's saying specifically that this place is defiled, it's demonic, it's an abomination. Mm -hmm. And there's no other place that we know of right now as it, it, as it exists. And like Brother uh, Brett just expressed, has a history of hateful mm -hmm. behavior and unclean behavior, foul behavior, devilish mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, and, and go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, and and Torah, that when a man or a woman has to use the bathroom, got to uh, go number two. They got to leave the camp. And so how much more Babylon that has committed all adult, all kind of foul and decrepit things that Yah hates. And so if he cares about you using the bathroom inside the camp, how much right. more living, staying in Babylon? Now, See, the I'm thing saying, about Babylon, too, is our America is that basically what America has done is taken on the spirit of Babylon. It has taken on the spirit of Babylon and in that spirit has done all of these wicked things. Mm -hmm. And it's, has it's completed. The daughter of right? It's the daughter of Babylon. That's right. It's the daughter. 
and usually the daughter um finishes mama's job even and does it even Probably better than mama right yeah. like hey you old mama let me show you how to work it now right right right, right. 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 The way we do it today and it's brand new right type stuff mm -hmm. like oof uh mama can't compete uh, she can't get as rich as daughter um let me show you this new technology yeah this new, this new way so i want to say once again babylon has a system spell this system out right because you're going to see how we're guilty of it right mm. but once again it is a cage the whole world is not a cage of every unclean right devil foul hateful spirit that's not the whole world no. it doesn't say that it doesn't say this is very specific to Babylon. It doesn't say that about the whole world. When it gets to for all nations, why does he say the whole world? Right. He didn't say the whole world. Right. He said all nations, but let the Bible interpret the Bible right. because it didn't say the whole world. It said all nations. What all nations? Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to describe what all these nations are. For all nations have drunk of the wine of, of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. These are the nations that it's talking about. These are the nations that has to be in league with her. Every nation, you can't, first of all, prophecy cannot undermine reality, y'all. Right. Show me the whole world has committed this fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Show me that this system hit the whole world. No, it did not. This is why we've been having world wars for the last um, years, 200 years. And this is why we about to have another world war, right? She has sat on the neck of many nations and ruled them. But every nation is not in league with her. And every nation did not wax rich through the merchants, right? The traders, right. world trade. Why? We know this to be a fact because America put sanctions on many nations if they did right. not submit to the petrodollar and submit to their uh, nuclear uh, deals and arms deals and, and submit to their politics. What right? other place has the biggest the biggest um, influence on other nations. That's right. Right. I mean, from the music uh, down to the dollar, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody wants to be like. Yep. The whore, the great whore. Yep. Yep. And so, um, for all nations, we're gonna think all all nations means the whole earth. No, it doesn't, and we're gonna prove it by the, its own word. Right, we're not gonna make it up, but let the word interpret the, the word, right? Uh, fornications and the second part of number three is it. So people still don't understand what it says. And the merchants of the earth wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. This is the system by which the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. It's explaining itself. One is the euphemism or the parable all for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication mm -hmm. and the kings have committed fornication with her what is the fornication the merchants the trading system by which they got rich the american commerce yeah, the american right. commerce the petrodollar the world trade, the PPMT or uh, TPP, I don't know if I'm saying it right, right? <laughs> All of that. Yes, New All York right. City, Wall Street. That's right, but even to your point. of funds. Mm -hmm. we, but even, we, even have, we have somebody that want to say something as well. Mm -hmm. Real quick, <laughs> but even to the point uh, right there where it says, and have drunk wine of the wrath of her fornication, mm -hmm. the U.S. has, uh, what, what's the word, um, threatened a lot of the nations, if you don't do this, what's going to happen, right? No other nation has that power or that authority to, to, to really do that or that control, right? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We got somebody that's going to say something. Hold on one second. All right, go ahead. 
So the merchants who gain wealth and perverse pleasures from this world system of religion and commerce cry and lament because of it satiated their greed for materialistic acquisition and their lust of self-pleasure. As the Babylonian system incorporates every expression of corrupt government, so its prostitution includes every corrupt economic system and idolatry. Even human beings are being reduced to cargo, traded as slaves to drive the engines of production, prosperity, and sinful pleasures. Sadly, the modern descendants of Israel have promoted and become a part of this self-serving perverse world system. Sin inevitably brings its own punishment and there are always consequences to disobedience. Thus, when today's Israelites go into captivity in the last days, they will have no excuse for their sin and no freedom whatsoever. And that's for the people that don't want to believe scripture and go into the word. That's straight off Google. Y'all can go to Google. And Google that. <laughs> go, go to Google and Google that. Google said it, right? That's a joke, y'all. Google said it. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. If I may, just really quickly. Um, in more layman's terms that my sister just shared, um, <laughs> if we just even think about the things we learned while we were in school as kids, like in science class, and in verse two, it talks about, um, and it's become the habitation of demons. Think about a habitat. That's a place where um, uh, animal species and the like are, are, are bred yeah. and they multiply. grow and multiply. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's a specific place, a specific location. And then when we go into, as Sister Malcolm said, um, it's a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. That too, a cage is is a space, a container, a an aquarium, space. a closed space. You go into it, you come out of. You put things in, you take things out. Um, so just based on that simple argument, even for a child to understand that a cage, you put your bird in or you take your bird out. That's a specific place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And also in understanding that, what you also see is that what America did, what in the six, toward in the sixties, toward the seventies, was they they used to allow Elohim in church. You would you were allowed into school. You were allowed to pray. But after the sixties uh, and on into the seventies, they took y'all out of the church, out of the schools rather, and did not allow you to say anything about religion. And it subsequently has followed throughout these years to the point now where you're not allowed to say anything about religion, but gender arguments are accepted. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I want people to describe the system because once they describe it, you cannot say that the whole world is guilty of this, of, of these particular sins, right? Sin is everywhere. That's from the, from Adam all the way to the end, right? Will sin, will still, will sin still exist during the reign of Yahushua in the kingdom. No. Well, we got it. Won't. We got. We got to yeah. clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. No, sin is going to still it exist. Will. Yeah, but there will. We got to a... clean it up, though. Right. But right. it won't exist right. inside oh. the kingdom. A special right. habitation. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. All and right. There will be a particular people to help clean up. Yeah. So another point too that. The, even the water that we that is drunk in in America is through a loop system, and so it's just contaminated with Yah only knows what, and and this and this water, and so it's continue polluted. to defile your your temples and and, and your vessels staying in Babylon. Mm -hmm. You can't be a pure vessel for Yahweh to dwell in you. Come on, this side. Yeah, how could you be? No, you can't. No, you can't. Um, okay. Hold on, sister, want to say something? Okay, I wanted to also say that um, Jer not Jeremiah, Revelations 18 and 2 also references uh, Jeremiah 50 and 39. Yes, which speaks to if it was a physical place back then that he destroyed because it speaks of Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. why would it not be a physical place mm -hmm. now? Um, and if I could, I can, can I read it? We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Okay, that's it. The spirit is in the yeah. okay. Yep. Now, th there's a lot of things that precept is. We can't read everything because that would be me doing the whole lesson all over again. We just want to, um, <laughs> like, yeah, we, we can't do everything. We could be a part two to this. All right. Verse four. Mm -hmm. Verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, 
that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And her sins have reached unto heaven, and Elohim hath remembered her iniquities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now real we quick, got, real quick, go ahead. But man, I mean, it's saying it right here. It's like, I know. Man. Man. <laughs> Close the book. Now, We're good. Good. We're good. Close the book. Let's do a Jedi right. uh, switch screen, right? Right. 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 Let's, do a, let's do an Ebri uh, smooth over. You didn't see that. That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't read it no says, more. Hey, like I, it's it's, it's the new trick. It's the it's the old trick of the pastors. Where they read one script and then they um then they perform for you so you don't look down no more and read and, and close the book. Now right. we it's something different, right? They over here thinking we're gonna expose the book to you, and they over here swiping stuff up real quick and blotting stuff out so you don't read the next line and draw and dragging you up 10 verses here, 20 verses, they're dragging you all the way so you can't see. That's the old, that's the new old gotcha. trick, right? Go ahead. It says, come out of her, my people, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Mm -hmm. So that means you could come out of it and you can basically escape what it's what it's talking about, these sins. And well, you will not receive her plagues. And what is the definition of partakers? Be a part of. To a part, be a part of. Hold on, hold on. We're going to read the definition of partakers. Yeah, we're going to read the definition. You got it? You want me to go in? Yeah, we got it. We got it. We're going to read it okay. to you. All right. And, well, this is part of the argument, it. right? This is part of the argument because they stop at the plagues like, um, well, they, they self-interpret part two of the plagues as well. Yah, if we keep the commandments of Yah, meaning just come out of the sin, I'm like, describe the sin. Stop sinning. Keep the Torah. They be the very same people that say you can't keep Torah in Babylon, right? You can right, never right. keep all the Torah perfect in Babylon. The very same people that spew that out has that on the other side of their argument. I'm telling you, they're, they're wicked against Torah. Come out of her sins, right? Meaning, and they'll say sins is everywhere. Like, they don't distinguish, like, there are different sins, and sins can pile up, and sin can be piled up on top of sin to the point that there is a no return policy. When the wrath of Yah is coming, that means that there's no way to uh, repent from your sins. It's sealed. It is closed. It has become a caged, closed system, right? right. And you can't, you got to destroy it to clean it up, right? Mm -hmm. So they make that spiritual and because it says plagues, then they're going to go and self-interpret and be like, well, he's going to do it like he did before. Uh, we went through the plagues of Egypt before and they didn't touch us. Not true. That That's is not true. true. That's not true at all. And I proved that in the uh, uh, Rapture No Wings when I went through the book of Jasher, how it breaks down these plagues and that uh, some of these plagues hit all the rebels that didn't want to believe what Moshe said, because there was a preparation that Moshe came to deliver before it was the trumpet to actually come out. There was months or at least a year's worth of time that Moshe came to deliver a message and he had to prepare what? Their hearts and their minds and some um, commandments to keep, to prepare for the come out. And a lot of them rebelled against what Moshe had to say from inception. They disbelieved him. And so those that disbelieved him was going to do what? Interfere with preparing the hearts and minds of the other people from coming out. And so Yah destroyed all of those that did not believe that Moshe came to bring the message and deliver them out. They did die in the plagues. Okay, go ahead. And this is just, and this is as simple as listening to what has been said. It says, come out of her, my people. Come out. It don't say stay there and wait for me to come get you. It says, come out. It says that throughout the scripts, right? Come out, come out. Come out of her. Mm -hmm. Over and over again, he tells you that too. Like, 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 so if you in a cesspool of mire, right? And people don't like that. I said, y'all is gonna use me to put poo poo all over y'all, right? That prophets don't talk like, that's a lie. But I'll tell you what, 
y'all put Jeremiah when he prophesies to y'all about your destruction, y'all put him in your poo poo. Yeah. You put him down in your poo poo, right? And that's why y'all, it says he's going to smear poo poo all over y'all for what y'all did to the prophets, particularly Jeremiah. Yeah. Right? And you're doing it to Jeremiah now mm. by his prophecies, mm. right? You're trying to put him in the dungeon of your poo poo, and I'm yeah. here to get the vengeance of Jeremiah on y'all spiritually. How about that? Yeah. I'm spiritually yeah. putting your poo poo that y'all put Jeremiah in all over your faces for your lies. Right. And I think By that's the problem. Maybe. that your behinds is wide open, and yeah. Right, but when the <laughs> eunuch, when the eunuch, no pun intended. yeah, no pun intended, when the eunuch had told Zedekiah, "What you doing is evil to this prophet. Don't do this." Did he go down in the dungeon and get funky himself? Who go? No, you don't go. Nobody. You gotta cover yourself to go in the cesspool, or you gotta uh send a uh, <laughs> right or uh, something down to get him out, right? You don't go in a cesspool yourself. Right. All right. Was that my point? That was I think problem. that's the problem. Like people trying to bring bring uh this prophet down to Jeremiah down to their level and be equal and like they can really understand exactly what he's saying by them just um plainly um plainly reading it and not having mm -hmm. no real understanding. No. And reading it in the King's English and don't know no other language, no. the true language that it was spoken, like, it, there's more meaning to the words. What you hear these fools do is playing like they got some history, right? And they be like, and we know these things happen. And, <laughs> right? And we know, they'll read it and be like, and we know these things happened in the time of the conquering of Nebuchadnezzar in Jerusalem in the sea. And we know these things have to place in 70, 80. No, show me how you know them. Break down this prophecy and show me what in these prophecies happened. Break them down. Show me how we know these things. Because all these people are doing is repeating where everybody else said, we know these things already happened in, in, in the siege of Jerusalem from 586 BC and, and uh, 70 AD, right? That's all they're going to do is be like, these things already happened. We know this. Well, you got to think of, like, my sister had brought it to my attention. She was like, well, you got to think about the characters at play here as well. Mm -hmm. Were these characters at play in 70 AD? No. Like, well, we're, the whole we're reading was, Revelation, which is the end of the matter. Right. This is something that, yeah, hasn't, that hasn't happened yet. So let's keep reading. <laughs> you yeah. said you said yeah. partakers. Oh, right? you want, oh, you wanna, we, want, we, wanted, we wanted to just read the definition of partake. Amen. We wanted to get that. Hold on one second. Go partake ahead. means to take part in or experience something along with others. So this includes both initiating something that might happen in Babylon as well as experiencing it. So there's no way to stop experiencing the sin in Babylon without removing yourself okay. because you have no power over what can happen to you while in Babylon. Okay. Our entire history is clear proof of this. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, on top of that, people say that removing yourself from one city does not remove you from sin. Yes, it does. He pulls out uncleanliness. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a perfect example how we know this. In Yahushua's story, he, he, he cured someone that was blind, right? Mm -hmm. And right. he took the dirt from where he was standing. Mm -hmm. Spit, put his water. So I'm going to where, where I, yeah, right. Something was unclean in the dirt that he was in, in the water that we, he was at, that Yahushua took the dirt from where he was standing and the spit from his land to put it back on him, right? Now, being blind is a genetic defect, but it's a demonic thing too, right? A, a demon can do that. Right, a uncleanliness or disease can do that, right? And that is due to sin. But what did he tell? Usually, y'all just sin no more, right? Return to your home and sin no more. What did he tell this one to do? Don't return to that city. Where was the sin? In the city. It was something in the city 
that mm. was sinful, that if he went back to it, he would be unclean. Mm -hmm. It is sin, nevertheless, but it's not intentional sin. So Yahushua told him, don't go back to that city. The city was unclean. Either there was murder in the land, the fruits and vegetables is unclean. They're, you, they're doing something to the water. There's something dead in the water. There's a demonic spirit. Somebody's doing witchcraft. Somebody buried some bones that y'all don't know about. There is something that is making that whole city affected and unclean right. to the point of sheer blindness. Mm -hmm. That yeah. Yahushua said, don't go back to that city. So don't tell me about wherever Yahushua was standing. Was there sin there? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Yes. Well, yes. But no, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying there was sin everywhere. I'm saying yeah. sin, there's different sins. Yeah. And when we talk about the sin of uncleanness, this is a matter of space. Mm -hmm. This is a matter of place, mm -hmm. this uncleanliness that y'all talks about, because all uncleanliness that y'all talks about in the Torah is physical, that you have to physically re either remove out the camp or remove yourself from it. Who's that? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you'll have people who are still in uh, Babylon saying, okay, flee the city. Let's go to the back land. Let's go to the countries in the back here. Mm -hmm. it's the same the same principle about uncleanliness and you and people think they could separate themselves based on those two uh what do you call it fault lines right okay and that's why it's important and like, and, and like it says in verse two that uh babylon has fallen and it has become a habitation of devils that's all of babylon mm -hmm. it's not one spot or another that's babylon period so you're talking unclean. The whole place is unclean. And y'all will not dwell in a place that's unclean. So they have to you have to understand that y'all's not there with you. No, he's, he's not. not there with you because the nation you live in is unclean. That, that, that's like eating some unclean and saying only part of it is unclean. But if it's unclean, you gotta throw the whole thing away. Right. Mm -hmm. A little leaven. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to really understand and know the law, to read Torah and study it so that you understand Yah's principle and his spirit on the matter and how where he stands in it. Because you got all these people who are living in Babylon to all of your points that feel like, oh, I'm just going to be separate from this place, but I'll stay here. But when you understand who Yahweh is and his holiness, you will understand that he cannot be there with you. You have to come out in order to receive and be sealed with his spirit. Hallelujah. That does not negate that there's a, a call, but when somebody called, they like, hey, you you all way in the doo-doo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come out. <laughs> no, you come over here. here. That does not negate, <laughs> right? That there's something in your heart yeah. that's seeking Yah, seek him, not all of that, that he didn't send a call. Yeah. I don't that's deny that. Good. I did not say that everybody is evil. I said that you're all unclean. Yeah. There is a difference. Yeah. Right? But if you're going to be stubborn about it, then you are going to be evil. He's going to count. He, I read it where he said he's going to count this as an iniquity because it's actually a commandment by a prophet. Right. And when you uh, reject um, a command by a prophet, then you are in sin and rebellion. Right? Yeah. So oh, once yeah. how, I know you wanted to say something, Shan. I'm trying. I'm trying to go back. Uh, he said so. They try to make plague spiritual, but you can't do it, right? We know that madness is here. That's spiritual, but that's not all the plagues. But her sins, not the, not the not the world, not the kings, not the nations. Her sins have reached to heaven. Spiritual. And Elohim has remembered her you know y'all can forget sins by turning his head uh -huh. right but your sins her sins have reached heaven that means the smell yeah is so high the cry has reached him that he can't ignore it anymore this is not just about sin is everywhere this is a overload a overflowing yeah. of sin that it cannot cannot be cleansed. All right. Mm -hmm. 
All right, verse six. Oh, we have, uh, they're going to go into a definition. One minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to further go into the word uh, partakers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go into this word in the Greek. And the word is sokonio. Um, G4862. It means to share in, have company with to co-participate, to communicate, to have fellowship with, mm -hmm. to be a partaker of. Mm -hmm. So when you're in Babylon, by default alone, just based off the uh, definition, you become a, uh, in fellowship with a place that is unclean. And if you want to go further into the word, um, G2841, it also says to distribute. Mm -hmm. Um, to share with others. And also, uh, if you go further into the root word, which is ko koinos, mm -hmm. it means something that's common, uh, something that's ceremonial, ceremonially profane, something common, defiled, unclean, and holy. Mm -hmm. And so just based off this definition alone, you are unholy when you are in Babylon, there is the, the Holy Spirit cannot enter into something. There's a principle in Torah that something that's unclean cannot dwell with something that's clean. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a, in a place, in a temple, in a body that's unclean, which is why Yah is telling us, come out of her, my people. And even if you don't want to go into the definitions of the Greek, just English 101, when it says to come out, just by those of you who just want to go based off the English alone, come out is physical. If your mom tells you, come here, you're going to get up and you're going to go wherever she's telling you to go. If oh, your, your dad tells you to flee or get away, you're going to get up and you're going to go flee and get away. Same thing here. Yeah, but show me, um, um, show me the sin, right? They don't want to point out these sins. And then I, if they show, if I, I, I dare any one of them, Show me the sins that you're talking about, that you just spiritually come out of. And by the time they name one of the Ten Commandments, I'm going to show you how they're breaking one of those Ten Commandments spiritually by simply being yeah. there. Right. If they want to go spiritual. Mm -hmm. Right. The, but most the certainly, the they have broken every commandment. Yeah. And the reason why they say they broke the commandment is because they couldn't keep them while they was what? In slavery or in Babylon. Right? Okay. Verse six. Mm -hmm. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. Mm -hmm. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Okay, stop right there. So the plagues, so how is that spiritual? Right. Mm. One day. Yeah. We know the prophecies of the one day. So I also wanted to hit on what you just said, and something that our brother Chan said earlier, about how the spiritual and the physical go together. Mm -hmm. So in verse four, it's a physical action saying, come out. Whereas in verse eight, it's also physical. We're talking about death, mourning, famine, and being utterly burned. Those are all physical actions, not just spirit. Right, well, we know somebody's saying, well, you can die spiritually. Well, if you die spiritually, you dead. Yeah, it's a wrap. Right? <laughs> yeah. right? But but we but we already saw Ezekiel dry bone. He said that all of them are dead. They're in the graves, right? But so so he said to to come out of the graves, right? And he made that not just spiritual, even though they spiritually dead, he made that physical. That raising them out of the graves from the dead was actually physical, meaning I'm going to remove you from the nations that you are in. The spiritual, there was, in Ezekiel dry bones, there was only one way to spiritually come out of the graveyard. And that was physically 
come out of the right. land that you was in, right? Okay, mourning. You can spiritually mourn, but by the time you spiritually mourn, is is you gonna have some tears, or you gonna sleep all day, or yawn all day, or cry all day, right? You can't just spiritually mourn while you having a part, right? How having do you, a party. I don't know what that looked like, right? I don't know how you spiritually how do you mourn, spiritually mourn, right? Famine. There's going to be a famine of the word. That's spiritual, but no, they it, there is gonna be a famine of the word spiritually. But they are, are there's going to be, y'all already in famine. Well, y'all yeah, don't even first, get no nutrients. Like, that's verse three, though. The merchants of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. That also speaks to the fact that the merchants won't be able to exchange with her any longer. So there will be a physical land just based on that alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's going to be famine in that land. And she shall utterly be burned with fire. That's not spiritual. How you utterly burn somebody spiritually with fire? Mm -hmm. Uh, without it being physical, there ain't no way. I'm like with bars of rap, like bars, like I mean, you gonna wrap them to death. Like, what does that look like? I mean, I'm gonna spit fire, Ooh. right? I mean, like, yeah, you could burn somebody, but you by the time you burn somebody with your words, there has to be a judgment. Yes, that you say into that person, it don't be, it don't be, it, it just don't be like go to hell. <laughs> no, and you're talking about you're talking about an arrogant, prideful. Full of themselves, mm -hmm. it just said, and I sit as a queen, right. and no widow. So right. we talking about a judgment that they gonna feel, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We talking about. And as far as the family is concerned, when you look at the religious system in America, basically what you get is a little word and a lot of nonsense. Mm -hmm. They come up and maybe give you a scripture or two, and then spend the next hour in nonsense. So it says right. reward her, you, even as she has rewarded you. Who is he talking to? the nation who's rewarding her right so this is y'all's vengeance but he's using some mediator to do it and give her double right this is a principle in Torah Torah about the double hire of a whore right give her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled fill to her double right mm -hmm. who's doing this who is y'all talking to it says reward her double the other nations. The other nations. Who are we gonna bring up? These plagues them? is not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you spiritually come out these plagues according to the word of Yah. All right. So Yah said, Yah says this is gonna be her plagues, but He's telling us to come out so that we don't receive. So don't tell me about Egypt. Right. First time. We know we got liars on here telling you we know we know that the second exodus is gonna be just like the first. Well, how do you know that? Are you a prophet? Did you read a prophet that said that? Where did you get that from? How do you know that? When y'all said I'm gonna do a new thing, right? And he's telling you right here that this time. If you don't physically come out, you're going to get the plagues. Make that spiritual. Or make that the same as the first exodus. All of those that spit that out, they know this word. They're liars, y'all. They're devils. These are the demons. Yes. That is the cage that wants to keep you in them with poison water and poison bread. They are hateful birds. Yes. They are foul spirits. They are unclean. They're lepers speaking to you. They're drug heads speaking. They're weed lips speaking to you, right? right. Don't tell me you don't smoke weed. Yo, you smoke weed. Yo, you have smoked weed. You have poison in here. You're still high. You're still intoxicated. I called you all weed heads. You are weed head. Mm. Now, the one that I'm going to get to that. I didn't say they smoke weed. I'm saying y'all are weed head. Y'all are high and you're speaking from a demonic spirit. That's what I said. And you got, said. And you got those of us who have come out, who got some news to share to say that you can do it. Come on out. Mm -hmm. Obey the commandments of Yah. Right? Return right. to his Torah. 
Mm -hmm. We obviously witnesses here to speak to that. So we're going to continue on to the next uh, slide. No, but this is, this, is, this, is where, this is where we got to be careful because the brothers and sisters that are demons and devils that see that, mm -hmm. they want you to fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they're going to be the ones that set you up and put you in jail and act like that's the failure. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. We, who, I, nobody painted a, ro a bed of roses for this return or red carpet or the go a golden brick road. No. No, this is a valley of stones and, <laughs> and dry bones. Don't trip on the way. Okay. Go ahead. okay, okay. So, so that was Revelation 18. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about, Revelation 18, is also uh, like a parallel for the story of Lot when he was in Sodom and y'all told him, you need to go because I'm about to destroy this place. And it shows that he had to physically leave and bring those who, uh, you know, he brought his wife and, his, and his, his two daughters. But it also shows that it can't just be a physical get out. You have to physically get out, but you also have to um, also spiritually let all that wickedness go. Because mm -hmm. as you can see, Lot's wife was turned into a salt of pillar. Uh, mm -hmm. A pillar of salt. <laughs> a pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. And that's because even though she physically left, she didn't spiritually let the things go in time. She was too worried about what she might be missing out on and all her things, while Lot spiritually and physically did both. And if he would have stayed, then they would have been destroyed too. And the daughters was worried about procreating and having more children on their way out, like these Negroes be talking about. And that's not what this is, right? <laughs> all right. But let's stick to the point. Let's get back to it. All right. Are we going next? Yeah, so make this make this spiritual. Make these plagues spiritual now. All right, just so we can finish this, uh, verse 8, for strong is Yahweh, Elohim, who judges her. So the judgment is just spiritual. When that... Don't make no sense. No. Make it neither, make sense. neither is that the reputation of Yah. Mm -hmm. Not the reputation of Yah just to do something that we can't see. He, he utterly destroys. Mm -hmm. so we're going to see this one day go back again go back we're going to precept this in the one in, in, in this one day right this death and mourning and famine in one day this double unto her as she has done this merchants of the earth as wast wast rich and these plagues of death mourning and famine and utterly burned with fire what is utterly burned with fire me, we're gonna get to it. All right, and this is y'all's judgment mm -hmm. that he said we're gonna get if we don't spiritually come out <laughs> in, in one day. In one day, in one day, okay. Here, yes, verse nine. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of for the fear of her torment saying alas alas the great city babylon the mighty city for in one hour is the is thy judgment come but babylon's the whole world <laughs> explain it to me <laughs> but, but they stand it off to the side right? yeah how is this possible <laughs> <laughs> they stand it far off <laughs> mm. There's nowhere to run. How about wherever these kings are? Right. Mm. Yeah. Right. Come on. This don't make no sense, y'all. In uh, in Jeremiah chapter fifty one, uh, it starts at verse seven, but it identifies to tell you who it is. Actually, in verse thirteen, it says, "O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in the treasures, thy end is come." and the measure of thy covetousness. So I only know of one place right now that is sitting amongst waters is the US. You got the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, that, and we're gonna read that again, but the sin, it told you, right? This, this, the system is covetousness. The covetousness is the trading system, the buying and the selling and the commerce. The economic trade system that 
The kings of the earth have lived deliciously off of, but so have you, O Israel, O slave. And you have made her this great. The oh, information on Google says that the United States is the number one, United States of Canada is the number one import country, mm -hmm. which yeah. means why the merchants are going to be crying because they there is no country there to sell their merchandise to. That's right. Mm. That's right. Y'all are the consumers, the fornications of covetousness. Mm -hmm. And to uh, Sister Malcolm's point, y'all's judgment is physical. If you know this book or you 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 read this book and know this book like all these people are claiming that they do, mm -hmm. then they should understand y'all's judgments from past and present and future are physical. Because mm -hmm. you can't go in and out, right? We can't keep going in and out between spiritual and physical because if it says in verse 9, that they've lived deliciously. That means it's a physical living. And if they are bewailing her and lamenting her, it's a physical lament. You can't then go back and say, but it's coming out as spiritual. So we just going to talk plainly on, on the physical. And we're going to explain that. And let the word interpret the word. That part. But so this whole thing about the wrath is going to hit the whole world is a lie. It don't even say that there, y'all. It didn't say that. It says she going to get it. And the kings that committed fornication, yeah, this system is going to crash and they, they yeah, their cup is going to fall from it, right? They don't get to uh, live deliciously and drink anymore. Mm -hmm. But it didn't say that they were going to be burned with fire. Mm -hmm. It said she is. Mm -hmm. So once again, you cannot deduce that to the whole world is going to be destroyed in this wrath. And this is what they've been teaching in the Christian church. So Christians will just believe in the rapture theory. That is a theory to promote rapture theory. Yeah. That you could just point to that. three times and say there's no place like home. There's no place like home <laughs> to be absent from the body is to be close to j -pop. And when I die, stop it, right? Go ahead. And, and another point to that was all these nations coming up against Babylon, but they're going to turn around and destroy their own home. No, they got to go back somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And can we speak on the word Babylon real quick? Because yeah. Babylon is, is derived from the word Babel. And we know the story of Babel, the Tower of Babel. We know how that came into play. But Babylon, the meaning of Babylon is confusion. Mm -hmm. Confusion. Okay. Mm -hmm. What other place on the planet have as much confusion That's right. as America. There's no other place. I mean, China, they got theirs together as far as what they believe and what their morals are. Mm -hmm. um, any other place you name, you can't just go to their countries and do whatever you feel like doing, being right. free in your wickedness. It's only, everybody go to America to be free in their wickedness mm -hmm. and confused. And, and, and prime okay. example is the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. and how they try to infiltrate to... us over here. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And they know they can't do it over here in the, in the Middle East or in China, nowhere else. So where they go? Straight to America. Straight to America to be free in their wickedness. Because the American philosophy is do as thou will. Huh. Huh. All right. Hallelujah. So make that spiritual, y'all. This is stupid. And if it's just the system, we just play in a system. And this is where we got people like the Board Watchmen, um, uh, P Head, uh, what's his name? Pastor Dow, uh, P Head Dow, um, and other people with local land and Goshen buying land and talking about coming out just means coming out the city system. But they still part of that system, right? They still a part of the commerce. They still got to pay taxes. They still got to pay land taxes, Come air on. taxes. They still drinking the same water, yeah. right? They say it's not a loop system, but the blood all over that land and the uh, impurities that have been buried from the industrialization over these cheap lands that they buy in in the Midwest, where a lot of our people are buried anyway, and the in they Indian burial places anyway. Stop it, right? They can, the air is polluted. They act like this is about fire burning, right? So when we talk about fire burning, what are we talking about here? 
How do you make that spiritual? And if you believe it's physical, how do you escape that? We, oh, a famine, right? Y'all just going, um, so y'all got your own. If there's a famine in the land, what is that country going to do? They're going to rob y'all behind. Yeah, yeah they're going to rob y'all behind, y'all. Okay, so you got a couple of uh, uh, guns and stuff. See what happens against hungry peoples. Yeah. But the, what the government would do if you think it's just a famine that you just uh, secured yourself, we, they already have a policy in place to take, right, eminent domain, to take everybody's farmland and make it common. You don't own it. Stop playing. All right. All right. But this is just reminiscent of what happened in Noah's time. How he was looking like a crazy man, right? A lot of us looking real crazy to them right now. Real crazy. But in 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 no time, the flood came, right? And so when Yah said, "For in one hour is thy judgment," you got people saying, "Well, well, when should I leave? Or or when is this going to happen?" Yeah, that's that's the answer. That's the answer. But Yah says, "It's a wicked generation who looks for a sign, right?" Signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. Speak to it. I just wanted to say, like you were saying about how Pastor P head, mm -hmm. um, how they are still within the system, but they know it's a physical thing because they did a physical move That's within right. the system. That's right. But they don't want to say that. Yeah, you mm -hmm. call it hypocrisy. Back yeah, on hypocrisy, on. right? Yeah. He was also one that was preaching oh, spiritual, right. just spiritual, right? Okay. But he did a physical move to call himself removing himself from these spiritual plagues and judgments. Don't make sense. That's why right. call the hypocrisy on these hypocrites. Absolutely. Right? And I still ask them, explain the system. By the time you explain it, tell me how you got out of it. Not the same as the board watchman who's telling people to buy land and to move, uproot themselves, but then also claiming people don't have no money to buy plane tickets to get right? out. The hypocrisy. They be like, how you gonna do it? You gonna afford that? But whole land costs thousands of dollars, right? Mm. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. Verse 11. All right. All right. Verse 11. <laughs> And the merchants wait, wait, wait. of the earth. Uh, no, no. <laughs> okay. I it ten standing afar off for the fear of the torment. Right. So what? They in space now? Where they? Yeah, at? right. <laughs> <laughs> they grew wings. <laughs> they Man. grew wings and flew off. <laughs> that, that don't make no sense, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. but it's it's one of those things too where it's like America has stood itself up. Babylon has stood itself up so high. To where it looks like they're untouchable. Yep, like that's, that's nothing can is. ever happen to them. Yep. So the fact that the other nations are looking from we're going to see the smoke. Yes, y'all. From far away. And they're going to be in fear. Oh, snap. I was in bed with them. Oh, snap. Right. Right. I was I was trading with them. Oh, snap. We got a peace treaty with them. You, they, they're going to yeah. calculate mm -hmm. now what this, what, what, what this means and what's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. Oh snap! I was a partaker. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! All right, verse eleven. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Okay, that's the, the system right there. Hold on, that's the system, but it's not spiritual. That's the sin right there. And Deborah Washington, said, well, you mean is how is it a sin to buy and sell? So no, that's that's the covetousness. I told you this whole system got blood on it. Mm -hmm. It got it got kill the widows, kill the elderly, steal the land, mm -hmm. all over it. Mm -hmm. Don't pay the workers, all over it. Somebody kill the children with abortions. Children with abortions. All of this, right? Totally this the merchants, right? Unless we're gonna see what they traded, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to see what they traded and tell me if you're not a partaker in this. All right, go ahead. Uh-huh. Right. Verse 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones 
and of pearls and fine linen, the, and purple and silk and scarlet and all thy wood and, and all the manner vessel of ivory and all the manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointment and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Of men. Stop right there. So we know that this is uh, overall, right? Old time verbiage for new time products. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. basically saying everything. Everything? <laughs> no, everything. <laughs> they trade at the world trade systems, right? You, oh, you mean it's the flour too yeah. and the frankincense okay. and the wheat that's wrong and the gold uh, ain't that what y'all gold and the but yeah. at the end of the day the gold and the silver and the precious stones is us it's a, that's yeah. what they traded and they sold that's the right that's but the souls of men, slaves right the the horses and the sheep and the chair is, is 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 army that's your son that's your dire son that's Pastor Dow's. That's half of these pastors that's up here talking about they served in the army. It was a it was a trading for your life. For what? To remain the top trader capital of the world. The trader of oil, the trader of goods, the trader of money, and the petrodollar, right? Is what your sons, your horses and your chariots and your sons have gone to war for. Now you got people like the guy talking about I mean, when we saw the sort of Babylon, right? But you talk about people in Israel, right? But y'all right. still proud right. that y'all served in the war. Y'all didn't repent from that. And your sons are still doing it. And at the end of the day, they doing it to get away from y'all. Right. Right. But and slaves, they're still a slave trade in America. What, don't talk about Africa. Don't talk about the Middle East. They're still a slave trade in America. And we know oh, the human trafficking today. The, the penal system. Yes. We know it. Not just us, y'all. They own babies, little girls. The sex yeah. trade system right. in America, right. the top has been blown off that for the whole entertainment world yeah. has partaken in that. Yeah. And y'all still watch that stuff. Yeah. How you not a partaker? Mm. You know about it, right? Mm. The souls of men. Y'all have the, uh, through the abortion. Uh, uh, play, uh, what you call it? Planned Parenthood. Just about all y'all Negroes, women and men, either aborted your babies once or twice, and the men that's acting all holy convinced a girl or abandoned a girl so they would abort the babies that you brought in through fornication. Where the babies now? Where they at? In the vaccines, on food, food, right? On they, they, on, uh, they on your potato chips that y'all eating. They in your Coca Colas and your candy bars, yeah, right. Shampoo. They, Shampoo. It's in your food. It's in your water. It's in your medicine that you're taking. In your makeup, right? It's in your makeup. That's what that's 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 where your babies are. Mm -hmm. Talking about eating your baby. We ain't never ate no babies live like that. They but they feeding you your babies and they eating off your souls, right? Mm -hmm. Not to mention that the black man death rate is due to the fact that our organs are the most vital organs in this world. Yeah. And w the murder that has been done within our society, right, is for the organs, th right? And that's, and, and it's, the, it's, the, it's more precious actually than gold. And they've been trading your organs all over this world. How you not a partaker? How you not a partaker? Or like giving blood. Because this it's a trade-off for something to continue that America flourishes in the world trade system to be able to have the, the goods and the riches of the world. But you are partaker in that. Come on now. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Even if they didn't know, they have the internet. So there's no excuses not to know. And so nope. as the scripture says, for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. Yep. And so you have no excuse not to do a simple Google search and all the information is right there for you. That's right. Even with everything Especially. that they're hiding. This country Especially has been exposed America. for so much wickedness that cannot be comparable to any other nation. Especially in this day of time. Mm -hmm. Everything is at the right in your hand, your phone. Mm -hmm. 
computer, train your hand, just too lazy to do the work, the footwork. Mm -hmm. Or too wicked to move. You you want you want to just lay down there and that's what I'm roll, roll over. Yeah. Just roll over. Yeah. So tell me how you, you gonna get out this, get you. So tell me how you're gonna get out this merchandising system, right? Tell me how you you right, y'all over there building houses, you're buying their wood, right? Mm -hmm. You you over there, right, with your vessels and the precious wood, you're buying a brass, you're buying a iron, you're buying a marble, you're buying the cinnamon, you're buying the uh the perfumes and the ointments and the frankincense, you're buying the wine, you're buying the oil. You buying the flower. So make this spiritual now. Show me this system now that, that y'all came out of, but didn't came out of. Where's the sin? Right? It's describing the sin. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. And the fruits of thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. And all things which were dainty, dainty and God and goodly are departed from thee and thou shalt find them no more at all mm -hmm. the, mer the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and huh. every. Mm -hmm. You got. This is not just a, you, this is the banking system too, right? That's the system, but their riches is in the good as well because we see the trading going on. How do you destroy mm -hmm. merchandise in one hour, spiritually, mm -hmm. that it exists no more, that they can't buy it? Tell me how you do that. And what, is the, and what is the great city that everybody in the world knows? Mm. Absolutely. New York City. Absolutely. Tell me how you do that. Center of commerce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me how you stop buying the goods and the products of America. Tell me how you do that. Mm -hmm. Spiritually. You know, back in the 50s and the 60s, when in the 70s, when they had the civil rights movement, and they still be talking that crap now, but y'all so covetousness that y'all could never do it. They already had uh, guesstimated and estimated that if Black America alone had stopped buying for one week, the whole country would go bankrupt. But y'all Negroes can't do it. You know why? Because you would go, <laughs> go bankrupt yourself. You would have nothing. Right, stocking up is not the answer to you selling them out. Or if you stock up, you have just made them richer quicker. Right, your stocking up doesn't bankrupt the system. You have to not buy anything. How do you do that? How how do you break this system of trading and covetousness? And how do you do it? Come out. How about buying the apples from Egypt? Buying the cabbage uh, from the farm, mm -hmm. yeah. right? What, what about GMP? On the other side of the world. What about GMP, gross national product? They calculate right. everybody's gross and they borrow from that. That's right. And mm -hmm. we, 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 we a stock market to them, the social right. security numbers, mm -hmm. all that. All of that. We cattle. Yep, that's the system, right? Commodity. Right. That's slavery, right? They know y'all Negroes ain't gonna stop working hard. Y'all have y'all have made Babylon rich. Go ahead. So I was thinking in the Torah where it talks about the price of a whore you can use to pay your tithes with. So in comparison, I'm because we're talking about the merchandise of the flour, mm -hmm. all these things that you actually purchase with your monies, um, that it's been used for blood. That bloodshed has been is the is the product of of how do I say of obtaining the flower of obtaining all the goods. So by the time you bring and you you bring it home and you cook it and you eat it, you eating that of a whore, that which has been done evil to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Well, I see a system, but it ain't spiritual. I see they're calling out the sin, but if I was to say that was a sin, y'all say that ain't a sin. And so if we if we go back to the uh, the fact that we think my sister Rita said that we forwarded Babylon. That's right. Right. How we uh, we were in bed with her. We took on right. the ways of Babylon. Also, mm -hmm. we took on I would call it out the extortion. We took on their witchcrafts. We took on trading. their trading. We took on their mindset. We their took on business. their religions, mm -hmm. their shrewd businesses, right? We took on their Elohim. We took on their idols. And so what is y'all requiring of us? If he's telling us to repent of our sins and to come out, what is he requiring? What does that look like? On top of that, you got Negroes coming out with this so-called system talking about we're going to rebuild Black Wall Street in Africa. It ain't going to happen, y'all. It ain't going to happen. Well, they tried it in, in America, but they, they so they know that it can't happen in America. They'd be destroyed. But these Negroes think that they're going to build Black Wall Street in Africa. It ain't going to happen, y'all. No, because it's still with the, with the Babylonian That's mindset. Right. That's right. Right? It's about you. And, and that, that, that mindset is about us coming out being entrepreneurs and making money off the people the poor people in fact and getting a lot for nothing yep it's this honest business it's based on loans it's based on um not paying people accordingly to their work while you sit back and collect yeah right it's based on gimmicks no it's not gonna happen y'all not unified like that you're gonna see each other eat each other yeah. you're gonna see the africans turn on you yeah. just like egypt did if you come to africa and think you're gonna build american african wall street you gonna see the Canaanites come out of the bushes <laughs> and eat you <laughs> go ahead play around and do wall street black wall street in yeah, africa like, which is wicked not up in here that's wicked that's a wicked system y'all what and y'all won't y'all won't allow it. Like it's the same way happen. he didn't allow it to yeah. happen in the first place, he's not gonna allow it anywhere else. Yeah, not it, uh, he, it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. That says y'all. Mm -hmm. America has taught us to deal treacherously That's right. with each other and with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And yes, y'all is not gonna allow that to happen. Tor teaches us to use just weights and to speak righteousness and do righteously. And the only way to do that is to follow his commands and leave, mm -hmm. to begin to walk in obedience. All right, moving on. Where we at? 17. Sorry. Go ahead. 17. I can't see the bottom of that. For in one hour, so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster, and all the companies in ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Okay. Well, I think that's clear, yeah, right? Spilling it out. If you want to call it a system, well, there it is. Tell me how you come out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We are 18. Can you see it? Yes, I can see it. All right. Verse 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, alas, alas, that the great city wherein were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of their costliness, right. excuse me, yep. costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Okay, make mm -hmm. that spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make that wrath just a system that's going to crash. Wall Street most certainly is a system that's going to crash. But that's this not just Wall Street, y'all. Well, no, and if you take the, the scriptures, uh, the, the chapter as in its entirety, you have no argument. Now, if you try to piece it together, you may have an argument for the system. But as we know, we read the whole matter. And, and because we're studying the whole matter and we are going to look into the precepts next, yeah no way around it go home with that yeah all right zachariah fritz you <laughs> fritz 
You're canceled. Now these are he's the type of person that when you answer the question that they have, they got another. They got another. Yeah, they got and another. another one. And, and, another and it's one. and it's endless. And it's, it's endless. to keep you into this loop that you never leave. Right. Physically That's and right. spiritually. But they don't understand that that while they keep trying to drag me in the circle and uh weave a web. They about to get trapped in their own weed, yeah. right? I don't, I don't like going back and forth with the foolishness, but when I see that the argument in, uh, inspires me, forces me right. to continue to spill out the word that they so much want to actually stop right. by infusing me with these dumb arguments actually makes me push out the message even more harder and stronger. And don't worry, it's coming, y'all. Don't, it's coming, right. right? I allow you to irritate me in the comment box. Don't, don't get it twisted. I allow you, Fritz, to speak to me in a comment box. Mm -hmm. I have allowed you, uh, newbie, ebri, weedhead, to speak to me in your lie in my comment box. Don't get it twisted. I've allowed you to do that. Y'all was when all mad because I wouldn't allow you to do it. Right. When they locked you and like that. Right. So you're not weaving no trap for me as they keep pushing the argument. Right. right. This nigga wanted to argue Adam and Eve. Now he don't want to touch it. <laughs> Talking about where was this knockout? Right. And that's what a knockout looked like. Right. When, when you, don't it? you don't remember it. You don't even remember. That's what a knockout looks like. You just woke up. That's all. Yeah, so so what happened? When, when did it happen? So it's still swinging, right? Wait, wait, the fight ain't over. Right. <laughs> Right, talking about I like to see where this knockout. You can't if it was a knockout. Yeah, I can play back the tape <laughs> and let you see yourself get knocked out. Right, then this nigga gonna go jump off of that and come back to the second part of my message. It go, it go comment. Let me see you break this down. Say something. And and when I saw the comment, I was like, low and behold, he don't already know I did it. And so I already did it, but I didn't put it up until like two weeks later. Already been there, done that. You got knocked out in the spirit world already. Right, right. Didn't even know it. Talking right. about, uh, give me another round. Right. <laughs> no, yes. He's a glutton for punishment. He he likes my spanking. Right? He's sadistic. He wants to be spanked by si buyer. He likes it. Because if he can't have a loving relationship, that's what I said, narcissistic. They can't have a loving relationship with you. They, they, they just like, if I could just stay in a fight with her. She cares about me. <laughs> right? He wants some BD. He wants that uh, freak stuff. Right? That's what he want. That's what he want. He want to keep getting spanked by me. Like, why you want to keep embarrassing yourself like that? You want to get knocked out by a female again? Why? Glutton for punishment. I know Bonnie has to be giving you some wisdom. You'll leave her alone. Because every time he opens his mouth, I'm coming after your leopard marrying a Gentile head that gave you a platform to speak stupidity and y'all don't even agree. Y'all yeah. yeah. don't even agree. Yeah. And this Negro was sitting up here admitting that he learned by watching me. Mm. He didn't know nothing until he watched me. Anybody that watched my come out of her part one through five instantly could get on YouTube and act like they subscribe right. <laughs> after watching me, right? right? Mm -hmm. They got inspired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but let me get off of me. I'm getting, I am regress. Go ahead. But when they locked and loaded like that with comebacks and they ready to, and to have another comeback, their mind is already made up. Yeah. They answer they they the already. Yeah, they'd be like, prove me wrong on this one. And I do it and they be, y'all are stupid. They answer the science. They anti messiahs. Right. They, they, they don't fully really believe in the word. Well, they think that Yah's not involved with this, right? So they right. over here playing Jediah uh foolish tricks on the people. Like I said, that Negro, though he speaks slow like a wee head and it sounds like he's tempered, that nigga is evil. And I'm saying it again, Banya, your little tempered, wee head, slow talking, slothful nigga that try to act like he don't speak condescending and evil to people, that he's not evil. He just want to discover the truth. I believe that this was this Negro that called me about two years ago. There was a Negro that speak just like him, that's speaking the same sentiment, talk, told, said something about the spirit led him to my page. And he said he sounded just like him. 
and, and that he wanted to get some understanding by me. But he was like, he wasn't looking for no teacher. And when I, and, and then he looked on my page, he said, well, all of us talking just like him is uh, you uh, cursing out people. Why is you uh, cursing out people and not going after Edom? Say, it sounds like him. And I said, because I'm a prophet to my people. That's why. I'm sitting here at Waterhouse. Well, ain't no more prophets. The same thing he's saying now. And as he's revealing his true thoughts about me before he even touched me, I'm realizing that I believe that that's that Negro that called me. Yes, Banya, your Negro. Yes, Banya's um, uh, newbie's wife. This Negro called me and said the spirit led him to my page to get some understanding. But the whole time he silently challenged me with this calmness and this, this cunning, uh, uh, egotistical, uh, condescending uh, speech, just like this Negro, and I would swear, it's the same one. Then maybe some five, six, seven months later, he called me back trying to apologize. But I was like about, you already forgiven what you want. And I don't remember how that conversation ended, but I believe that there was this slick Negro. It was him trying to play, give me another face to see if he could submit me into perhaps, as I see y'all newbies started this page a year ago, to come and perhaps mm -hmm. uh, put yes, me in your little manhood uh, round mm -hmm. of a boxing round. I believe you that Negro newbie. I believe you that nigga. Say it ain't so. I'm going to have to pull up the, uh, the phone records on this one. I believe you that two-faced, slimy, grimy Negro that called me. All right. Yeah, Banya, you better tell him because you're going to get embarrassed. It's embarrassing that you got a newbie up there talking. But let me stop. All right. I might cut that out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I regret. Go for it. I'm sorry. And as we're about to read this, I know we haven't got to Jeremiah yet, but this is going to play into how this proves that the prophecies that Jeremiah was talking about Babylon's destruction uh, hasn't come yet because uh, we're gonna see that there's no, it's desolate, there's nothing there anymore. And so none, that hasn't happened to anywhere except Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, right. rejoice over her, lo heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Elohim hath avenged on you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence shall that great city, Babylon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So this couldn't just be a Wall Street system collapse. Though that is going to happen, this is violence. Make that spiritual. That means war. And why, why is Yah, why is he saying to rejoice? Why is he saying to the Holy One and to the prophets that he has avenged the prophets on her? Mm -hmm. Y'all can either answer that or we can answer it in the next scripture, but mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So we know, we know mm -hmm. that the destruction of Babylon means that the Holy Ones are going into the wilderness and that the 144,000 are chosen and elected. And so yep. that they're rejoicing over the destruction of her. And this is y'all judgment for slavery, not humble Babylon, but destroy her. Mm -hmm. Like I said, y'all not gonna tell y'all how to punish the whore and the whore that you still a part of. Right. Right. Y'all like got caught with the whore and y'all like, no, don't kill her. Right. Just spank her butt. Right. right. And as if, if you, you supposed to kill the whore, the uh, fornication adulterous whore, and the man, and the man who committed. Israel, that she's whoring with. And that's you. You got busted with her, right? You got busted inside of her, right? Okay, so when they when y'all takes her down, the whore, what what's the what the wrath of a okay. whore is to be burned with fire? A witch whore. Mm -hmm. It's to be burned with fire. But if you found in fornication, both of the parties got to be stoned. That's right. And everybody in them partake it. Right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. And the voice of the and the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters 
shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no crafts, craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. So that's all the idols. That's all, mm. that's all of those who have been made great in Babylon, mm, that's by Babylon. Us, right? Right. That's us. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. us. We're the harpers, right? Music. They became the priesthood of Babylon America to us now. And their music, Black music, has infiltrated the whole world. Mm -hmm. The voice of the harpers, musicians, pipers, trumpeters shall be heard no more all in thee. No craftsmen, right? The skill that we, no more. We, the, the righteous ones of us have come out, mm -hmm. right? Whatever craft shall be found no more in thee. And the sound of the millstone mean no more work. The slaves are gone. We've left. We are the millstone, y'all, mm -hmm. of Babylon. We are the bread of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Verse 23. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. well, the candle is the word of Yahushua. Mm -hmm. It's not offered to you anymore. Mm -hmm. No, you said it. Yeah, yeah. no, you that, said it. That's the light. Yahushua is the light. He ain't going to shine no more in Babylon. And, right. the, and the voice of the bridegroom is, will, is no more repentance. Yeah. There's no more call. There's no more call for repentance. There's no call to it's, come out. The judgment. To come to me. Mm -hmm. That's done, right? And the voice of the bride. Who's the bride? We are. No more. We are. That mean, that, so the, no, we gone. Yep. The bride is gone because when this happens, <laughs> Everybody that died in it is no, there's no more pride. You don't get to, no, it's over. Your salvation, this means your salvation is over in this. The cage just closed up. Mm -hmm. And we know that everybody who, who perishes, who is destroyed in this, they're going to hell. There, there, ain't, there ain't no, oh, we Israel, we here. I just so happen not to have left before it's time. I'm gonna be in I'm, I'm gonna be in heaven. There's none of that. The destruction of Babylon is a destruction on, on man on beast and it's on Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to heed the call now <laughs> on obedience and come out. It's easy. I mean, y'all is telling you to lie down. And it's, you, you can't reject him now and then say, okay, well, I'll lie down when it's impossible to now stand. You can't play with y'all like that. Mm -hmm. And to what, what uh, Malcolm was saying too, those who are, are claiming to be righteous or a child of Yah or, or, or anything of that matter, it, we're, we're going to read it in some of these verses that you brought up. Um, but when he sends the people to destroy Babylon, they are not going to have compassion on anybody there, <laughs> man, woman, or child. So you can stand in front of them and be like, I'm a child of Yah, you can't destroy me. And then you won't, you won't go to any. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Can you can you see that, Kia, for thy merchants? Yeah, yes, I can. All right. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For so by thy sorcery. That's right, not the whole earth. The merchants are the great men of the earth. Uh-huh. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Mm -hmm. And in her was found. The blood of prophets there you go. and of holy ones and of all that were slain upon the earth. So go. this is this is the, the murder that they not just us, mm -hmm. not just the righteous Israel, the blood that was shed across this world was due to them. Say mm -hmm. it ain't so. Mm -hmm. Blood of the prophets is and on so the when hand. he says due to them, double what they yeah. who who is he talking to? The other nations that was deceived by her. Yeah. Right. There's a difference in fornicating with someone and living deliciously with someone versus being deceived by her. We got two brackets of nations here. Nations being deceived by her and merchants waxing great with her. All right. And so what it is time for them to understand at this point is that then came a pale horse. And he who rode upon him was death, and Shaul followed behind. This is that time for them. That's right. 
You got to, okay. You stop here. No. It, Hold on. What you're saying. Is she got a question. 24. 24. Please. Can I say because of her, the blood of the prophets and the holy one, and all of who have been um, been slain on your snake? No. <laughs> Was it because of Babylon? No. It says, and in her was found the blood of the prophets. Right? How does the blood of the prophet get found upon a generation that didn't slay the prophets? So Messiah told us how the blood of the prophets. That's Matthew. That's in Matthew uh, 23, right? What did he say? Fill up the measure. That's the cup, right? That's Jehoshua's cup. The cup is Jehoshua's cup of his blood and all the prophets, right? He said this to the leadership. When he said this, he was talking to the Pharisees, scribes, elders, leaders, priests of Israel. Where are they now? Over there in Babylon. Saying what? Peace, peace. Peace, peace, right? I am sending prophets and wise men and teachers who you will kill and crucify, flog and persecute. So all the righteous blood shed on the earth, on the earth, from the blood of Abel until Zechariah will be found in you. So I said, thus says Yah, he sent me as a prophet, test. And you bring me in your synagogues mm -hmm. and your councils, right? On these newbie channels to bring me and slander me, that's murder. Right? Mm -hmm. To say that I'm falsifying the scripture, that's slander. Mm -hmm. Right? That's murder. To call up my past sins mm -hmm. and act like I'm that defiled person today and I'm doing these things, that is slander. That is murder. Mm -hmm. Right? Jesus. To say that I'm a witch and a Jezebel, mm -hmm. that I steal money from the poor, all of these accusations that's coming up because they're angry with the judgment that I put on them for their sins, for blowing a trumpet. That is murder. And they are bringing me up in their councils. Their councils right now, their synagogues is the YouTube. And when they have their meetings and private meetings about me, right? Their private meetings is how they're going to do what? Shut me up. Put me in uh, 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 their secret council. Their secret councils, right? And how they going to conspire to shut me up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or pervert the message that yeah, or pervert the message. To, That's right. To blow. Mm -hmm. That is the first wave of what that looks like. The blood is on them. Mm -hmm. The blood is on them. The, all they got to do is wish me dead, and they do, and they wish me dead. Mm -hmm. So in verse 23, I want to go into the word sorceries. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, we got G5331. The word is pharmakia. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the first, the first word uh, straight up is medication. That's the first word uh, off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, pharmacy, magic, sorcery, witchcraft, uh, poisoner, druggist, <clears throat> drug, spell giving potion. And so you can also look this up. America in the world has one of the biggest, if not the biggest, healthcare industry in the entire world. It's a billion dollar in, uh, industry. No other place <clears throat> in uh, the world has a healthcare industry like this. Number one, we can testify to that over here. Mm -hmm. You don't see a hospital or a dialysis center on every corner. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I'm not going to say they don't really need it, but they really don't need it like that. One, because their food is not utterly defiled like our food is. And we know that the things that we eat and put in our bodies, okay. they are, they, they triggered by sin. Mm -hmm. And so if we put those things in our bodies. Then that's when we start. That's when diseases happen. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, I know a lot of brothers like to quote Deuteronomy 28, but they don't really want to uh, say how exactly those diseases are being triggered, those curses come upon us. Also, um, 
Yeah, I'm to but yeah. That's that's pretty much what I want to bring out about uh right. karma king. So, that's right. So the seed, the whole world with her sorceries was what? The pharmacia, but it's mostly the pea juice now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the COVID that they enforced upon the whole world. Don't tell me America wasn't behind this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not just talking about a spiritual system. And this is how demons, right? At, half of these brews is on medication. Yeah, if they not smoking weed and taking drugs and right. uh, drinking the alcohol of that land, the yeah. wine of that land, which is defiled too, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> half of these people, uh, man, not half, but a lot of these people are sick with every disease yeah. of the plague. Talking about plague's not going to hit us, right? right. They are. They time. already right. plagued. Yeah. <laughs> they already. Plagued. They already got the plagues of Egypt. Some of the plagues, but not man, hit but but uh, but Babylon actually has more uh, diseases than any other country. There's a lot of. I mean, if you look up statistically online, they'll say Americans suffer the most with like obesity. Why? Because they're gluttonous. There's food on every corner. Yeah. Or America um, suffers from, you know, heart disease more than any other country, even the children, like let's like talking about the children in comparison to the children who are in these lands, the children uh, are talking about being mentally ill now are talking about they, they are a boy when they were born a girl transgenderism, identity, that's, identity uh, project. If that's not demonic. No, that's and a lot of these. That's a great point. A lot of are, to, mm, sorry. I'm sorry. A lot of products that that we uh, that are being used in America are uh, banned in other countries like yeah. Europe. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? products, you, can't, you can't even bring that into Europe, nor can you find them in Europe because they know what it does to the body, right. what, what it does to the human body and the effects that uh, these unclean things have on us, on our mind, on our neurons, on our hearts, on our emotions, the way we act, the way we think. All these things affect us, and, and at the end of the day, most importantly, it's it's hindering uh, those in Babylon from being able to get the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it's a great point. Um, I would like to question those who are listening to this video. What plagues are you currently under that you maybe hadn't considered before? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving forward. Mm -hmm. Also, the highest rate of mental illness. Yeah, that's right. That's all demonic. Yeah, absolutely. But then, but then the sorcery behind that is they now make it mainstream. They now glamorize it and say, "Oh, this artist has come out as a schizophrenic. Let's get them on our show and let's talk about it. Let's normalize schizophrenia." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Woman of the year is a, used to be a man. Let's let's normalize being a demon. That's the, that's the sorcery. And that's what Yahushua said, that in the last days, there will be demons walking amongst you. Yeah. Walking and talking yeah. amongst you. But it is Celebrate. monsters, but they look like humans. That would be Babylon. Yeah. Like my brother said, it ain't, they're not just normalizing it, they celebrate it. That's right. Right. And it's, and it's right. being influenced. They're being influenced or they're being an influence mm -hmm. on the nations on this side. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you see it in their commercials. You see it in they like when we on YouTube sometimes in uh, a e, uh, um, a Middle Eastern um, commercial will come Highly up, and you, and you see and you see they rapping and doing all type of stuff. And yeah, I'm like, it's all the hip hop, black hip hop is influenced. Yep, by yep. the Great War. Even when they dress, it's influenced by our fashion. Right. And even, even talking about the devices in itself, I remember making a joke, you know, being in Egypt, it reminds me of an ancient land. You got Bedouins around, they still out there in tents, but they got cell phones. You know, right. that to me is like, right. it's like twilight zone, <laughs> right? But America is uh, the, the manufacturer for those things. They're, they're the brain behind all of these devices, all of these, these idols, ultimately. Right. right, they got TVs in the tent. They got TVs in the tent. <laughs> what you do? They do. Right. TV hit the whole world. Hold on. Move forward. Oh, I didn't. All right. Mm -hmm. So now, 
sticking within revelations of his own prophecy. Uh, this, I mean, everything, the whole argument is gone already, but we're just going to go in how y'all says to knock it down, right? Revelation 17 gives you the answer of how she's going to be destroyed with fire and how her plagues come in one day. So if her plagues is coming in one day, then what's happening now? Because they keep saying these are the plagues. What's happening now, right? Mm. The COVID, this famine that's coming up, the violence. What this is an imitation. That's them doing it. Yeah. Emulating revelation. And making you think we can overcome it. The fires in California. So that's not the plagues and the wrath of y'all. This is coming in one day, y'all. And in that one day, when that happens, all of it is happening at once. So what they think that they are coming against is like, y'all, is going to be a famine. Y'all, uh, we just had the plagues of COVID uh, and probably more uh, diseases coming up. That's not the plagues. No. Monkey box. Yeah, that's just the diseases of Egypt that's been there that they playing with on y'all right. right now to think that y'all can overcome something, right? For a new right. vaccine. Right? right, for a new vaccine, y'all overcoming it, right? No, that's not it. That's not this. That's not this, y'all. That's not this. This is happening in one hour. And that one hour of fire coming and brimstone coming down upon her in one hour is going to cause all these things to happen. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is the answer mm -hmm. to all of that rhetoric. It just means come out of sin. It's spiritual. It's just the system. Right? It's just a, a spiritual plague. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And that it. this is the answer for it can't be the whole world. And it can't be every nation. Right? Somebody? I, I have a question, but I don't want to. Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings, one hour with the beast. Mm -hmm. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse seated, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For Elohim hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, mm. and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Elohim shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. All right. So the whole world is not going to be destroyed no. in this. The word don't say that nowhere. And those that keep pushing that is a lie. Because mm -hmm. they don't understand prophecy that the, the last battle of Ezekiel is not this. This is not the war against Yahushua. This is Yahushua using other nations to enact his vengeance on Babylon specific. That's not the end of the world. And we know it because the beast, this beast, whoever that is, that hates the whore, is going to reign for another three and a half years in a new world order. So it couldn't be the whole world. And it couldn't be every nation. And there actually could be some place to run right. from this raft that these nations are going to send against her. So Yah is doing this, right? Yes, he is. Make this spiritual. And it shows how much uh, that Babylon has done to these worlds that they all come to one mind and they yep. shall give their power over to the beast. And so for those that are listening, why would you want to stay in a country that these 10 nations, they're about to unleash, well, Yah is about to unleash his whole wrath on this land, okay. and you want to sit and stay and act like it's okay, and you're not going to uh, uh, physically uh, feel, this. feel this. No, I know, because the scripture says, wait 
on Yahushua. He's coming to gather us from the four corners. Stand still. Stand still. Right? Well, we're gonna that'll be the next lesson. We're gonna see what this uh wait and he's gonna gather us actually is spoken of what that means and what that looked like. It's right in front of your faces, y'all. So that don't mean waiting Babylon though. <laughs> No, everybody saying Messiah coming to get us. Show me where. Show me where he said that. Then again, show what he did say. Yeah, show me where he said himself. I'm coming to come and get you out by by myself. They must be waiting for those great wings of an eagle to maybe be caught away. That's why I said these people that's pushing this is secretly falsifying what they really believe. Yeah. Um, in either a rapture doctrine, a fly wings, mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 a chariot, yeah, an Ezekiel chariot. We don't understand nothing that's talking ship, about ships of Tarshish, <laughs> ship all of that. Of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that proves all of that. But go ahead. What are we doing? So re revelate. Go ahead. So right now we just read Revelations. And most people that make their straw man dumb arguments will only quote a piece of a piece of one verse of Revelation 18, right? Uh, they'll quote a piece as in verse four, and they won't, they'll be like, partakers of our sins, right? <laughs> and we instantly, our argument is actually defeated when you just read all the revelations. Right. Their argument is defeated. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah 50, 51, that precepts basically... A, if not all the revelations and a lot more to give you more understanding right uh completely precepted from jeremiah 15 51 so we're going to read those three precepts but we're not going to touch jeremiah 50 and 51 to the very end of this whole uh knockout because jeremiah 50 and 51 is not the only one that gave this command and so by the time you see this command spoken by darn near all the prophets, though we're not pulling out all the prophets, your mouths are going to be stopped yeah. with your own feces. I'm going to throw it in your mouth. I'm going to put on gloves, though, because it ain't my feces, it's yours, right? I'm going to make you eat your own doodle, -doo. yeah. Prophets don't talk like that, but prophetesses do. Right, <laughs> the ones that train dogs and beasts. Mm -hmm. Right, um, so we're going to read that and then we're going to read all just the quote where all of these things are precepted. This Revelation 18 that they have quote is precepted from, and then we're going to read all of the chapter to get an idea if this just a system, right? It's just, just spiritual. Is he saying sin, just sin, just come out of sin and keep Torah? That's it. No. When we came out of Egypt, sin was everywhere. Yeah. He brought us in to out of Egypt full of sin to the land of Canaan that was full of sin. That don't make no sense. Sin is everywhere. We could have just came out of sin in Egypt. So they saying why would we come out of Babylon? Because sin is here. Sin is in, right? And then they always quote Israel, thinking they know where I'm at at all times and all places, right? Some of Israel's Tel Aviv, and they got a faggot, uh, uh, what do you call it? A parade and all of this. Yeah, they doing all of that. Sin is everywhere. But Babylon sins has reached up to heaven. Yeah. Whatever Tel Aviv is doing is like, they got it from Babylon. They got it from Babylon and whatever Tel Aviv is doing is like, this small compared to how America's doing it. Right. For everyone, the, for, for the one parade that Tel Aviv may do once a year, which I have never been to, never been to, right? Never gone, never been there when it happened. America got like 50 gay parades. Yep. And they, they annually, they even have it on your calendar right now. What are you talking about? You can't even delete it. It's just there. The whole month, the whole month of June, right? Sin is everywhere, but it has not mounted up. So we're gonna read all the precepts. We're gonna use, we're gonna go through Jeremiah fifty fifty one. Y'all have heard it a thousand times, but we're gonna repeat it because some of y'all haven't read it. And then we're gonna show you the other precepts, prophecies about the come out, the command, 
commandment by a prophet to come out. It is a commandment mm -hmm. and to not believe it and to not receive it and to uh, uh, speak against it is iniquity. Sin is on you. The Revelation so chapter 18. The call, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So the call to come out of Babylon actually began with, with Abraham. It was in the right. land of Ur and Babylonia. And you can see how Yah is perfect, even with the names. Like he's giving you a hint. Babylon, Babel, Babylonia, like it's, it's perfect. And so he said everywhere, Yah told him, everywhere your footsteps, it's going to be your land and your land of your descendants. And so we see that Abraham had to have faith. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I forget the, the prophecy, but it says you, you need to have the faith of Daniel, Job, no. and, and Noah in order to escape the time yes. that's that's going to come upon us. Mm -hmm. But we also know Abraham had to have that faith too. He was he came out to a strange land he knew nothing about. Uh, he, he was in the city. Babylon, Babylonia was lit. So he had to come out to a place that was quiet. He had to come live a different life, humble, live in tents. Um, something that I know a lot of us will find real strange from going into a city and then having to come out in tents. But it's the work that Yah is saying that needs to be done. Why? Because we're covered in sin. We're covered in iniquity. And these are the things that we need to shed off in a, in a perfect place in the wilderness that Yah is trying to bring us to so that we can serve him. Just as our forefathers did in Egypt, they had to come out. And where did they have to go? They had to go to the wilderness so they can serve. Let me just say something else, though. Yah's wise, though. Um, our culture, the way we live today is a hundred times thousand gone from even the way we lived in Egypt, more ancient, uh, more in tune with nature. We knew how to make fire by hand. We actually grinded our own meal. We did not just shop in supermarkets and it appeared. Uh, meat was not printed in the printer and Burger King didn't exist. Cars didn't exist. Gasoline didn't exist. Neither did technology. We are living in a world that's not real. And so y'all cannot, one of the mistakes that's happening with the come out with people hearing the message, they get excited. They, they are uh, anxious, but you would snap if y'all dropped you off in the rules of this instantly. That is not what y'all prophesied would happen. And so this is one of the things that want to fight and one of people to say, well, we came out, but where's the wilderness? It didn't happen instantly. None of y'all Negroes is ready to jump in the wilderness like that. You got to be humbled before and learn some lessons of life and faith before y'all does that, or you will actually snap again. Yeah. And so y'all didn't prophesize that our going into the wilderness is a direct flight. Right. It didn't prophesize that. Y'all keep assuming that. Right. All right, so let's read these uh, precepts, and then we're going to go into all the scriptures to see more again, this, this, this dumb lie, this dumb, this, you know, this dumb battle. We're trying to make it good. You know how when you know you can knock somebody out with the first punch in the first round, but because the people came and bought the tickets, <laughs> they're going to be mad with you, so you got to give them a show. All right, let's give them a show. Revelation. Not real quick. I'm sorry. Not real quick before you before you go. I'm sorry. I'm you sorry. Before you go, uh, before you go into verse four, I wanna I wanna uh, break down the word come come out of her. So when you go into it, you can kind of plug in to bring a better understanding of what it actually means and that it's actually physical. So the word for uh, the word for come is extra komai. Com exit. Um, <laughs> right. Exit. It means to come forth out depart escape get out That's away right. forth out thence proceed spread abroad and if you go further into this word uh the next word out it actually means it means x um exits right um let's see Okay, go ahead. Yep. Okay, so we can see Revelations 18. Go ahead and read, whoever wants to read the precepts. Mm -hmm. Ready for me? All right. Revelation, oh, go Revelation ahead. Chapter, okay. chapter 18, verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, 
that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Jeremiah 50, verse 8. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and go exit forth out of the land of the child beings and be as the male goats, leaders before the flocks. Jeremiah 51, verse 6. Flee out, escape of the midst of Babylon. And slip away, save every man his life. Don't be cut off, silenced in her iniquity. For it is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render to her recompense. Mm -hmm. Ready? Oh, so y'all are familiar, yeah. those that's watching this now, y'all are familiar with Jeremiah 50, 51, come out. But now we're going to see that John, the revelator, did not just precept. Jeremiah 50 and 51 in this command, as y'all said, oh, if they would have just listened to my commandments spoken by the prophets, right? Uh, like I said, in all the prophets, they speak about this day. So you're going to see it in two ways. We're going to pull out everything that says, come out of her, flee out of her, escape out of her. But if they don't speak it in that way, then Yah says, return to me, return to me. That's the other way, right? Return to me. We're not going to do the return messages when we, until later, when y'all keep saying Yahushua is coming to get us. I'm going to wait on him and not the command of the voice of any man, but I'm going to wait on Yahushua and they have no idea what that means. So after this, as we can clearly see all the get out commands, from the prophets, then we're going to go through all the scriptures where he says, and I will gather you. Mm -hmm. This is not making sense. You have a command by the prophets that says, come out, exit, save yourself, flee. And then you got the other prophets saying, I'm going to gather you. I'm going to collect you. Well, we're going to have to make this make sense. But they're both saying the same thing. All right. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 20. Go forth, exit from Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare, tell the proclaiming of this, going out to the end of the earth, say, Yahweh has redeemed his servant, Jacob. Mm -hmm. so this, is our right? this, this is our redemption right all right we, we're going to see that there was no command to flee babylon during the time of our babylonian captivity uh when cyprus came to get to take over babylon there was no command to flee nor did anybody flee anywhere go ahead mm -hmm. isaiah 52 depart depart go out from there Touch no unclean thing. Go out of the midst of her. Cleanse yourselves, you who bear the vessels of Yahweh. That's what we're doing now. We cannot be dropped off in the presence of Yah until we cleanse. Mm -hmm. Approaching Yah unclean, you'll get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you're wicked, but he has to cleanse us. But we, are, we have wickedness, though. We still got sin on us, y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. And and two, it says, touch no unclean thing. Like in Revelation 18, it says, right. it's the cage of every unclean bird and, and defiled spirit. So, mm -hmm. Lamentations 4, verse 15. Depart, they cried to them. Unclean, depart, depart, don't touch. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the nations, there shall no more live here. All right, so that's not spiritual. Mm. Zechariah 2, verse 6. Come, come, flee from the land of the north, says Yahweh. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the sky, says Yahweh. Come, Zion, escape, you have dwelled. You who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. All right, make it make sense. It makes sense. All right. right. No, let's go back. Hold on. No, make that make sense. You 
So Jeremiah 50 and 50, 51, 50, 50 and 51 already happened. Make this make sense. Mm. Make this spiritual. Make this just the system. Make this the whole world. It says daughter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to read these about... things. We're going to read these things and then either before or after, I'm going to prove there was never a command to leave Babylon during the time of the ancient days. And nor did we ever have to, what did we have to escape in Babylon? What did we have to flee? Nothing. That's right. He didn't, uh, he didn't totally destroy Babylon. He humbled her and then put her underneath his garrison. We didn't have to flee nothing, and we didn't. And anyone that says that is a lie. As we read this, and they're going to say this was what? You're going to say this was ancient Babylon? How could it be? Now you got to prove to me in history that we did that. No, we did not. And so I know that some of you that are watching me for the first time, and some of you that may be new to the awakening, some of you just be maybe old. I bet you you haven't heard nobody with the come out message break out all of these commands like this. Now, let me not be so arrogant to say nobody. By the time my message has been out for three years, somebody has heard it. Somebody's mimicked it and definitely took it. But I'm not going to be as arrogant to say that nobody, but I'm saying I bet you. I'm just like, you most likely probably have not heard no one break down any other scripture about the come out message except Jeremiah 15, 51 and Revelations 18. As if Revelations 18 is only precepted by that one prophet. When we see Isaiah, we see Solomon, we see Zechariah, and we also see Paul using it half partially. Let's see how Paul uses the quotation and does he imply it only means spiritually come out of sin. Mm -hmm. especially you said that nobody's hit it especially amongst the false leaders and these false prophets and the people that don't think they're prophets and the false scribes most of the the, the leaders of the new awakening um there, there's no one amongst amongst them that has hit on it for 20 20 plus hours and broken down scripture by scripture and you threw in the history to help for the historians that don't, that don't want to believe too for Mm -hmm. Yeah, and scribes and scholars. That's right. So uh, Paul um, quoted partially the quote. And so he, he's not quoting it as the prophetical fulfillment, but he's quoting it as a precept of how to use it. Let's see, does he mean spiritually or physically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Second Corinthians. Uh, chapter 6, starting at verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Messiah with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of Elohim with idols? For you are the temple of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Verse 17. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says Yahweh. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, right. says Yahweh Almighty. All right, so is that spiritual or physical? When he's saying yoked together, fellowship, communion, and in accord or in agreement, what is he talking about? How do you spiritually separate from fellowship? How do you spiritually separate from communion? What's communion? 
together. You're dwelling together. together. Fellowship means y'all hang out together. You have a social mm -hmm. environment together, right? Unequally yoked means that you are working together in some institution or system or even marriage, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or even marriage. Mm -hmm. It unequally yoked is walking together in some kind of worldly mm -hmm. contract business, either in marriage, business, house, land, property, system, right? Uh, and what accord as Messiah with Belial, right? How are you unified in the process of you being amongst them? What part, what part? Part is not just mental. What is, what part do you have as a believer with this? An agreement has the temple. The agreement of the temple of Yahweh is what? Yeah. The temple of Yahweh is supposed to be among idols? Well, if Babylon has become the cage of every demonic, that's those are the idols, right? Why is the temple of Elohim amongst them? How do you spiritually separate your temple from demons? That's not Talia. If you're in the land of demons, you build your temple in the land where demons are ca in a caged place with demons. You cannot build a temple in an unclean place. And if it's so, a land cage with demons, that means there's murder and burial ground unrighteously all over the land. So to add to that, it, it, it brings to mind two uh, stories in, in Torah. And one of them is Paul when he wrote the letter, I believe it was to the, was it to the Corinthians where uh, in the assembly there, they were gossiping about a man who had uh, a mother and daughter. Mm -hmm. Those are, that man committed the act. Mm -hmm. Paul said, "All of y'all are guilty because y'all didn't say nothing, y'all didn't rebuke and judge it and remind it. Yeah, you, and you didn't separate it from your midst, right? And the, same, the other, sorry, just, the other story was uh, in in Old Testament. Um, uh, y'all help me out, okay. but." There was somebody who brought in someone not of us and was showing it off in front of the whole assembly. And one of the brothers went and killed him, judged it quick, Levi. ended it. Yeah, this is at Baal Peor when they had an orgy with the, uh, the uh, daughters of Moab and basically and, uh, caught a disease. And one of them, I guess, fell in lust with her overnight and brought her into a temple like they was going to get married and bring her into the light. And the priest thrust um, a spear through the sides of both of them. Both of them. And if you, if they were not, if they do not judge it, rebuke it, cut it out, then they would be guilty by association. And you will receive the punishment as if you did the sin yourself. Okay. And that's same, same word. Uh, Go ahead, Malcolm. Ahead, the same example of Achan, the one uh, when Yah told them to go in and utterly destroy that mm -hmm. land, mm -hmm. and he brought in the devoted things, the things that were supposed to be destroyed into mm -hmm. the camp, and they had to find it out. Yeah. And when they found out who did it and and yeah. and, and what they took, they had to destroy the family. They had to remove that from their camp. So how much so us being the temple of Yah, being the vessels of Yah in a land like that. And also talking about Moshe when when he was uh when Cora was, you know being jealous and was saying that I can do what you're doing too. Mo Moshe said, let's draw this line. Corey, your people stay over there. Those who are with y'all come over here. And yeah. Corey, all your other people was swallowed up. And so it's almost the same. You're going to stay in that land and you're going to be swallowed up like Korah or you're going to go to uh, leave Babylon as he commanded you to and not be swallowed up. Right. Okay. I just want to point out that in verse 17, the same uh, the same word is being used, exer uh, for come out, 
again, and you can see it is it's um it's consistent in the new and in the old to flee, to go forth, to escape, to come out. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hold on one second. Okay, we're moving on, y'all. Real quick, real quick. I just wanted to hit on 18 real quick because uh, I have heard people say that there is only going to be women in the kingdom. Verse 18 hits right here. Only men, only men. I mean, excuse me, only men. I apologize. Only men in the kingdom and say, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahweh Almighty. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to hit on that. Okay. We moving, we moving on? What are we doing, y'all? Next? We're moving on. All right. Okay. Judgment against Nineveh. Um, three. Verse one. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey doesn't depart. The noise of the whip, the noise of the rattling of wheels, prancing horses and bonding chariots. The horsemen mounting and the flashing sword, the glittering spear and the multitude of, of slain and a great heap of corpse. And there is no end of the bodies. They stumble on their bodies. Okay, stop right there. So this is Nahum, uh, the judgment of Nineveh, which was uh, one of the main cities of Babylon. Could this be talking about Nineveh, Babylon, of then? Past tense? I don't know. Yeah, if you're not sure. No, because way, this is it. Mm -hmm. yeah. it said the, the bloody city of Nineveh, and uh, it's full of lies and robbery. And the, the, the city of Nineveh, they, if my memory does me well, they repented long ago. That's right. Nineveh repented at the preaching of, of Jonah. So this prophecy about Nineveh is about Babylon today. All right. Bloody city. That's what you got, right? Full of lies and robbery. And the prey does, doesn't depart. What? Is, who's that? Man, that's just like huh the ones who should be us leaving the we the pray. Yeah. they don't they won't leave man so because they won't leave we get two they're going to hear the noise of a whip the noise of the rattling of wheels prancing horses the bounds of chariots the horse mountain the what is these things y'all flashes what is a flashing sword and a glittering spear this is an army make this spiritual because you won't leave. Because you because the prey, we are the prey, won't depart. Because you won't leave. This is what's gonna I have to do, right? War from within, right? War within is gonna be war in this land. The flashing sword and glittering spear. What is that? That's bullets, guns, and missiles, y'all. Uh-huh. They stumble on their bodies, uh, slain a great heap of corpses, and there is no end of bodies. That's what I saw when y'all first showed me. That's what I, that's what made me cry and my stomach twisted up and I was sick um, when y'all was calling me out and calling me to something. Um, this is what, I, that's what I saw. That, that description right there. Uh, it was so um, unbelievable. There is no, they stumble on their bodies. No, y'all don't believe this. This is us being slain in the streets and not being buried. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse four, because of the multitude of the prostitution of the alluring prostitute, the mistress of witchcraft who sells nations through her prostitution and families through her witchcraft. Mm-hmm. So what are we Ooh, talking we, about here? Yep. Yeah. 
That's the that's the human trafficking right there. That right, that's it right there. Like I said, if he sells nations, you know, the nation of Israel was sold, and she just sold us throughout the nations, and so now that's why we're so spread out to the four corners. She sold us, but let me help you understand this a little bit more. It's the it's the king's English. It's not selling that. It's not saying that we sold nations. It's 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 the same word that we sold ourselves, right? Addicted, yes. And so they, through their policies, have caused nations and families through her witchcraft and prostitution sell ourselves by coming into contract with them. We sold ourselves. They helped us merchandise sell their own soul through the, pro the uh, prostitution and the witchcraft. What is the prostitution in the witchcraft? It's a combination of things, but we're going to see. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. Behold, I am against you, says Yahweh of armies, and I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show you the nations, your nakedness, and the kingdoms of your shame. So that is for her sins to be exposed. Um, she's a prostitute. She's acting like she's innocent, like she's a virgin. And so he got to lift her skirt up and show the evidence that she's a whore, y'all. She's a whore. <laughs> and expose her wickedness to the nations. And that's what's been happening to America, I would say, in the last maybe five years. Yeah. She all the, the evil through the YouTube has been exposed of how evil and corrupt yeah. her whole nation is. And it's not finished being exposed. Guess who's also exposing her? Russia. Russia pulling out the history on America's false deals, treaties, uh, uh, hypocrisies, broken um, um, uh, business deals, um, lies. He... Uh, yeah, he pulling out uh, their their um, their policies in slavery and business and and war. He 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 he's uh, he he's got receipts. On. Yeah, he got he receipts. Got re Russia <laughs> telling on and slavery. Russia is telling on back. America right now. Uh huh. Go ahead. Verse six, I will throw abominable filth on you and make you vile and will set you a spectacle. Yeah, abominable filth is your poo-poo. Go ahead. <laughs> it will happen that all those who look at you will flee from you and mm -hmm. say, Nevene is laid waste. Mm -hmm. Who will mourn for her? Mm -hmm. Where will I see comforters for you? See, they're going to flee from her. Those that begin, those of us that's fleeing, why are we fleeing? Yeah, it's going to, we see, the, her judgment is coming, but why are we fleeing? Those that really seek Yah, why are we leaving? Yeah, I told you. Peace. One Yah, it's a commandment to leave. All right. Obedience. Fear of Yah. The fear of Yah. So that we can be where Yah is. The wickedness. So not in Babylon. Yes, to separate from this, the wickedness of her that is so abominable, y'all, that we're going to flee. He said he's going to expose her first. But that in that exposing, don't think, in that exposing her, there's going to be an uprising against her. Right. Right? And so we're going to flee from this exposure. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving forward. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. Verse eight. Are you better than no Amon, who was situated among the rivers, who had the waters of around her, whose rampart was the sea, and her walls was of the sea? So that's that's the picture of the U.S. Babylon the being. military strategy, how they wasn't never um, taken and laid waste, mm -hmm. right? So Noam is uh, Thebes, the city of Thebes, that is situated mm -hmm. on the Mediterranean front. Mm -hmm. 
and between the um, river, right? So nobody could just come through the seas and, and just like storm at her like that or come through the rivers without knowing it. And then they had an upper nation and a lower nation that was in league with them that nobody could just come through the land without going through another land that they were helpers with. And Kush, like, so he's saying, when he says, are you better than? He's saying, you think you more invincible than the city of Thebes just because they were situated between two seas and two nations that nobody could touch her? Yeah. Kush and Egypt were her boundless strength, right? Put in Libya were her helpers. So he's expressing Babylon of today in the strategic um, placement, literal, that has made it, uh, uh, how do I say, hard to uh, attack from within. America has a North American treaty with Mexico and Canada. They are unified. Nobody could just storm through into America's borders unless they go through Mexico and can't. They got to go through Canada and Mexico first. That's their money maker. And you got to be able to cross some seas real quick. You're not just you're not gonna come into American shores with no ship and take over now. So he's saying, so you think you're invincible because of this. Okay. No, you're not. Go ahead. Talia, so, could that be the reason why he built the border down for Mexico? All around? Perhaps. It could be. It could be. Or to keep us in. That too. <laughs> yeah. Keep us in. Yep. Because the Mexicans don't seem to be having a problem still getting in. Yeah. That. They just getting on the plane. <laughs> getting on this train. No. They still getting in. It's the it, we having a problem getting out. Getting out, yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Verse nine. Cush mm -hmm. and Egypt were her boundless strength. Put and Libya were her helpers. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the head of all the streets. Mm -hmm. And they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. Okay. And, and, and this is this is to happen, correct? This is in this. Is, this is uh, going to happen. This is coming. This okay. Is coming. Mm -hmm. so see, it seems like wait, wait. Her young children were also dashed in pieces. What's the also? Who's who's prophesied to get dashed? Our children, children to get dashed in pieces. Us, the ones that stay in Babylon, uh huh, Israel. Yeah, how was our children getting dashed in pieces? They getting killed, murdered from the nations within. Yep, right. We're gonna just, we're gonna be, see I'm sorry, we're gonna be sieged from within. That's Jacob's trouble. The Jacob's right. trouble is there to help us see that we need to be leaving. But I'm going to now show you prophecies where he's predicting the same thing that they did, they're doing to us while in Babylon. It's going to happen to them right after they do it to us. Right after. Uh huh. Verse 11 You also will be drunken, you will be hidden, you also will seek a stronghold because of the enemy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, all your fortresses will be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they are shaken, they fall into the mouth of the eater. Why does this sound like our, our prophecy? Yeah. But it's, it. Because it's, but it's Babylon. Yeah. So all of that prophecy that Yah says is going to happen to us, got to be happening to us where? Inside. In Babylon. Mm-hmm. Now, when it when it says you will be drunken, mm -hmm. is that because we partake in her wine, pride. her cup? Yeah, uh, you also will be drunk. You're in, in the pride of her. And it says you seek a stronghold because of the enemy. 
because you stayed in Babylon and didn't trust in, in Yahweh and let, allowed him to be your stronghold, now you got to seek a stronghold in Babylon. And so you're still, you're so prideful to, to see this. And, and so mm -hmm. it says you will be hidden, but they, Yah said, even in the cave, the cave, they're going to ask for the cave or the cave and the rocks to mm -hmm. fall down on them. Yeah, and right. they're going to they're going to find you right. even on the, the mountaintops. Right. Yeah. All these bunkers that America's making the underground cities for this. No, 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 no. Nope. <laughs> nope. And then when you consider all of the satellites and everything that they have, they basically sitting there watching where you go. Yeah. Oh, Russia know everywhere. Russia know all their hidden fortresses. He right. he's when they, when they come, this is utter destruction, y'all. Yeah. There will be you will you will be hidden, but you will also seek a stronghold because of the enemy. No, you're gonna hide, but they're gonna find you. Trust mm -hmm. me. They were ready for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you Where hide was the city? When you hide Where was the city? Go ahead. Sorry. Where was the city of Noah Mon in verse eight? What'd you say that was? Thebes. Alexandra today on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Thebes. Okay. Thebes. Okay. All right. Which was the end of the now. And that goes out into the Mediterranean. So they had those waterways protected. And landlocked with Egypt, Kush, put in Libya. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 13. Behold, your troops in your midst are women. Uh, the gates of your <laughs> the gates of your land are set wide open to your enemies. The, vi the fire has devoured your bars. Yep. Then he say that's going to happen to our strong men. They're going to be like women. Yeah. Yep. This prophecy trapped. is the same prophecy that y'all say going to happen to us. But yeah, he's prophesied it against Nineveh, the city in Babylon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like us grabbing our groins. Or, yep. Uh, yeah. yep. Uh, yeah. That's where it's going to happen in Babylon. And when it happens to us, it's going to happen to them. Oh, they're going to gonna turn them into women. All these soldiers and troops that think they pray. That's the dire son. Well, does that mm -hmm. also, also speak to them um, opening up the el eligibility for women to join? Mm -mm. No? Yes. Because it's kind of being blurred on both ways. No. Yeah. They're gay. We already know that. Yeah. But is there, they're going to be, our women, meaning them. they're going to be cowards. Yeah. When this happens, right. they're so brave. They've been brave in every other war. Not this generation of faggots going in the army. They gonna be cowards. He gonna he, they have never seen war hit home on them the way they have raided everybody else's land. Right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That that was it. Next slide. Yeah, this is a, they think they're invincible. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. All right. Verse 14. Draw water for the siege. Strengthen your fortresses. Go into the clay and tread the mortar. Make the brick. Killing strong. That's the furnace. That's the furnace. That's the underground bunkers, but he's going to turn the whole thing into a furnace. He's telling you, all y'all, the whole thing is going to be a furnace. Wow. Mm -hmm. Tell you, get, get out, it's gonna burn. That's right. They underground bunkers and everything. When a nuclear war and fire and earthquake come out, they're gonna be in a furnace underground. Mm -hmm. That's right. We say your the fire will devour you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. There the fire will devour you. The sword will cut you off. It will devour you like the grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Multiply like grasshoppers. Multiply like the locust. Mm -hmm. I, I like how he how he referenced uh, grasshoppers 
and locusts because it's the normal. way they eat mm -hmm. and yep, how they consume. devour things. Quick. They consume things very quick. Mm, yeah, how they assemble, they fly together and just a, a swarm. swarm. There's no escaping them in the midst of them. Consume. Um, yep. And they destroy and move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why when it says they'll dash your babies, they don't care. They're just there to eat what they get. Yep. We're going to read that. No, nothing will satisfy them except to destroy you because they hate yep. America that long. Yep. Yep. They're going to destroy everything. Mm -hmm. And everything in it. That's why Russell said you sleepy Negroes. I tried to help you through the civil rights movement. <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to go down with it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Verse 16, you have increased your merchants more than the stars of the sky. See? The grasshopper stri strips and flees away. Your guard are like the locusts, and your officials like the swarm of locusts, which settle on the walls of a cold on a cold day. But when the sun appears, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Mm -hmm. So we had a, we had a question for this uh, verse. Uh, what was it for the? Mm -hmm. Okay, I say like the are the guards like the police and the FBI, or is it meaning something else here? The whole country's army system. How the government go down? So we got mm -hmm. what we got one grasshopper locust army against the next. Mm -hmm. So now he's saying, but your guards it's the army of, of america whatever they're going to use I, you know the navy the air force the, uh, you know y'all know the names or whatever right. it could be the police the might be used as well um um you know the uh the personal hired uh forces the FBI, all of that is coming too right he's saying it what your army gonna be like though <laughs> And that's the thing that what we're saying now is like the police are the first line of defense. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones that are doing all the killing now. But once those people start to pick up guns and come at the police, that's when they're going to run because they're all cowards. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to have to call in the National Guard and call in the Army mm -hmm. to save them because the police are going to give it up. Mm -hmm. yep. And enforce martial law. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, your shepherds slumber, king of Assyria, your nobles lie down, your people are scattered on the mountains, and there is no one to gather them. Sound like us still, there, right? Is, right, it do. Because mm -hmm. I say, we're going to be looking to the mountains. Us, yes, us in Babylon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it, in that song, he talks about uh, you sleepy Negroes. That's right. It says your shepherds slumber, your nobles lie down. They don't think anything's gonna happen mm -hmm. until until it until it comes upon them. We were like toys, like toys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse nineteen: There is no healing your wound, for your injury is fatal. All who hear the report of you clap their hands over you, for who hasn't felt your endless cruelty? Okay. And that. Oh. And that shows how much somebody's hate you that they're clapping for they're like they're cheering for this like hey america's finally gone we can yep. live our lives now yep yep take them down mm -hmm. like finally finally okay. so that was the prophecy of nahum on nineveh right in assyria babylon but that didn't happen to nineveh but everything that was written in there is actually prophesied to happen to us and I said, how could these things be prophesied to Babylon? And we, but they're prophesied to us because it's the judgment of Babylon is us in that judgment of Babylon. Mm -hmm. But before I said again, before Russia comes in and does what he does with his troops and his, the nations that will join together with him, before that happens, is going to implode internally. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against race against race. All these things must happen, but the end is not yet, right? So there is going to be a breakdown within. 
a civil war, a race war, um, anarchy, a, a man-made famine, pestilence within the governments fighting against each other within the systems turning on each other from within. Once Russia sees that, he's going to strike. Oh yeah, there's a prelude of that already happening. It is, yeah, it's already happening, and that's the thing. It's starting now. Those are the things that that we should see very clearly and be like, mm, maybe it's time. To yeah, come on up out. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So now the same precept that we read come out in Isaiah 47. The fall of Babylon predicted. Let's see if this happened already. Isaiah 47. Come down, sit in the dust, virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, daughter of the Chaldean. For you shall no more be called tender and dainty. Take the millstones and grind flour. Remove your veil, strip off the train, uncover the leg, pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered. Yes, your shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and will spare no man. So we can see this, is the, same this is the same mm. prophecy we just read about her being stripped and revealed mm -hmm. as a whore. But she's not a virgin. She's pretending she started off and acting like she was a virgin daughter. But this is the daughter of Babylon. It's very clear this could not be Babylon, the first one. This is the daughter of Babylon. And we know that whenever Yah uses the word daughter of Babylon, it's the last strength of it. It's the end of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then it also is, it says, and, uh, you know, in verse three, at the end, you have it bold and, and Yahweh will take vengeance and I will spare no man. And so to those that keep saying that if we can be righteous in Babylon and when that time comes, well, we're going to be okay. Yah is not sparing nobody that's found in Babylon when his wrath comes. Right. And he, he's not coming to get you. So that's why he's telling you to come out now, right. save your soul. That, that's your reward. That, that, that's what you can take with you out of Babylon, your soul. And, and, and then come out here and, and do the work that Yah is asking us to do. This is the call to the believers. Yep. Being, being obedient to the Father and doing what he said. You obey your physical father. Where's his glory? Right. Where's Yah's glory? And so, verse 4. Our Redeemer, Yahweh of armies, is his name. The Holy One of Israel. I don't know. Yeah. Yahweh is his name. Sit in silence and go into thick darkness, daughter of the Chaldeans. For you shall no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was angry against my people. I profaned my inheritance and gave them into your hand. You showed them no mercy. On the age, you have very heavily laid your yoke. Was this Babylon of, yes, of yesterday? No, mm. no, that's not at all. Yeah. He did not lay a heavy yoke on us. We sought peace and we lived peacefully in Babylon until. Mm -hmm. mm. <clears throat> Verse seven, you said, I shall be a lady forever. So that you, that you did not lay these things to your heart, neither did remember the latter end of it. So we know this is the end. Now, mm -hmm. And also says in Revelation 18, the, the, has the same verbiage here. Same verbiage. So, yeah. Verse 8. Now, therefore, hear this. You who are given to pleasures, who sit securely, who say in your heart, I am, and there is none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood. And their full measure shall they come on you. Mm -hmm. In the multitude of your magic, witchcraft, 
and the strength of your spell band allies society. Okay, stop right there. So before somebody uh, goes with trying to make me seem like I'm twisting scripture, you can go back and fact check me. I put this in there because I go into Hebrew words to expand the idea of them. That it says that she uh, deceived all of the nations, right? Through her sorcery and witchcraft, her magic, right? This word and, sh and the strength of your spell, right? I believe that this word is kubar, right? Kubar that comes from the word kabar or mekubar, which means your connections, right? And it actually means a band, your company, your allies, or your society, meaning your alliances, meaning like NATO, like the UN. The, the spell is their political speeches, y'all, that they have put on the nations. That's the spell. That's the um, enchantment. Mm -hmm. That's the one that speaks like a lamb. Yes, that speaks like a lamb. Um, no. He has two horns like a lamb. He has two horns like, like a, a dragon. lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. There you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, one, one, one second. Uh, this this is the the Hebrew. Yeah, just the uh, back back up what you're saying. Heber uh, from H22, H2266, a society, also a sparrow, charmer, uh, company, charmer, charming. And so also using Deuteronomy, Psalm, Proverbs, Isaiah, and Hosea. Mm -hmm. So, this, um, and so verse 10, you have trusted in your wickedness. You have said, no one sees me. Mm -hmm. Your wisdom and your knowledge, it has perverted, twisted you. And you have said in your heart, I am, and there is none else besides me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, evil will come on you. You won't know when it dawns, and mischief will fall on you, and you will not be able to put it away. And desolation shall come on you suddenly which you don't know. Stand now with your spell band, spells and bands, and with the multitude of your magic, witchcraft, in which you have labored from your youth. If so, you should, be, you should or shall be able to profit if you so, excuse me, if so be, you may prevail. Mm. You see if you're going to win. You are wearied in the multitude. Oh, somebody say something? No, nah, that's it. He's saying, let's see if you're going to win. Right, mm -hmm. so they now stand in your spells, right? Where he they gonna call what their nations to come together for this war, right? And the multitude of your magic and witchcraft, uh, the false speeches and the promises that you're gonna give to them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they stand with which you, it, right? Mm -hmm. Which you speak to in verse 13. Mm -hmm. You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologer of heaven, the visioner of stars, the monthly prognosticator stand up and save you from the things that shall come on you. Mm -hmm. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be, a, excuse me, it shall not be a cold warmat, nor a fire to sit before. Ah, see what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. See what he's Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the plague. Mm -hmm. I mean, Thus shall the things be to you which you have labored. Those who have trafficked, traded with you from your youth shall wander everyone to his quarter. There shall be none to save you. You can see so how that shows that. The, yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That just shows that the wrath is it, it's on Babylon if everyone is returning back to his own. Yep. Quarter, which it means it's home, is living quarters. That's right. right. And so he's going, he's going back home. It's, it's clear to celebrate right. back in their hands and, and celebrate in, in their homeland that they just destroyed Babylon. Yep. And if it's telling them that there, there shall be no one to save you, that means 
somebody can be saved. <laughs> Right. Yep. This is clear. And you can see from one command to the next, he is explaining why you should come out and what's going to happen. Clear as day. Now we in 48. Clear. Next. So now he's speaking to us in this. Isaiah 48, starting at verse 1. Hear this, house of Jacob, you who are called by the name of Israel and have come forth out of the waters of Judah who swear by the name of Yahweh and make mention of the Elohim of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. No, no, no. For they call themselves of the holy city and sustain themselves of the Elohim of Israel. Yahweh Zibaot is his name. And so one thing that's, to that's say to this. No, go ahead. Oh, mm -hmm. I was going to say. Though we were, we're, we're sending this me the message going out, Yah's telling you to come out, but there's things you should not be doing when you come out. And uh, please go back to our sister Malka. She just put a video out and she says there's certain things, the, 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 what was the word? The, Rebels. Rebels, yeah. Like this, the certain sins, like, you know, adultery, we need oh, to cut, smoking yeah. weed, the obvious sins that we need to be cutting out. Cut them out before you cross those waters right. and come to this land because God will still spew you right back out mm -hmm. and back to Babylon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because you make it out here don't mean that you're done running. Right. Yep. That's right. Don't mean that the work stop. It don't end here. We got to keep okay. going. We got to endure to the end. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's correction and cleansing that we still got to have once we come out. But two is the identity movement one and two is this new awakening mm -hmm. described mm -hmm. and this destruction that's about to happen in the last days of babylon mm -hmm. go ahead verse three i have declared the former things from of old yes they went forth out of my mouth and i showed them suddenly i did them and they happened because I knew that you were obstinate and your neck is an iron sinew mm. and your brow brass. Therefore, I have declared it to you from of old. Before it came to pass, I showed it to you, lest you should say, my image has done them and my engraved image and my molten image has commanded them. <laughs> Oh, Later. so the verse four, we see the mm -hmm. iron, your iron neck and your brow of brass is that the iron, the, the Roman Empire mentality. And so you just stiff neck and, and you don't want to listen to nobody. You want to have it your way, which is your engraved images, everything that you put into your heart, mm -hmm. your molded image. And you think that you're saving yourself by your own hands, which, mm -hmm. which you can't do. Mm -hmm. Stiff neck and hard head. Yeah, and, and I was just mm -hmm. about to add on to that, that. Even in Exodus, it shows we were that that way back then. So Israel hasn't changed from back then till now. Mm -hmm. He's still stiff neck and hard headed. Mm -hmm. Woo! Can't tell them that. <laughs> they no. think they good wives. That's, they love y'all. That's because that's because they drinking up that cup. They, they drunk. drunk. We had drunk, and they woman, They wonder why the women are, um like this. They like this. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. They think they're good wives, obedient wives. <laughs> Verse six, you have heard it. See all this in you. Will you not declare it? I've shown you new things from this time, even hidden things, which you have not known. What could time, this they time is now. Oh, this time is now, right? There's something he's saying about 47 about the destruction of Babylon that he said I declared it from the beginning you've heard it right see all this what what is we hear about what is about to happen you will you not declare it are you not going to speak what I said Babylon is going down mm -hmm. I have shown you new things from this time forward even hidden things but you did not know meaning how do I say how long did we hear about 
the prophecy Babylon is bound to fall, mm -hmm. bound to fall. How you've heard that? How long? How long have we known about the prophecies of Babylon going down and already understanding or grasping that America was that Babylon? Mm -hmm. Does anybody know how long? Long oh, about 50, 60 years. About 50 or 60 years. That was that was known. Right? But what did they teach y'all when, when, when the prophecies really came up, right, about believing that Babylon was going down and people really took hold of America's Babylon? When did that really surface? In the 80s. In the 80s. Why in the 80s? Why did this Babylon is bound to fall surface so great in the 80s? Come on, y'all. Well, I got some babies in here. <laughs> they was born in 86. <laughs> um, the war with Iraq and Iran over the oil, right? This is when they begin to sit on the necks and really make things really bad with the petrodollar because they wanted to but they wanted to get that whore off of her neck, right? All right. That's when that message that they used Bob Marley, the false prophet, to right, but who's really who really declared it? Bob Marley didn't declare no damn Babylon is about to fall. Where have we been getting our interpretation of how Babylon is going to fall from? What surfaced from the 80s when we began to understand that? Come on, y'all. I know some of y'all was just born in the 80s. Anybody older? No. Keisha? No, anybody? And older people, y'all got to guess? When you when you first heard and come to any understanding how Babylon was gonna fall, what source did it come from? Oh, the, well, was it was the Black Power movement. The who? Black Power movement. Like, Nostradamus. Yeah, we talked about that. Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Everybody Nostradamus. pushed that prophecy all over and came to their understanding about Babylon's fall. Through Nostradamus. Nostradamus. Nostradamus As they was trying to break down the prophecies, but they had it wrong. They had it wrong. Though they knew she was going to be destroyed, they had it wrong. And everybody ran with that interpretation for the last 20 to 30 years. Not by a prophet of Yah and not by these prophets. They came up with their own prophecy. Even to this point, where uh what's his name uh ronald dalton is over here playing the whole um prophetical um and they're really good they look like hollywood Documentary. documentaries of how babylon is going to fall and the prediction of it what they're showing some of it may have some truth but it's not according to what yah said right so this is where the fuss of i'm tell i been i said it's russia y'all They've been telling you it's going to be Saddam Hussein and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, a prince with a blue ribbon from the East and all of this other stuff, not knowing that Yah had declared it already who it was. But now he's showing you who it is. You're still not going to say what I've already declared. You're still going to book up against what a prophet said. Who it is and why y'all need to flee? Oh, Israel, who call on the name of Yahweh, who say that they rely on Yahweh, but not in truth. Thinking you the holy city, you the people. Mm. No, he's saying, I, who going to declare what, I, what you have heard and what I'm showing you now? Who going to declare it? Hidden things that you did not know. Y'all didn't know it was going to be Russia 20 years ago, but all of y'all was talking about Babylon, right? Demona, all of them did not know how Babylon was going down. They was preaching it, though, from false prophecies and false prophets that led them wrong. And everybody's interpretation was based upon false prophets and the war in Iraq and Iran. Now Yah's revealing it through his prophets. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, watch this, because y'all didn't know that. that y'all didn't know that. 
Go ahead. And that's why they're having a hard time with it now because some now is, is known, right? Even the even the white evangelists know it now. Mm-hmm. It's not a secret now. Mm-hmm. And now that it's known, it's clear. And I made it clear to my people. Not you're not supposed to be listening to the white evangelists. Right. You're supposed to be listening to me. Mm-hmm. Give you understanding how this is going down mm-hmm. and why it's Russia and why we need to come out. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Not anybody else. Right, not anybody else explaining it, but our people is like this. If the white man saying it, right. it's got to be true. So I'm going to give you a witness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Verse eight. Also, you didn't hear. Also, you didn't know. Also, from of old, your ear was not open. You wasn't listening. For I knew that you did deal very ter- treacherously and was called a transgressor, rebel. From the womb. And so that, you know, oh, we, he says, from old, your ear was not open. So let's, we got to open we our ear, seven? people, and hear the word. Did we read seven? No, we didn't. We didn't read seven, brother. Mm-hmm. All, right. Seven. All right. They are, okay, verse seven. They are created now and not from of old. And before this day, you didn't hear them, lest you should say, behold, I knew them. None of them, Verse none of the leaders, none of these leaders could say that. I knew that. I knew it was gonna be Russia, yeah. China, the last visa. I knew it was gonna be Russia. No, no, you didn't know that. You did not. Stop lying. None of them leaders from before knew that. Mm-hmm. Also, you didn't hear. Also, you didn't know. Also, from of old, your ear. ear was not open. For I knew that you did deal very treacherously and was called a transgressor, rebel from the womb. For my name's sake, I will defer my anger. And for my praise, will I refrain from you, excuse me, for you, that I not cut you off. So this is Verse a 10, to the remnant. Now this is a promise to the remnant. Mm-hmm. Verse 10. He held the destruction back, right? To get out. That's right. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver money. I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction, poverty, for my own sake. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to tell you. So this is what's going to cause this affliction, this poverty has come upon us that we got to see. Because he said I, he deferred his anger and he refrained that I not cut you all off to leave us a chance for a remnant, right? To do what? We're going to see in the next couple of verses. To come out, to get out of her, right? He refrained it. He held it back. Why do you think Russia is saying now, you sleepy Negroes, oh well. I, I spoke on it last night that Russia tried to help the civil rights movement. Back in um back in the 60s and the 70s, Russia sent in communist spies to help infiltrate, uh, not infiltrators, but yeah, that's not the right word. To um inform. To inform, to inform us and help us and sponsor us. They sponsored. And they kept sitting at the table with the president being lied to and pushing the false thing. Russia tried to help us. Russia though was didn't want to destroy America too because of us, right? It wasn't just because of us, but he did. Um, he tried to give us a way out and he tried to create help us create an insurrection. Is that the reason why they why they try to make uh, Russia uh, when they talk about Russia spies and they tried they perverted it to make it look like that they want to come over here and take no, over. They don't want they, they don't want to tell you that the Russian spies communists was involved with the uh black power movement. Right. That they and then them. also Everybody because else. our leaders were like our pastors in the church, mm-hmm. they uh bribed them with that what is it, WC3 or yes. They gave they them tax free money. And all of that, right? And they sold us out. Because we didn't we 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 kept pay, painting Russia as the enemy as the bad guy in the movies. Don't trust them, communism and all of this. And that was treachery. That was treachery back then. And they weren't, Russia didn't look like they had the power to do anything against America. 
And so this is why, why did I was saying in the song, why Russia uh, invoked us in their song about destroying America. Yeah. Mm. And now you see Russia now telling the history of what, of how he dealt with, uh, how they dealt with us. But he's like, oh, well, I tried, but I gotta, I gotta protect my land now. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I refined you, but not as silver or money. The word is kesiv. That's another word for money. Mm -hmm. Right. I have chosen you in the furnace of poverty. Through this, the word is poverty. This affliction, go back and look, it's poverty, it's to be poor. But what? Poor in spirit? Yeah. But we actually, he's trying us, he's refining us by the poverty is the what? Strip us of our covetousness in this land, y'all. And our dependency on and money. That's right, our dependency on the riches of this land. Yeah. Uh-huh, go ahead. Verse 11, for my own sake, for my own sake will I do it. Yep. For how should my name be profaned and my glory I will not give to another. We say I'm going to take their riches away. He's about to do it because that's their idols. Yeah. That's yeah. our idols that we have put in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Our riches and our money. So now he's going to refine us through poverty. Mm -hmm. Right? This is a this is a judgment punishment. How else will I do? They stuck on their riches with the whore. That's why they won't leave. Watch, what is this about? Bricks. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Listen to me, O Yaakov, and Israel, my call. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Did he say chosen? Yes. No, you see, he said, y'all say y'all was chosen, that y'all, I didn't say that. He said, listen to me, oh, Jacob, Israel, my called. Mm -hmm. I'm calling. Mm -hmm. Right? He's, the choosing is when we get refined. But let's, but, but the refining is for us also listening to him. Let's see. Yes. My hand has laid the foundations of the earth. And my right hand has spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Who's the heavens and the earth? <laughs> Jacob and Israel. He's calling. Go ahead. Assemble yourselves, all you, and hear who among them has declared these things. Mm -hmm. He whom Yahweh loves shall perform his pleasure on Babylon. And his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him and I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. So, what is it that you didn't know? The him. No. No, you're talking about the other nation. No. The him. The one that he called to perform his pleasure on Babylon. You did not know who the him was and how. You didn't know what nation it was. You didn't know it was Putin. You thought it was Saddam Hussein in Iraq based upon false declarations, right? And even then y'all behinds didn't come out. Who will declare these things? Who amongst you will, who, he who Yahweh loves shall perform his pleasure. This is not Yahushua. I have called him, I have bought him and he shall make his way prosperous, right? Okay, should I do it now? Let's see. Let's see who we talking about that I told you who it was three years ago, right? And I told you based upon history, prophecy, and the actuality of what's happening right now in front of our eyes. And it's more evident. It was like, you see it now. Y'all still not going to do what I said? You still going to trust in your riches? Now I'm going to have to make you poor. I'm going to have to do something to you, right? I have to put you through affliction and bring poverty spiritually and physically upon you for you to not trust in your riches and hear what it is that I'm trying to say. Give me one second. Real quick, before, mm -hmm. before you do it, verse 15, mm -hmm. it say, even I, I have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him and he shall make his way prosperous. Mm -hmm. Is he speaking about Russia? 
That's right. Remember I said in all the other prophecies, they lifted up the head. They're going to lift up the head and make him the leader of the army. They're going to make him the chief, the head Rosh. Right? They're going to lift him up as the one to do this thing against he's going to lead it. The other nation is going to follow pursuit behind him. We see it happening now. You got nigga new breeze on here talking about, do you think the war is real? You think they just faking it? <laughs> In Ukraine? What you think? What? <laughs> you think that's fake? When NATO has been trying to put in troops and American troops and you in troops in Russian borders to get closer to strike missiles at Russia and you think Russia is playing some game. Well, was it fake when he took over Crimea? And these think I was over here questioning it. Is, is it really real? Are they faking us? Is it just propaganda? All right, give me one second, y'all. Oh. All right, so somebody, uh, one of my students that, you know, sends me stuff to affirm, because I don't be looking, I don't, I'm, I don't have to prove nothing, just wait. I said, y'all said it, and he said it, I said it, that he said it, and it's gonna happen suddenly, right? I don't have to prove it, so, I, you know, but every now and then a student will be like, oh my goodness, you would you yeah, say this yeah. really happening? <laughs> it's true, right? I didn't say it, y'all said it, yeah. and I declared it. Yeah. But since you don't want to listen to me because I'm a woman, maybe you'll listen to this one. <laughs> Tell me this is not so, according to prophecy. Here we go. And amongst the heads of state, there is only one who is standing up to the forces of evil. Don't count on Boris Johnson in England. Don't count on Macron in France. Don't count on Draghi in Italy. It's Vladimir Putin, who may be no angel and no saint, but nevertheless, he is a man of intelligence and great courage. And at the head of Russia, he has the means of standing up to the one world government. A few days ago, I was very impressed. It was a group of Polish ladies, Catholics, who all understood that, that Vladimir Putin was right. I was very surprised because I know between Poland and Russia there's often been war. Maybe it will come again. The Russians are fighting in Ukraine, but not in such a way as to smash or crush Ukraine. To the purpose of Vladimir Putin, he has said, is to denazify and demilitarize yes, the Ukraine. But foolish Europe is following the United States to attempt to crush Russia. The war may well become worse. We must do what we can to prepare. It seems clear now that one of the next tricks of the, of the criminals ruling the world will be an artificially created famine. Prepare at home by pre buying now while it still can be bought Things like rice and flour, I don't know. But be prepared for there not to be enough food. They played the trick of COVID. They played the trick of uh, Ukraine provoking since 2014 Russia. Russia has needed to defend itself. The real aggressor attacker is not the apparent attacker. Russia was provoked for s several years from the Ukraine by the agents of the United States. Because the United States, they were Christian, relatively Christian, well, not, not, not Catholic, but mostly Protestant. And the devil was able to deceive those Christians. And now the, re the real religion of many Americans is not religion, but their politics. Many of them, out of patriotism, wish to destroy Russia. Because Russia is the last obstacle to the one world order. Mm -hmm. He saw did. They're going to listen to him. That's for sure. Huh. Yep. They're going to be like, well, the Pope said it. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, I had it up top. What the hell is Yeah, then you have it. Hold on. Oh, how does it go? You had it, man. Okay. Verse 16. Come near to me and hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time that it was, there am I. Now, Yah, now Yah Yahweh has sent me with his spirit. No, go ahead. Thanks, I'm sorry, hold on. One second, I'm just trying to I'm stress the uh, mm -hmm. There we go. We, we launched off for a second. Okay, let's start again. Mm -hmm. Start from the top, you. Uh, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 12. No, we read all of this. So, yeah, we in verse 17. That's right. You read 14 and 15 and 16 again. Yes. Verse 14. Assemble yourselves, all you, and hear who among them has declared these things. He whom Yahweh loves shall perform his pleasure on Babylon, and his arms shall be on the Chaldeans. Okay, so I, okay. hold on right there. The him, those that believe in Messiah would say, oh, this is Yahushua. No, it is Yahushua, but when he says Yahweh loves shall perform his pleasure, who his arm has chosen to mm -hmm. perform the pleasure for him. It is Yahweh. As I went, I shall shake the heavens and the earth go back. As I show you that the weapons that Russia is going to use against us is Yahweh's weapons of indignation. It is the power of Yah. It is the right hand of Yah harnessed it. And, and he strengthened his arm through Yah's arm. So it is Yahoshua, but the him is the one that he's going to anoint. It's not that he loves Putin. That's the one that he's loving, choosing to do this for me, right? That I'm gonna love him for this purpose, right? But this one is gonna turn around and challenge you mm -hmm. right? But for this purpose, this one is going to be, become the beast. There is nobody that becomes the leadership in this world unless Yah appoints it. So yes, when I say that even though Russia is going to be the one, Putin, right, as we know it now, is going to be the one to destroy Babylon and NATO in the European nations, as he just called out, Britain, France, uh, Italy, and whoever else is going to join with them. Oh, no, right? I lost my point. What did I say? You got it. The ultimate they going to be the beast. Huh? Yah's chosen them and they're yes. going to be the beast. Right. He's going to be the beast that Yah's going to use to, for his glory to come up against in the end. And so that don't that don't sound weird. That's what Yah everybody that's come up against Yah Yah put in place. Right? But he'll use who he want to use against each other. He'll start a war between his enemies. Right? Okay, and so anyone want to refer to what I'm talking about? Go back to Come Out of My People, Part One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Six, Seven. Ain't nothing. Ways that it probably is, right? You can go back to I will shake the heavens and the earth. Go ahead. Huh? Verse sixteen. Hold on here. Hold on, hold on. Mama's. With the word anoint, so that means chosen. chosen, right? This word anointing, who are, who right? Chose. Yes, mm -hmm. this word anointing confuses people because yeah. they think of it as good, yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but it's for a purpose, yeah. yeah. Okay, did I, did I skip something? Okay, I'm sorry. Verse 16 Come near to me and hear this. 
From the beginning, I have not I spoken in secret. Did you read that thing? I'll give I'll go back right to it. Verse 15. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come near to me and hear this. From the beginning, I have not spoken in secret. From the time that it was, there am I. Now Yahweh has sent me with his spirit. So who's the sent me with his spirit? The very one that's talking and said, I've called him. Mm -hmm. See, that's why the hymn is not Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Verse 17. Thus said Yahweh, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am Yahweh your Elohim, who teaches you to profit who leads you by the way that you should go. Oh, that you had listened to my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your seed also had been as the sand and the offspring of your body like its grains. His name would not be cut off nor destroyed from before me. So what is he saying? Oh, if you had listened to my commandments, what's commandments? Mm -hmm. All six of them that I just, seven of them that I just read earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Prophets give commandments that never ceased from the time of Moses to Yahushua. Prophets give commandments and you got to listen to their commandments from Yah. But if you had to listen, he said, his name, your name would not be cut off nor destroyed before me. Why? Mm -hmm. What's the command? Twenty. Verse twenty. Go forth from Babylon. Flee from the Chaldeans. With the voice of singing, declare, tell this, utter it, even to the end of the earth. Say, Yahweh has redeemed His servant Yaakov. The one thing that we want to point out in this uh, particular verse is that. The word, the Hebrew word for flee is Barak. And it's the same word that's used when Hagar was running from Sarah. It is also the same word that was used in Genesis when uh, Jacob was fleeing from Esau. Mm. And so there's something that we have to do. You have to phys physically move. And it sounds like a yourself. fear, really. It sounds yeah, like, a fear. Yeah, fear mm -hmm. uh, in your flight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Verse 21. They didn't thirst when he led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He split the rock also, and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, says Yahweh, for the wicked. Right. And the wicked are those that don't keep these commands. All right. Anything? And, and 21 uh -huh. basically assures those who will come out or who do come out that we won't thirst that what happened in the wilderness, similarly, we're going to be all right. You're going to make that way. You're going to make a way, absolutely. But there's a highway. People act like you just open the door and transport to the end of the road. <laughs> right? Like we just going to get off the plane to boom the wilderness. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, there's a highway and there's a way and there's a path and there's a cleansing that along the way to be ready for that day because there's one more test that we got to go through. We got to go through the fire. And it is poverty, y'all, because the whole world is going to be impoverished when this happens. Right? right? And, and two, it's, it, it's, it is showing you a little bit where to go. Uh, it says to go to the desert. It says in the deserts, they did not they did thirst. And That's so right. for those looking to come out, I mean, don't go to Africa, but I mean, you come out to Africa, but make sure you're coming towards the, yeah, the desert. Don't stop no way, right? If that's your pit stop, okay. But don't be stopping in Ghana talking about we're going to build back Wall right. Street. Tanzania, we're going to start the black market. Right. <laughs> Business, preppy, uh, right. college educated, Atlanta movement, mm -hmm. faggot movement again yeah. in, in Tanzania. Stop that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> right? 
If you and so we in the wilderness. Now we are not in that gathering of the wilderness just yet because there's something he has to do on this side. And if you understood prophecy, then you would understand that when you got people like Banya uh, questioning, well, where are we supposed to go? When is this wilderness? Where's this peace that uh, he promised us? Do you got peace in Babylon? No. If they honest, no. Yeah. No. He said, I wouldn't leave for for us. Uh, for, 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 biblical uh, for biblical reasons. For biblical I reasons. Reason. For personal. Then, like, what, else, what are you moving in? What spirit is you moving in then? And then this newbie, Ebri, says the very thing that I just read in the prophets, the false prophets say. This is where we're going to have our peace. Mm -hmm. And another thing to say to that, that all of us that have been in this assembly, this family that we haven't had a need for anything a want for anything we've been provided for time and time again and had things that we honestly that we've had that we shouldn't have had we have had more than enough luxury and our, our time has been as we've been shedding off Yah has guided us through this mm -hmm. right? and so you can't no, just gotta have some faith and, and trust in Yah and he, he he will provide as long as you continue to do the work. And those provisions include just water. Water. Food, like basic yeah. necessities. <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm, just, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I'm just saying because like, <laughs> basically, <laughs> no, I mean, but case in point, right? Because we, one of the things I, I said I this you. morning was that we've been noted, you know, since, since wandering in these we lands, uh, Yah is showing us one how to keep Shabbat when there is no water, when there is no electricity. Oh yeah. When there aren't those things that we're used to having, and so in that you really learn the significance of Shabbat. You really learn the significance of being in the wilderness and and survival and going back to the ancient path. Mm -hmm. So that's that's even in these luxurious houses, y'all. Right. We still gotta go back to light a fire. Yes. Uh, uh, get a bucket of water. No, water and don't yes. handle too much. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Dip, dip your behind in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I also bless you for you, uh, us being an assembly in unity that we have one another. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have, we have uh, Proverbs 11 and 4. It says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath. That's right. But righteousness delivereth from death. Amen. Amen. Y'all better keep that at the fore of your minds. That's the test. And so uh, while y'all striving, which, what we striving for now, y'all better stop striving, mm -hmm. right? Be content whether you whether you have more or you have less. Because we don't lack in Yah Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. And don't be treacherous either, y'all. <clears throat> don't be unrighteous about it. Don't be unrighteous in your poverty or in your wealth because mm -hmm. both, because none of y'all are guaranteed to make it in that time. Because mm -hmm. a, 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 a someone who is unrighteous and impoverished in that time is going to get more impoverished and just going to do what? Be more treacherous. Mm -hmm. And do more wicked. Mm -hmm. Let the righteous remain righteous. Let the wicked remain wicked still. Right? We got a time of testing and that's our job. And so what they're teaching you is to come out and look for luxury. Yeah, and, it's, and he said he will bring us out in comfort, but it, we're not going all together unpunished, right? And so Yah has definitely comforted us. We have definitely uh, lived in places that one would call like y'all ain't never lived in before. Imagine housing is all that, mm -hmm. but that's not what that's not with total uh, uncomfort. That's not without chastisement and a work to do, and a lesson to learn about going back to the natural way mm -hmm. and wanting it at the end of the day like what's a beautiful house if the water don't come up in the sink <laughs> and the toilet don't flush and there's no electricity right. you're just looking at pretty full walls oh what's a beautiful <laughs> house without with uh with this unity in the home man everybody gonna stay in their little four wall right. corner right and a beautiful prison right. <laughs> i'm in hallelujah just a little encouragement to what to expect and not uh 
presume. All right, right, right. But go ahead. It's okay. All right, moving on. Can we see what y'all saying? Make it make sense. Is this spiritual? Is this not a place that we can escape from? All right, I know y'all still got the question, but Messiah said he's coming to get us. Make these make sense first. This is a commandment. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Messiah said he's coming to get us. Show me that. It don't say that. He said, and he will gather us from the four winds. But y'all keep skipping the word, cherry picking the word in between, right? And I'm going to leave y'all with one to have you sleep on that, right? But now you can't ignore the command. Mm -hmm. This is a command. It's clear. So he said he going to gather us is not clear what that means. Oops, sorry. So now we're going to see more... Um, of this command and what y'all says about it and tell me has it happened or is it ha going to happen? All right. Manny, could you read? Yeah, I got it. So, uh, Lamentations four, starting at verse one. How has the gold become dim? How has the most pure gold changed? The, the stones of the sanctuary are poured out at the head of every street. Mm -hmm. Come on, talk about it. I mean, I already did it. So we, so. Oh, so we know the gold, where the gold, and so the most, the, it says the most pure gold changed because, you know, Yah is no longer in us. And so our, our gold has now become, our gold and silver has become dross. Mm -hmm. We're worthless. Mm -hmm. The stones of the sanctuary are poured out at the head of every street. He said, our, we're going to be dashed in the streets. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that, that, that's, that it, it just it just shows it's it's sad it, it's we were it's gonna it's gonna talk about it how we were a, a set apart people mm -hmm. but then we've allowed our ways to be corrupted mm -hmm. that's why we were pure but we're corrupted we're wicked and we're defiled mm -hmm. and it, and it's just sad to see and that people continue to fight mm -hmm. this message and, and you know that's why Jeremiah is crying out here and in most places where you find us you find us on street corners. Mm -hmm. And he this is the complacent in our wickedness. Mm -hmm. This is the one that now, now. So we saw the commands to come out of Babylon, but we're gonna see the pre. The, we're gonna see precepts in this that precept to the same prophecy about the come out in Babylon and what's gonna happen to us if we don't. And right, um, but because this doesn't say Babylon in particular, right? They gonna say that this means this was flee Jerusalem in 70 AD. Now this is precepted with Matthews 24, but Matthews 24 talk about the end, about the fig trees, the end. When shall all, when, when shall all these things happen and the, and the end be and the sign of the son of man, right? And so he says, flee Jerusalem, right? And so they say that, that he, he did prophesy about 70 AD, but 70 AD uh, does not fit the prophecy like this. It was a prelude. But Jerusalem and these prophecies is wherever the people are. Okay? Mm -hmm. Verse 2. The precious, son, the precious sons of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Even the reptiles, serpents, draw the bees. They nurse their young the breast, ones. The breast. I'm sorry. Draw out the breast. They nurse their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. So this can't be Jerusalem 70 AD. This is the daughter. This is us in our end, our last strength, right? And he said, we have become uh, cruel people. We don't, so that we don't draw out the breast to our young ones. This is us consuming them in the end, in the end right? Um, we don't feed them true knowledge and wisdom and counsel anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not even recognizable. We're so he's, recognizable. he's telling you how we've changed so far that we're going to be poured out in the street and our babies dash, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, the children of this last generation, the young you didn't even give them a true word of truth that 
What is clean? Look, come on, read it. Mm -hmm. How we raise the our children. The tongue of the nursing child clings to the roof of his mouth for thirst. Mm -hmm. The young children ask bread and no man breaks it to them. What, what is this? You didn't give them the true word. You didn't give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Yah's word at all. He said, y'all, cruel. Even the serpent got a good word and a wisdom to their children. Y'all Negroes just let your babies raise themselves and go hungry. You fed them uh, baby food bottle uh what's the name formula formula but you didn't even but he's saying you starve these children you starve them that they look like the uh ethiopian babies with big bellies and thumbs they are starving right you gave them nothing there's no hope for them this is he's explaining how we became so low that that last generation of children don't have no hope that What's the cleavage oh, of the roof of their mouths? We're going to see in the next one. Mm -hmm. Verse five. Those who did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. That's right. Those who were brought up in scarlet embraced dung hills. Well, who was brought up in scarlet? Then what is this talking about? It doesn't say Babylon the whore. The woman in scarlet and red. No. Those who feed delicately are desolate in the street. What's the feed delicately? We've eaten off the delicacies of Babylon and we were brought up in scarlet. What's the scarlet? That's the whore. The woman dressed in scarlet. Those who were brought up in her and fed off of her, her milk are going to embrace doo doo. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dunga Hills. <laughs> Mm -hmm. for the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the sin of Sodom greater was... mm -hmm. greater than the sin of Sodom mm -hmm. he told when we was in Jerusalem 70 AD and all he said y'all are as Sodom and Gomorrah. no he said we are greater than the sin of Sodom go ahead so how much more worse is the punishment that's right Mm -hmm. that was overthrown as in a moment one and no day. hands were laid on her one and no hands one day one what is he telling you How's wow, it's kind of man all right go ahead mm -hmm. her nazarites devoted ones were purer than snow they were whiter than milk they were more ruddy in, in body bones than rubies. Their polishing was as of sapphire. Okay. So now her Nazarites, devoted ones, now he's saying the ones that decided to do what? Separate. A Nazarite can't eat sour, can't eat grapes. Right? This is parable. This is the ones that decided to separate. We are not supposed to touch any unclean. We can't deal with the dead. We got to, right? We're like priests. There's an anointing on our head. Devoted. Nazarites cannot eat anything of the vine. What vine? Of the scarlet, red, whore, blood, Sodom and Gomorrah. Babylon. So we decided to purify ourselves by separating like a Nazarite. Not to drink of her vine, not to eat of her vine or of her tree, right? So even, this is like parabolic, this is lamentation. Even though it don't say come out of Babylon, that's exactly what it's saying. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. their, their form is darker than a coal soup. They are not recognized in the streets outside. Their skin clings to their bones. It is dry. It has become like a stick. So this is a separation. Her Nazarites separated from that tree. But there, the ones that didn't listen form now is darker than cold. The ones that changed, right? 
This is us being killed and not buried. So we're going to embrace dung hills is us now being laid in the street and the sun and the moon is going to lick us all day long. We're going to become like mummies in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those who are killed with the sword are better than those who are killed with hunger. Mm-hmm. For these pine away, stricken through, for want of the fruits of the field. Mm-hmm. The hands of the compassionate woman have baked their own children. Mm-hmm. They were their food in, their, in the destruction of the daughter of my people. Now, I, could, I want yeah. to say something to this. I could speak to this, right? There's the prophecies of Jeremiah that said um, we were going to eat our babies, right? Eat our sons and daughters. Jeremiah prophesied it twice, I believe, or one time. And I believe it like Jeremiah 16 or something like that. Uh, Leviticus in the curses calls it out. And Deuteronomy calls out the same curse. But they're not the only ones that call out this curse. And this is one of those things that they keep say, saying happened in the time of the siege in Jerusalem, either through Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and in the siege of Jerusalem during AD 70. And I say to you that no, it did. That's a rumor. Because that rumor will cause these prophecies to look like they already happened, Right? You think this is literal eating your babies. No, this is parabolic or euphemism, right? And Isaiah speaks on it and a couple of other people speak on it. In the euphemism, Yahoshua actually tells you what it means. I'm not, going, well, huh? I know, right? They'd be like, what is it? You gotta give them a little bit. You gotta give them a little bit. This is not literally eating your babies, right? Let me, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say it like this. I cause a division of I don't bring peace but a division father against son son uh, mother against daughter daughter against father brother against brother and you shall they shall deliver you up right they shall this is the eating and consuming the delivering up one is to save their own lives and two to save their own lives for survival in this new world order this mark of the beast system right um, they're going to deliver us up. That's what it means. I'll prove it another day. You can read all the ones that I referred to and be like, it means eat. It means eat. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And all of you that keep spewing off what you have heard, but you have not read saying that we ate our babies in 80, 80 70, and that we ate our babies in the, um, and when they sat, when they seized, when Nebuchadnezzar seized Jerusalem in, uh, five, uh, 86 BC. No, we did not. There is nowhere in the testimony of what happened, right? We went through it, that we ate our babies. It said there was a famine. It never said anything about eating our children. Not one testimony does it say we ate our children in the siege in Jerusalem. Y'all are repeating history. Y'all are repeating what you heard, making prophecy try to fit right. your version of what you want the history to say. And there's no history that is said, we did that, right? That don't make no sense. Even though Israel was wicked, right? Even, even though Israel was wicked, we did not, we would never eat our children, y'all. It said they starved in the famine. They died from the famine. It never said we ate our babies, right? Never said that. And so this is one of those things they were like, see, this couldn't be, right? This happened in 87. No, it did not. Did not. This is the daughter, right? Okay, go ahead. Of my people, not just Jerusalem. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Before I keep going, it it just from what you just said, it's amazing how they think baking their own children meant eating their children, but come out don't mean come out. I know, I, yeah. I know, I know, right? <laughs> come out don't mean come out, but, but baking your children means you Because they simple, they simple like okay. that, right? And this expression is worldwide about, because y'all talks about our leaders consuming and eating us to the bone yeah. and not leaving no meat on us. Yeah, dog eat dog. Yes. That is not literally eating. 
right? Mm -hmm. All right, verse 11. Yahweh has accomplished his wrath. He has poured out his fierce anger. He has kindled a fire in Zion, which has devoured its foundation. That's right. So this is the accomplishment. AD 70 was not the accomplishment of Yah's wrath. That's stupid if anyone would think that, because what are we going through right now? Was AD 70, the sacking and the siege in Jerusalem, worse than what happened on the slave trade? No, it got worse, y'all. I would track through Africa, dying like that. What? Babies, what? Thrown in the sea, starved with disease and all of that. Naked and stripped, come on the other side, whipped and beaten, sold, split apart. AD 70 don't compare to what happened in our slavery as a whole. They sat Israel everywhere we went throughout Africa. You talking about AD 70. AD 70 was the inception of it. It kept going, y'all, everywhere we went. They sacked Jerusalem. They sacked Israel everywhere we went, y'all, till we was fled and or put all the way in slavery to Babylon. But this generation has experienced nothing. We are worse than Sodom and Gomorrah, but we haven't experienced anything. Y'all just reliving what they call the spiritual psychosis of slavery, right? Mm -hmm. But y'all need to physically now experience it. How are you going to just have the, phys the emotional experience of your parents' sins and you're not going to pay mm -hmm. physically for yours? Mm -hmm. You lost your mind. Talking about we just going to be saved after we repent through the grace of Yahushua. Our parents had the grace of Yahushua. What are you talking about? All right. Lamentations. Uh huh. Verse 12. The kings of wait, the wait, earth. Wait, wait, wait. So, you know, but, but while I'm reading, some nigger brew, Nebra brew, right? Would say, uh-uh, watch me prove her wrong. Watch, I'm going to go out, this is good. I'm going to prove that this was Jerusalem, right? See, Jerusalem. I'm going to prove that this was AD 70, and they don't read. Yeah. They don't keep reading. Go ahead. The kings of the earth didn't believe, mm -hmm. neither all the inhabitants of the world. The world was the adversary. Mm -hmm. That the adversary and the enemy would enter into the gates of Jerusalem. It is. Now, why could that be unbelievable during AD 70 when the adversary has sacked Jerusalem? Jerusalem had been sacked over and over and over again. That don't even make no sense that the world would be astonished that Rome sacked, sacked Jerusalem and they did it before and Greece did it before that. It don't even make no sense. This is something that's, this is what's unbelievable now is that they would kill us all now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, and I had a, it says the king, in verse 12, it says the king of the earth didn't believe, neither all the inhabitants of the world, that the adversary and the enemy would enter into the gates of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so we know Jerusalem is the city, Yah's city of peace. And so if the enemy that Yah sent got into Jerusalem and destroyed Jerusalem, how much more Babylon, a country that he does not care about, that he's not looking over, that he's not yeah. protecting? Yeah. Amen. Well, wouldn't it be speaking to us as well if we are Jerusalem? No, it, it is speaking yeah. to us. As we keep reading, this is not Jerusalem as in the place in Israel. This is us now. This is the accomplishment, the end of us, the daughter of my people. That's not Jerusalem by itself. But you see, he says, enter into the gates of Jerusalem. The gates of Jerusalem starts with the leadership, the elders. So we see, we see in Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel, I forget what chapter, uh, where he talks about the six men, right? The one with the inkhorn and the other five that says go through the city, put a mark, Ezekiel 809, and start with the what? The elders at the gate, y'all. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 13. It is because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of iniquities of her priests 
that have shared the blood, the blood. of the just and the midst of her. In, in the midst of her. That's how the blood is found in Babylon, right? And the and I showed you the of uh, the last day how they shed our blood, how they shed the blood of the just too, and that is by not enacting proper judgment in their assemblies and their leaderships amongst the widows, the women, the fatherless, and the children with these nigger brews having a man code. Yeah. And then slander the widows, the women, the children, and the poor when they bring their cause, hide, hide their leaderships, and then slander them and kick them out of the assemblies after, right? And most of their ministries has been supported by the poor. The widows. While the men sit up there and just be kings and okay, if you want to be a king, but when, but you still have a job to do, and that is judge justfully and expediently and righteously, and they don't do that. So they're stealing, they're getting paid for nothing. Kings don't just rule from the throne, right? And so they, that's why the blood is in us, it's still in us, uh-huh. They wander as blind men in the streets. They are polluted with blood so that men can't touch their garments. That means don't mess with these leaders. Yeah. Nothing they say to you, no administration, nothing. They don't even have some good mixed with evil. Mm. Everything that they're about is going to get you sent mm. and polluted. Sent to hell and polluted. Don't touch their garments. They don't have a word of righteousness for you. That's what it means. You can't even get healed by touching the hem of their garment, y'all. Mm -hmm. Depart. Go away, they cry to them. Unclean. Depart. Go away. Depart. Go away. Don't touch. When they fled away and wandered, they said among the nations, they shall no more live here. Who says this? Right? Who said this? We the uh, no, the righteous ones of us, right? The goodly ones, right? The Nez the Nazarene, mm -hmm. right? The ones that set themselves apart and separate, right? We say, depart, go away. They cried unto them, right? We're hollering, unclean, mm -hmm. depart, go away, depart, go away, don't touch. When they when did we holler this? While we While fleeing we away and we wandered, <coughs> they this is we. While we're doing, we're wandering because we said, among the nations, they we shall no more live. We're not going to live among the nations any longer. That's our speech. Why? Because we heard the commandment: depart, go away. But those that don't listen, this is what's going to happen to the lamentations that you're going to be poured out in the streets because you got false prophets yeah. in your gates and false priests that have prophesied lies to you for gain, for money, for covetousness. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The president's anger of Yahweh has divided a portion portioned them so the he presence was. of Yahweh has divided them divided what the blind men from the ones that go away the false ones and the ones that separate he's divided us and apportioned us this is those that's going to remain for the judgment and these are those that are going to depart mm -hmm. he will no more regard and freeze them they didn't respect the persons of the priests. They didn't favor the elders. Which ones? These priests and these prophets and elders are the false ones. These ones that, right, the ones that's going to get slaughtered in the streets, follow them. But if we got false ones, how is y'all allowing false prophets to go amongst us and he don't intervene that with a true prophet? That don't make no sense. So y'all going to get mad at us 
for being led astray by false prophets when he didn't send one to revert what the false prophets are saying? Does that make it? Then you could really say y'all is unfair. But I told you in the end, all y'all can come back and be like, you didn't want, he'd be like, yes, I did. All these false prophets was t t telling us this. No, I sent one, at least one. You didn't like her voice, but she said what was right there in front of your face. You didn't listen to her. Don't tell me I didn't send a prophet to warn you from the false prophets and the false priests. That don't make no sense. How do you judge Yah for being led astray? If he's saying you didn't listen to me and didn't send a prophet to tell you opposite of what majority of your leadership is saying. It's always been that way. That's right. You want to debate them. Because you say there's no more prophets. That you a lie. You want to challenge perspectives. Yeah, you want to challenge perspectives. <laughs> like you got, you a blind nigga brew in the street. Go ahead. Now the next slide. So you didn't respect the persons the, of the of the true priests, and you didn't favor the elders. Mm -hmm. The elders that have been walking a long time in this walk with wisdom ahead of you. I got gray hairs in the spiritual sense. <laughs> All right. Let's see if this is us Jerusalem 70 AD. It couldn't be. It just said, this is us saying when we departed that we're not going to live amongst the nations. All right. How could we be saying that in Jerusalem? Go ahead. Verse 17. Our eyes do not, our eyes do yet fail in looking for our vain help. Mm -hmm. And our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save. What nation would, would that be? What we've been watching and watching out and waiting for? Yeah, for America to uh come clean and give us reparations and give us equality. Mm. Come out, pray for mm. America. No, they just, might repent. No, right? Mm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. They hunt our steps so that we can't go in our streets. Yep. Our end near. Our days are fulfilled for our end is come. This is the end. This is what y'all should promise. Like, this ain't every day say uh, uh, AD 70. Uh, Jerusalem, you could, uh, AD 70 in Jerusalem, you was in the streets. You definitely got hunted from the outside walls, but this is not AD 70. Once again, let's, let's keep reading how this is not Jerusalem then. This is Jerusalem us now. Go ahead. Our pursuers were swifter than the eagles of the sky. Couldn't be on um, 70 AD with Rome. It took them time. It was some battles. They went, come back and forth. Couldn't be 80, 70 because it wasn't swift. Mm -hmm. They chased us on the mountains. Mm -hmm. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Mm -mm. This is not 80, 80, 70. Why? Because I said all of you going on your own lands and fortresses now, right? When it goes down in the city, where they running? Mm -hmm. They run into the um, mountains and the hills. But what's the mountains and the hills? The leaders. The pastors, the leaders. where they have set up what? Their fortresses and their pastors. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, stocking up food, but that's where the sieges is going to come. They coming. Pastor Dow will be like one of the main ones as he's continuing to set up more yeah. traps for y'all. Tomorrow he's building three more. Right. Y'all, where he get all his money from? The government, the military. It's a trap for you. Uh huh. The breath of our nostrils. The anointed of Yahweh was taken in their pits, of whom we said, under his shadow, we shall live among the nations. So this couldn't be Jerusalem 70 AD. This is us saying this now. We want to live here among the nations. That's what Je Pastor Dow just got finished saying, right? Yeah. I built this country. I don't know no damn well. <laughs> go ahead, do him. Go ahead, do him. I can't do him. His head is like this, y'all. But go ahead. This man is mental. You see the, he got hit in the head. Go ahead. And, and so we have verse for verse 18. It says our end has come. Just, just to break it down for him is kites. It's the end, utmost end, after to chop off, to cut off, 
in pieces. That's right. Kites, the end, which also means summer. Summer has ended, the harvest has passed, and we are still not safe because y'all waiting for Messiah to come get y'all, right? Yeah. Mm -mm. Go ahead. 21. Rejoice and be glad, daughter of Edom, that dwell in the land of us. The cup shall pass, the cup shall pass through to you also. You shall be drunken and shall make yourself naked. So where's the land of Edom? Okay, all y'all Negroes that talk about why you don't, why you only going against our people? Why you not going against the Edomites? Right? Who you telling? Who you talking about? It's about America, right? That's the land of Edom right now. Because whatever happens to the land of Edom is happening to us at the same time while we in it. Babylon today is. That's where it's ruled from. That's how Edom has ruled through that land mm -hmm. where we are. Because you say, under the shadow, we shall live among the nations. Yah said, this is the nations that you have looked out for that couldn't save. America, the land of ooze. Right? Go ahead. The cup of the wine of the wrath of, is going to pass through the daughter of Edom. That means the last end of her. The same time. Now, I'm going to show you the precept that this is Babylon today. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The punishment of your iniquity is accomplished, daughter of Zion. He will no more carry you away into captivity. It's our last captivity. Couldn't be AD 70, right? Absolutely not. History buffs. Go ahead. He will visit your iniquity, daughter of Edom. He will uncover your sins. That's the whore. We getting it the same as them. I just read that the judgments on us look like the same judgments on her. And we're seeing it again. Simultaneously, the same judgment. That's because we're in the same land. That's right. I'm going to uncover your sins. All right. So we saw that precept. Come out the part, touch not the unclean things. And we're not in the land of Uz. And it couldn't be Jerusalem, say, if we're in the land of Uz. All right. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 52, starting at verse 1. Awake, awake, put on your strength, Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth, there shall no more come into you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit on your throne, Jerusalem. Release yourself from the bonds of your neck, captive daughter of Zion. What's the dust? He just said Babylon go down in the dust. Shake off the dust. It means separate. Uh-huh. For thus says Yahweh, you were sold for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. <laughs> for thus says Yah Yahweh, my people went down at the first into Egypt to live there. And the Assyrian has oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore, what do I hear? Says Yahweh, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing. Those who rule over them mock, says Yahweh. And my name continually all the day is blasphemed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who does speak. Behold, it is I. Okay, what you gonna know what he said? What he say? Come on, let's see what he said. That gotta be the last day because we don't know what he's been speaking for the last 2,000 years. He said, I'm gonna make you to hear my, know that it was me that was speaking the whole time in the end. Let's see, what he say? How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. What's the good who news? Yehoshua, the, the flesh that Yehoshua rose again from the dead and that uh, that we may be saved through his sacrifice. No. 
That's the, that's the first good news. This okay. is the last day good news. The good news of the preparation to show your feet mm. towards your peace. The preparation to uh, tie mm. your sandals, strap up your shoes. That means you're going somewhere. Towards the preparation of your peace. Let's see. That's the good news. How beautiful on the mountains are these? These are other mountains. What are mountains? Leaders. That's me. I'm a mountain, but it's a female mountain. Huh. With, with a snowy peak. It got a snowy peak and it shines in the sun. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Who publishes peace. Who brings good news of good. Who mm -hmm. publishes salvation? Who, who says to Zion, your, your Elohim reigns? Uh huh. Watch this publishing peace. What are we publishing? Peace on this side. Uh huh. I, while you got spies mm -hmm. saying, y'all, don't leave. Stay. Stay. You're going to have peace here. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Uh huh. Let's see. The voice of your, the voice of your watchman. What's the watchman? Lift up. Prophet. Prophets. Oh, ain't no more prophets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they lift up the voice. Together do they sing. Say. For they, <laughs> for, they <laughs> for they shall see eye to eye when Yahweh returns to Zion. That's right. We whoever these watchmen are, the mountains of those who bring the good news, the leaders, the prophets, see eye to eye. But these Negroes be saying, we shouldn't leave. We, we, you know, we ain't gonna all see things the same right. until Yahushua will come. That's a lie. Right. I didn't deal with that yet, did I? No, it's a cliche. That I was my cliche it. that right. I had to deal with. I, yeah. <laughs> no, the watchmen gotta see eye to eye. Your prophets, mm -hmm. and we know about the two. I'm not denying them. They're the last front, but they're not the first front. They not the first front. Uh-huh. Break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem. For Yahweh has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. He's redeeming us. Yahweh has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our Elohim. Depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing. Go out of the midst of her, cleanse yourselves, you who bear the vessels of Yahweh. So wherever we're supposed to be going out from, it's causing us to be unclean. Not that we're totally, totally evil. We got evil on us, but we are breaking commandments somewhere that we cannot change. That is causing us to be unclean. And so now we got to get out first. We're not going straight to the wilderness. We have to come out first. We are publishing good news on your come out that I will bring you out in comfort, but not altogether unpunished. Why? Because there has to be a cleansing yourselves. You who bear the vessels of Yahweh. You are the temple. Ain't no Jerusalem. What is this? Okay. For you shall not go out in haste, hurried flight. So they say Neither haste. Shall... Wait, but they say haste is the move we made. Don't make no haste. That's not the definition of haste. The definition of haste is that you wait to the last minute that you don't have time to, to, to sit up, uh, settle your affairs and move with wisdom and knowledge and comfort that you're going to have a hurried flight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Neither shall you go out as a fugitive. Don't go as a fugitive. No, this is like, if you depart, don't, if you do what I'm saying, don't do it like this. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait till they kill you and you are just the la a fugitive, meaning running from destruction you the last one standing how i say yeah say come out before this yeah. yeah that's what he's saying come out before you have to run for your life in haste, in haste as a fugitive a fugitive mean they been they chasing you and they killing you right. 
All right. Uh-huh. For Yahweh will go before you and gather, collect you, the Elohim of Israel. All right. So you're going to quote this on me, right? right. See, y'all said he will go before you and gather you, collect you. Well, he sort of just gave you a sort of, uh, yes, the recipe for pizza, <laughs> right? <laughs> how to put pizza together, how to gather, right? How to put the bread, the olive oil, the spices, right? The basil, the basil he right. That's that's the that's the pizza, the mozzarella. He will go before you and gather or collect you. The Elohim of Israel, he sure will. But there's a recipe. He just gave you part of it. If you don't believe me, keep watching. That's not this lesson, but I'll give you one little nugget. But he just see shows you that there is going to be a voice of your watchman declaring this to you, saying, depart. Depart. That is Yah going before you. All right. You don't believe it? Okay. Zachariah 2. Let's keep moving. Well, we, anybody that watched this can't claim that they didn't hear the command. And it was Barely. just spiritual. Mm -hmm. Zachariah chapter 2, verse 1. I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then I asked, where are you going? He said to me, to measure, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is its breadth and what is its length. Behold, the angel who talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him and said to him, run, speak to this young man saying Jerusalem will be inhabited as villages without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says Yahweh, will be to her a wall of fire around it, and I will be the glory in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I wanted to say about that uh, stupid Nubri Ibri is that they don't understand the difference between the word beast and livestock. Y'all said we will have livestock in the wilderness. But when you go to Jeremiah 50, he talks about the nations fleeing too, that we shall go every man to his own land. And then he speaks specifically to Israel. But then he says, and man and beast shall be removed or flee or exit. And then he shows you uh, the white man, the other beast, shipping beasts off <laughs> somewhere in the sky and trying to put that with this, not understanding that in Jeremiah 50, 51 is interpreting itself that the other beasts, not livestock, beast is the nations that's going to exit out to, not animals. Yeah. That is not livestock. Beast is not livestock. That's called a zoo. Kennel. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's see. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse six. Come, alas, alas, flee, escape from the land of the north, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the sky, says Yahweh. Come, Zion, escape, slip away. You who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Okay, that's clear. So when he just said, I'm going to gather you, I'm going to go before you. And he just said in that one, in Isaiah, that I'm going to send, or was it Lamentation? I'm going to send watchmen to declare this to you, to do what? Depart, depart, touch not. Destruction is coming. That is Yah going before you. Yah is the word. The word goes before you. Go ahead. From a true messenger. Uh-huh. For thus says Yahweh Zebaot, for honor he has sent me to the nations which plundered you. That's right. For he, for he who touches you touches the pupil of his eye. So why, see, he's telling you why now, right? Escape from the land of the north. Escape, slip away. 
I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the sky. He's going to collect us by the four winds. But now what? He's going to gather us from the four winds, right? How? The same way. Come, Zion, escape. Slip away, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Why? For thus says Yahweh Zebaot, that's the host, that's the army. For honor, he has sent me to the nations who plundered you. There's somebody called Yahoshua that is going to be sent to the nations to do what? Destroy them. Because they did what? Destroyed you. They touched you. They plundered you right before. That's why we just read in Lamentations. And that's why we just read it. Um, um, I forget the other Jeremiah. one. Jeremiah. That Edom is a part of this. And we're going to be plundered within the nations that we in. Uh-huh. It's so going to happen before we go on. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Before we go on, even for verse 7, I wanted to go to Ezekiel 14 uh, and read uh, 12 through 20. Go for it. You want me to um, go there? You want me to go there? Uh, I, got, I got it from my, okay. my scripture list. Okay. So Ezekiel chapter 14, starting at verse 12. And the word of Yahweh came again to me, saying, Son of man. When a land sins against me to commit a trespass, and I shall stretch out my hand against it and cut off its supply of bread and send scarcity of food on it and cut off man and beast from it. Even though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they would deliver only themselves by their righteousness, declares the master Yahweh. If I cause an evil beast to pass through the land and it shall bereave it. The nations we in. Or another nation coming from the outside, passing through. Go ahead. And it shall be a wasteland, so that no man passes through it because of the beast. Even though these three men were in it, as I live, declares the master Yahweh, they would neither deliver sons or daughters. They alone would be delivered, but the land be a wasteland. Or if I bring a sword on that land, and I shall say, sword, go through the land. And I shall cut off man and beast from it, even though these three men were in its midst, as I live, declares the Master Yahweh, they would neither deliver sons nor daughters, for they only would deliver themselves. themselves. Or if I send a pestilence onto that land, and I shall pour out my wrath on it in blood to cut off it, man and beast, even though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, declares the Master Yahweh. They would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would only deliver their lives by their righteousness. Amen. That was 12 through what? That was 12 through 20. Okay. Amen. And they had to do something. They had to refuse something and do something. It wasn't just spiritual. And that delivering their souls and fleeing is their righteousness to stay is their wickedness. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Uh, verse nine, back to Zechariah 2, verse nine. For behold, I will shake my hand over them, and they will be a spoil to those who serve them. And you will know that Yahweh Zebaoth has sent me. Sing and rejoice, daughter of Zion, for behold, I come and I will dwell in the midst of you, says Yahweh. Many nations shall join themselves to Yahweh in that day and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of you. And you shall know that Yahweh Zebaoth has sent me to you. Yahweh will inherit Judah as his portion in the holy land. It will again choose Jerusalem. So we're not chosen. We're not chosen yet. First, we got to come out. We got to cleanse our temples. Take the cleansing and the chastisement, the humbling. It's a preparation that we be found worthy to enter into the chamber to be hidden, which is the wilderness, because no unclean thing. That is the kingdom manifested within, but not without. While we are in the wilderness, that beast that just conquered Babylon that caused our fleeing 
is going to raise up and be the head now for three and a half years. Y'all say it's the anti-Messiah, but y'all, the whole world is going to be deceived by him because you always thought the anti-Messiah was some Jewish person. Never thought that Russia would be the one. And he's going to rule from Jerusalem. Watch. He's going to force Israel hand to turn over their uh, alliance with America to save their life and submit to him. Watch. Watch. And they're going to become one. Watch it. Watch the politics. But y'all been told it's a Syrian who, a Jewish Syrian that's going to be the Messiah to stand up and say he's the Messiah. No, it's not, that's not how the world going to be deceived by this anti-Messiah. That's not Messiah. They never said he was the Messiah, but yet he's about to save the world from what? The New World Order. And now y'all think that y'all not going to be under the New World Order. That's how y'all going to get deceived. Half of Israel is Russian anyway, y'all. What y'all talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Half of Egypt is Russian now, too. Y'all. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. All right. Mm -hmm. Be silent. All flesh before Yahweh. For he has roused himself from his holy habitation. Amen. So I guess this is sort of where I come in. So I said again, there was never a command to flee Jerusalem or Babylon due to sin or war by the prophets of old during the reign, I'm very specific here, of Nebuchadnezzar under Belshazzar. Did I, Belshazzar? Until. Until Belshazzar, right? There was never a command to flee Jerusalem and or Babylon. So, Jerem, I'm, I'm going to prove this because when we read clearly, Jeremiah seals the deal, even though everything I just read seals it too. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 50 and 51 is the most elaborate. How do I say? Detailed mm -hmm. of how and when it's going to happen. Most elaborate, Jeremiah. And you got people still saying that happened already in the Babylonian captivity of Nebuchadnezzar. It's not true. And so let me prove it. So I'm in Jeremiah 27. The yoke of Nebuchadnezzar. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word to Jeremiah from Yahweh, saying, Yahweh said, Jeremiah said, Thus says Yahweh to me, make bonds and bars and put them on your neck and send them to the king of Edom, to the king of Moab, to the king of the children of Ammon, of the king of Tyre and the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messenger who came to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, who was a puppet king at that time, right? Jerusalem had already been underneath, had already been sort of sieged by Nebuchadnezzar twice earlier and now it's under the, um, no, it's underneath their, uh, uh, how do I say, garrison in the sense that they have to play tribute. And Zedekiah is a puppet king now, put in place by the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and give them a command to their master saying, thus says Yahweh of Zebaoth, the Elohe of Israel, you shall tell your masters, I have made the earth, the men and the animals that are on the surface of the earth, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, I give it to whom it seems right to me. I create world rulers, right? Now, I, Yahweh, have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the animals of the field also have I given him to serve him. What's the animals of the field? the peoples, the nations around, right? Hold up. All the nations shall serve him. This is a command from Yah and his son 
and his son, son. So he basically said, nobody buck up against Babylon of their own accord until the time of his own land come. And then many nations and great kings shall make him their bond servant. It shall happen that the nation and the kingdom which shall not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, he's letting you know it's not double prophecy, the same, this one that I'm talking about, king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck underneath the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will, he punish? I punish. Yahweh said, I'm going to punish every nation that does not surrender, put their neck underneath his yoke, and serve him. With the sword, and with famine, and with pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Who put Nebuchadnezzar in power? Why would he tell you to flee him? Now we just clearly see, he said, don't flee. Don't fight. Surrender. I'm doing this. Why? Look at this. But as for you, do not listen to your prophets, nor your diviners, nor to your dreams, nor to your soothsayers, nor to your sorcerers who speak to you saying you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesize a lie to you to remove you far from your land and that I should drive you out and you should perish. But the nation that shall bring their neck underneath the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, that nation will I, Yahweh, let remain in their own land. Why would we have to flee? Says Yahweh, and they shall till it and dwell in it. That's what Yah said. So what y'all coming up, coming up, talking about Jeremiah 50, 51 to flee her is past already. No such command. They're liars. They are lying prophets. I'm in Jeremiah 27, 12. I spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words. Y'all know, y'all know this when y'all put Jeremiah in the poo-poo pit, right? With y'all poo-poo. Try to kill him and stop his words. Because you said to Jeremiah exactly what newbie Ebri and everybody else is trying to say to me. She over here cursing Israel. She over here uh, putting, putting fear in the faces of people that y'all's not with us. Shut her up. So now I'm going to put poo-poo in your mouth. And it's your poo-poo. Jeremiah, my great, 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 great cousin. <laughs> Don't we look alike? <laughs> right? All right. He said, bring your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by famine, and by the pestilence? He never told you to flee. It didn't have to happen had you surrendered. As Yahweh has spoken concerning the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon, don't listen to the words of the prophets who speak to you saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesied a lie to you. For I have not sent them, says Yahweh, but they prophesied falsely in my name that I may drive you out and that you may perish, you and the prophets who prophesied to you. Also, I spoke to the priests and to all the people saying, thus says Yahweh, don't listen to the words of your prophets who prophesied to you saying, behold, the vessels of Yahweh's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon for they prophesied lies to you. And I'm hearing, I'm here saying what Jeremiah is saying to you. Mm -hmm. Stop listening to your false prophets and your false leaders. They are prophesizing lies to you when they tell you now, don't flee. All right. That's proof, right? Right. That's right. That's so that they they prophesize these lies to cause you to never return to your land. Mm. That's a 
money. 17, don't listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Why should this city become a desolation? Y'all never prophesied that Jerusalem was going to become a desolation only if they did not surrender. There was no flee. And never did he prophesy that we was going to eat, that we ate our babies and it didn't happen. We died in a famine. We did not eat our babies. What you did was consume them with your lying doctrines and you got your babies killed. And they starved. Jeremiah was there the whole time. Y'all was starving. All right, Jeremiah 38. Then Sheftatiah, the son of Batan, and Gedaliah, the son of Pashur, and Yuchal, the son of Shalemiah, Shale, and Pashur, the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah has spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, he that remain in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, for he shall have life for life. I mean, he, have, he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. Don't let nobody read this to you outside of the context. That what he's saying is that go forth, open up the gate, not flee. The staying in the city is that they fortified it, locked it up. Uh, um, uh, uh, fortified it by putting their troops and all of that so that Babylon couldn't get in. So they had to siege it for a couple of some time. He said, he's saying, open up the gates and say, welcome. We freely give up. This is not a command to flee. When he says, he that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword. He's saying, if you remain here, why not close by and keeping your gates closed to fight against him and don't open up and submit, you will die. No command to flee. Because people be pulling tricks, right? Somebody will read that by itself, right? Some nigga brew, Evie brew will read that by itself and don't read the whole thing, right? The whole situation, what he meant by it. Y'all just causing me to be more thorough. Don't play with me. <laughs> Make it make sense. Jeremiah 29, 3. By the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan. Did I just read that? No. And Gamari, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So what happened was that Zedekiah put Jeremiah in jail because he didn't believe him. Jeremiah said, give up. They locked themselves in and fortified. And they thought that Egypt was going to come back and uh, help them. But no, Egypt was not. So now that they're on their own, Nebuchadnezzar came because he tried because Zedekiah betrayed him with Egypt, said, oh, I'm, I'm going to take y'all Negroes now. Thus says Yahweh Zebaoth, the Elohe of Israel, to all the captivity whom I have caused to be carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Why? Because they were disobedient to what Jeremiah just said. Surrender. Where am I? What's my point on? Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take wives and father sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to the husbands and to they bear sons and daughters and multiply there and don't be diminished. So now I'm going to show that there was no command to flee Babylon due to Cyrus coming. Nor did we. It's not in history. It didn't happen. And nobody ever commanded it. Seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to Yahweh for it. For in it, peace, you shall have peace. Why is Negro screaming peace today in Babylon? Because they're false prophets reading the prophecies backwards yeah. and perverted. Now Jeremiah's message for the last days is opposite of this. And you have the false prophets of today yeah. prophesizing the other opposite while I'm prophesizing 
the other end of Jeremiah. So we got to flip it. They blind. This is the one they're quoting for today. But this is the one that happened already. And then when you show them the prophecies of Jeremiah 51, they say that happened already. And I'm showing you it's the prophecy of today. Wow. Jeremiah has prophecies that says flee Babylon and Jeremiah has prophecies that says sit your butt still and surrender which one can't be the same right but thus says Yahweh Zibaoth the Elohe of Israel we're going to talk about this peace that your leaders are speaking don't let your prophets who are in the midst of you and your diviners deceive you Neither listen to their dreams, which you call you cause to be dreamed, for they prophesize falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says Yahweh. Now we can do Jeremiah 50. Let's make Jeremiah 50 and 51 be the clarity of it all. Because it already makes sense. Yeah. The argument is gone yeah. that this is just a spiritual, it's spiritual, it's a system. You can't flee a system. It's all over the world. The whole world is getting the destruction of Babylon. Lies, lies on top of more lies because they don't understand anything. He just said, come out of sin. All you got to do is keep the commandments. Babylon, well, yeah. Jeremiah gave commandments. Yeah, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. But Jeremiah commanded them by Yahweh. It was a command, y'all. It was a, co a monetary command. Surrender. And y'all didn't listen to the prophet. Now, y'all is giving you another command by my mouth. Yup. To come out. Keep the commandments and live. All right. Y'all got this. I'm out. I'm out. Ooh, my back hurts. All right, y'all got this all day long. Jeremiah chapter 50. The word that Yahweh spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldean, by Yeremiah the prophet, declare among the nations and publish and set up a standard, publish and don't conceal, say, Babylon is taken, Baal is disappointed. Merodach is dismayed. Her images are disappointed. Her idols are dismayed. Okay, stop right there. Bel is another name for Baal, right? Mm -hmm. And Merodach is another name for Baal as well. Right? What's the image of Bel or Merodach? The bull. The bull. What's the bull represent? Mm -hmm. The cash cow. Wall Street. Money, that's the system, right? But we just showed you that it's not just the system. It's the merchandise, too. All of it is going to crash, y'all. Mm -hmm. Bell, Verse three. the bull. Mm -hmm. For out of the north, there comes up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They are fled, they are gone, both man and animal. In those days and in that time, says Yahweh, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. Mm -hmm. They shall go in on their way weeping. Y'all are crying. shall seek Yahweh. Wait a minute. So what's the difference between the ones that he said come out yeah. and they singing? Yeah. Why are we singing and y'all crying? Because they, the ones that came out in uh, haste are going to be weeping. Yep. Because they wouldn't flee. Yep. And they're going to be regretful that they didn't they, listen yep. in the beginning. They're going to regret it because they're going to lose their babies. Mm -hmm. They shall seek Yahweh the Elohim, verse 5. They shall inquire concerning Zion with their faces turned toward it, saying, Come and join yourselves to Yahweh in an everlasting covenant that shall not be forgotten. Who are these? The last minute hasty fleers. If Zion is already established and they look, that means Zion is already established, right? Yeah. That means that there is a remnant that came out before the last remnant yes. that established Zion. Yes. 
Four runners. That's right. Four runners. Four runners. And these four runners are the ones that have the faith. Amen. Not Amen. these cowards. Mm -hmm. Next okay. slide, uh, please. Sorry. Okay, you up here, my bad. I'm sorry. Verse six. My people have been lost sheep. Mm -hmm. The shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Literally and spiritually, mountain to hill means from leader to teacher to leader to teacher. False. Yeah. And all of these leaders and teachers on the YouTube got what? Resting places. Yeah. They got pastures. Uh-huh. And y'all go, that's where y'all gonna be scattered on a mountain. But go ahead. Mm -hmm. Chill land. <laughs> Let me try to see what you All who found them have devoured them. And the adversary said, We are not guilty mm -hmm. because they have sinned against Yahweh, the habitation of righteousness, even Yahweh, the hope of their fathers. And they say, um, and the kings of the earth will say, Wow, I can't believe the adversary just sieged Jerusalem and entered into their gates. Yeah. What gates? Your pastures on the mountains and the hills, on the Hulas, the Yoshi's lands, the Deborah's, the Bora uh, huh? Washman's, the Pastor Dowels, the local lands, Brother Asa, I and forget the uh, Prince Israel, I forget his name, and Prince Nasser Israel, mm -hmm. and everybody else is because as many as many of y'all. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's, everyone is not advertising it yet on YouTube like that, but it's many. And then we found about this new one. That has been around for a long time, empty, mo probably the most beautiful land out of all of y'all. Yeah. Cows and goats and other, and this Negro is just waiting for y'all yeah. to come. And you could tell the military sent this Negro. Yeah. <laughs> What's his name again? I can't remember. Huh? I'm a, I just know he talks. He talks, he talks like, like this. Yes. Is it, is it like Irish Jamaican. How are you yes. doing? Tashua. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Ah, there you go. What is it? Tashua. This Negro, probably before Pastor Dow, he's the first one. Yeah, he got In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if most people had followed his lead. Yeah, they kind of look alike. Follow his lead. <laughs> He's military, y'all. Yeah, he got that spirit on. He him. got millions, and his land looked like some Quakers. The, the the black people ain't even working it. No, it's empty. It's full of beautiful cows yeah. and sheep Pastors and goats and, and rooms and cabins and crops. And it's only thirty people there, y'all. And they're not even living on it. They're not doing nothing. They're not working the land. He got some hired people to keep the land for what? For this day. Mm. This nigga's hired. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Flee out of the midst of Babylon mm -hmm. and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. No, the he spiritual the land of Oz. The, the spiritual land of Uz. Mm -hmm. Right? This is spiritual now. The midst of Babylon doesn't mean the land of the Chaldean army. The land. It's, the, it's spiritual now. It's not a system. Land, okay. Mm -hmm. And just a point to continue to speak about it that it's not talking about the whole world, it's talking about her, Babylon. That's right. So that's when we got to flee out of her. Continue. Mm -hmm. Well, behold, I will stir up and cause to come up against Babylon, the company of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From there, she shall be taken. The arrow shall be as of an expert mighty man. None shall return in vain. Not one is going to miss. Mm -hmm. Only one person can be killed today. Mm -hmm. And Chaldea shall be a spoil. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, said Yahweh. Can you change it, please? Verse 11. Because you are glad, because you rejoice, O oh, you who plundered my heritage, mm -hmm. because you are one ton as a heifer that treads out the grain and nigh as strong horses. So they, why is this happening? Because we just got plundered. They just did something, literally, it just happened, y'all. 
We just got plundered. Mm -hmm. Your mother shall be utterly disappointed. He who bore you shall be confounded. Behold, you shall be the least of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. That word least means the, latter, the latest one, the last of it. The mother would be who? Who's the mother of America? Britain. That's his mama. They're going to be like, what? Not my baby. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 13. Because of the wrath of Yahweh, she shall not be inhabited, but she shall be wholly desolate. Verse 13. Because of the wrath of Yahweh, she shall not be inhabited, but she shall be wholly desolate. Everyone who goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. So there'll be no remnant of her left. People, land, merchandising, it's all going to be a wrap. That ain't happy yet. Mm -mm. Exactly. exactly. She'll be a thing of the past. Set yourselves in array against Babylon. All around, all you who bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrow, for she has sinned against Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Shout against her all around. She has submitted herself. Her bulwarks are falling. Her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of Yahweh. Take vengeance on her, as she has done, do to her. Mm -hmm. Double. Her walls is what? Her defense system? So they got to be a, a crash, a EM, with an EMP, with an EM mm -hmm. crash. And her walls literally is her banking system mm -hmm. for trading. Mm -hmm. Those are her walls. So I'm collapse. Mm -hmm. Them walls come tumbling down. That's right. Put off the sword from Babylon and him that handleth the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn everyone to his people, and they shall flee everyone to his own land. Okay, so that can't be spiritual everywhere. Everybody going to their own land. Mm -hmm. Can you change the slide, please? Yes, sir. I said it again. When is this going to happen? When is, when is the oppression sword going to cause us to flee? Tights. Who you handles the sickle in the time of the harvest? What's the time of the harvest? Those fruits. Summer Those fruits. Kites. That's right. You said it. Kites. Kites means end, and it means summer. Mm -hmm. Verse seventeen. Israel is a hunted sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria devoured him. And now at last, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones. Therefore, thus said Yahweh Zebaot, the Elohim of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria. I will bring Israel again to his pasture, and he shall feed on Hormel and Bashan, and his soul shall be satisfied. On the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. <laughs> Those days and in that time. Go ahead, Hugh. Verse 20. <laughs> it's all right. In those days and in that time, says Yahweh, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I leave as a rip. Well, sin is everywhere, but it won't be in Judah. Yep. And never once was sin never not. We haven't obtained this yet. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Go up against the land of Marathim, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Peacock, Pico, killed and utterly destroyed after them, says Yahweh. And do according to all that I have commanded you. 
A sound of battle is in the land and of a great destruction. So, so uh, the land of Marathiam means the land of double rebellion. So she's going to get double for her rebellion, right? And then habitations of Pecod. Uh, Pecod was the city of the Chaldeans of the army. Huh? Yes, it also means um, from the word Pachad, which means visit. The inhabitants of the land that I'm going to visit, right? Um, which is a punishment, but Pechard literally was where the army of the Chaldean army stayed. Mm -hmm. uh, next slide, please. Verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut apart and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for you, and you are also taken. Babylon, and you weren't aware. You are found and also caught because you have stri striving against Yahweh. Uh, and, and so one thing we know in Proverbs and, and Torah, when you basically when you lay a snare for the whole world, basically how it says how the hammer of the whole earth you know, America and its military uh, going in each country, destroy, going in there and plotting to destroy all these countries. And so they have laid snare for these countries. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when the wicked lays a snare for the righteous, mm -hmm. that snare that you laid, you're going to get trapped by. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, again, the recompense that Babylon so deserves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 25, Yahweh has opened his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation uh -oh. for Yahweh. Yahweh Zibaot has a work to do in the land of the child deed. Uh -oh. Come against her from the utmost border. Open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. And two, and we know that and Torah says anything that is uh, accursed of Yahweh is to completely be destroyed. So uh, contains it's the Torah of Yah and, and how that uh, the prophets speak of Torah and, and you know Babylon's supposed to be put on the ban just as uh, the walls of Jericho, Jericho, the town of Jericho. Everything was supposed to be put under the ban there, mm -hmm. but again they stole from there, and that's when Akon or, or his, he had to be destroyed because now he was accursed with the accursed things. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, yeah, yeah, sorry. Verse 27. Kill all her bulls. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them, for their day has come, the time of their visitation. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the voice of those who flee and escape out of the land of Babylon. To declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahweh our Elohim, the vengeance of his temple. So, so who's declaring the fall of Babylon? But right before it happens. 144,000. So, no, not 000. all. Of, yes, but yes, the 144. But there are those that, yes, we fled. The whole 144,000, we are declaring Yah's vengeance once we're out. And this is why the devils that look like us don't want us to come out. Ooh. And this is also why they, they're telling them this, to stay so that they can have more people with them going to Kahina. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because they got a job they to devils. do. Yep. yep. They got a job to do yep. too. If they not of Yah, then they are devils and their job is to do what? Mm -hmm. Take as many out with you as possible. Mm -hmm. and, it's only, and they do that by giving you a false word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All together the archers against Babylon, all those who bend the bow, encamp against her all around. Let none of it escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she has done due to her. For she has been proud against Yahweh, against the Holy One of Israel. Mm -hmm. And and two, so we know that 
Uh, Russia has submarines all surrounding uh, America, mm -hmm. just waiting for that call. And mm -hmm. I believe in a news report too that uh, Russia proclaimed that they had a, a missile that can be that that's undetectable. And so mm -hmm. I believe just, it. it. And so and and all these all these nations that are practicing their uh that they're using their missiles and shoot them in the water they're they're just practicing they're practicing yep verse 30 therefore her young men will fall in her streets and all her men of war will be brought to silence in that day says Yahweh. that's include our men of war mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and two for the, the fools and that think man that of war, his son that's the dyer's son too. That's right. Mm -hmm. And for the fools, I know that y'all, y'all, y'all speaks about them. They, they, they think they're going to be y'all's battle axe, mm -hmm. but that's not what y'all has prescribed for us. Y'all told us to flee, and, and we ain't picking up no sword. Nope. And, hey, we ain't made it there yet. We ain't made it there yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, 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 He's, Shan just sees it. He just sees it so clearly, huh? Right. He's like, man. Man, it's, it's clear as day, but we're going to spell it out. Okay. We got to go from <laughs> verse by verse. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. Behold, I am against you. You proud one, says Yahweh. Yahweh Zibaot, for your day has come, the time that I will visit you. The proud one shall stumble and fall. None shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all who are around him. Mm -hmm. Humpty said, Humpty Dumpty. Mm -hmm. Thus said Yahweh Zebaot, the children of Israel and the children of Judah are pressed together. And all who took them captive hold them fast. Mm -hmm. They refuse to let them go. And so the that redeemer, could be, once again, how could that be the Babylon of them? Because Yah never gave a command that we was going to be let go by him. He said, serve him until his income. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to point out that this, this judgment falls under the judgment of idol worship. And we just read, uh, I mean, it falls into a lot of uh, it's a full judgment, obviously, of Yah's wrath against Babylon. But how she was called a great city, which is really exalting herself above Yahweh, making mm -hmm. herself an Elohim. That was like Babylon, they, the first Babylon. So I that wanted, tried to build a name, right? So yeah. I wanted to read, because uh, our, our brothers read this before we started Shabbat, Exodus chapter 20, real quick. Thou shalt not buy, bow down thyself uh, to idols, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So those who claim to follow Yah, mm -hmm. to keep his commandments, by them refusing to come out, Yah is going to visit their iniquity. He's going to visit them to their face, mm -hmm. them and their children. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the first Babylon, they tried to, they came together, a mixed people, y'all, to build a name for themselves, Babel, and they tried to reach heaven. This Babylon had built the city so great that her sins did reach heaven, y'all. Mm -hmm. And so now he's got to Their redeemer is strong. Yahweh Zibaot is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause. That he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Okay, so if he's giving rest, right, that he's going to thoroughly plead their cause, that would be us, and give rest to the earth. That's us. It says land, earth. They don't know when y'all says the earth or the land, when he's talking about the whole world, or he's talking about us, the people, his earth, his mm -hmm. land, mm -hmm. his inheritance, and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Mm -hmm. So, He's not giving wrath to the whole world. Mm -hmm. And it talks about two and 32, where it says, uh, and the proud one, it says, again, these false leaders, these false scribes, prophets that continue to preach the false news, 
Uh, you keep you're, you're all the way up here. So when y'all when we talk we talk about the uh, what is the, the balance? Yeah. And when y'all there's no homeostasis for you. Y'all just has to destroy you. And there there's there's nothing for you. And yeah, so he, he refuses the proud and gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entropy. 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 There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, sure. Smash. Mm -hmm. If this is just a, a spiritual coming out, why is everything being described a physical destruction? That that just don't make sense. If it's just coming out spiritually. Mm -hmm. Listen, I ain't never seen nothing in the Bible that's just spiritual that doesn't happen to you. Just don't make no sense. That's that Christian pie in the sky, cabin in the sky type stuff. The land of Oz. It was all in Dorothy's head. <laughs> yeah, they held us captives and refused to let them go. Mm -hmm. A sword is on the child deeds, says Yahweh, and on the inhabitants of Babylon, and on her princes, and on her wise men. A sword is on the boasters, and they shall become fools. A sword is on her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is on their horses, and on their chariots, and on all the mixed people who are in the midst of her, and they shall become as women. A sword is on her treasures, and they shall be robbed. A drought is on her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is a land of engraved images, mm -hmm. and they are mad over idols. Mm -hmm. Therefore the wild animals of the desert with the wolves shall dwell there, and, and the ostriches shall dwell therein. And they shall be no more inhabited forever. Neither shall they be lived in from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see 40? What happened? Y'all just went out. Wait, they talking? Oh, Verse 40. Mm -hmm. As Elohim overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, said Yahweh, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. So there's no running up to Canada and thinking you're going to uh, dodge this. There's no running down to South America. It's almost like don't even try to go to Alaska. Yep. So he's letting you know the neighboring cities, right? He's not talking about Washington and uh, <laughs> right, country, yeah. right? he's talking <laughs> about Canada <laughs> and New Mexico and Brazil. Yeah. Well, and you just spoke, you spoke on that. I spoke on it it's in uh, what I just read uh, in Lamentations. Was it Lamentations? I keep forgetting Isaiah. Where you where you, where you spoke on it? Yeah, where he said, "Are you better?" Are you uh, yeah, are you better than Egypt? And um, I forget the name that they used, but. Yes, sure. who had the waters and the rivers um, right. the, between Libya. them, and they had Libya and put in Cush and uh, Cush and Egypt yeah. as their cushion. Yeah, you think you're invincible because you set up like that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's deep. Now we also have a uh, we got a note too for verse forty. It says, "So no one will dwell uh, in thee, uh, nor would son of man sojourn in it." This was the end of the matters for that city, as, as we know. That in verse 3, when it says, and none shall dwell in it, this is the end of the matter for Babylon America. Isaiah 45 and 3, and I shall give you the treasures of darkness. This is the weapons of indignation, the nuclear weapons. Nothing can exist after a nuclear strike. No case in point, Chernobyl, and that all happened in one day, and all, yep. everything was destroyed. Chernobyl was a precursor. Mm -hmm. 41. Behold, a people shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roars like the sea. They ride on horses. Everyone set in a race. As a man to the battle against you, daughter of Babylon. Mm -hmm. 
The king of Babylon has heard the news of them, and his hands wax feeble. Anguish has taken hold of him, and pain as a woman in travail. Behold, the enemy shall come up like a lion from the pride of the Jordan against the strong habitation. For I will suddenly make them run away from me. And whoever is chosen, him will I appoint over it. For who is like me? And who will appoint me a time? And who is the shepherd who can stand before me? Therefore, hear the counsel of Yahweh that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes, that he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely they shall drag them away, even the little ones of the flock. Mm. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate over them. Mm. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. it, it, that, this is just continuing to, to prove the point that it's one land and, and not everywhere. Yeah. And yeah, and this hasn't happened yet because mm -hmm. there's nothing desolate and right. Uh, so it speaks to many nations coming against it. Mm -hmm. That's it's in right. total nation. And that didn't and happen with Persia. And that they noticed that, yeah, that he keep referring to us as a woman in travail and. Uh, a woman that's fleeing or a bride. That's the only thing he referring to us as. A woman that's fleeing, a woman that's in travail, and a bride. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Keep that in mind as we continue to read. Mm -hmm. Keep it in mind. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 1 thus said Yahweh behold I will raise up against Babylon and against those who dwell in a destroying wind <laughs> I, I will send to I Babylon a stranger <laughs> Lev Kamai I don't know alright did you find out what Lev Kamai means Again, uh, Lev Kamai is uh, two words that mean uh, lifted up heart, proud. proud. All right. We can start again. Verse two. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll pick it back up at verse one. Okay. Thus said Yahweh, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against those who dwell in Lev Kamai, a destroying wind. I will send to Babylon strangers who shall win on her, and they shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her around. And we see in verse one, it says a destroying wind. And so Yah says there'll be four winds. And so That's we right. know that it's war. And so he says fire and destroying. When you put that together, you're talking about a nuclear wave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Verse 3, against him who bends, let the archer bend his bow, and against him who lifts himself up in his coat of mail, don't spare her young men, utterly destroy all her army. They shall fall down slain in the land of the child deed, and thrust through in her streets. Mm -hmm. For Israel is not forsaken, nor Judah of his Elohim, of Yahweh Zebaoth. So their land is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. And, and so with, with this, I have a question though. It says, for Israel is not forsaken nor Judah. And mm -hmm. so this is those who have made it, made it out. Yeah, this, he's saying this is your grace by this command. Okay. All right. You're not completely forsaken. This is the if and then though. As we read, flee. <laughs> Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. So it says, when it this, says, don't be cut off in her iniquity, it's the, 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 the cut off is the destroying wind. It's, 
Nobody's mm-hmm. gonna tell you to. Why would y'all tell you to leave after the destroying wind? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, ahead. this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Mm-hmm. Can you change slide, please. Working on it. Babylon has been a golden company Yahweh's had, who made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunk of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. There it goes mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same one. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Well for her. Take balm for her pain. If so, be she may be healed. We will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reaches to heaven. And it's lifted up even to the skies. Mm-hmm. And and so it, even even here it says for her judge, let me go back. It said, forsake her. And so what Lot's wife didn't do is she didn't forsake, she didn't forsake the life that she had in Sodom. Mm-hmm. She didn't forsake the goods and every every everything that she thought she had in Sodom, but she looked back and, and then she judged God in that process. And mm-hmm. so that's why. She's a pillar of salt to this day. And that's what they're going to be when he said every man will be thrust through. That's why we're supposed atomic, to Atomic, hydrogen, neutron bomb. I mean, poof. Y'all going to be pillars of salt. <laughs> that's why we're supposed to forsake self. Yep. Mm-hmm. If there's no one that has forsaken man, and, mother, and, yep. sister, father, right? Mm-hmm. And hasn't obtained what a hundredfold in me, and those who Absolutely. don't take up, who well, those who lose their life. What is the scripture? Those who seek to gain Thank their life you. shall those lose who, it. There you go. Those who willing to lose their life shall gain it. Mm-hmm. That. And, and 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 again, this goes to prove that Babylon isn't everywhere because it shows the kings are going back to their own lands. Yes. So. The nations are going back to their own land, and the kings of the earth are the ones that's mad against her, and they coming up. They're coming up against her. Ancient nations. Mm-hmm. We shall lack nothing in your whole tour. Verse 10. <clears throat> Yahweh has brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare his eye on the work of Yahweh our Elohim. Make sharp the arrows. Hold firm the shields. Yahweh has steered up the spirit of the kings of the Medes. Mm-hmm. Because his purpose is against Babylon to destroy it, for it is the vengeance of Yahweh, the vengeance of his temple. And the temple is us, right? Yeah. The vengeance for the bond servant. They, Babylon took away the temple and the precious gold in the vessel, but that's Babylon, this, we are the temple, destroyed the temple and took away the precious golds and gems and the rocks and the stones and the and the snuff. We, we're that, right? The altar is in our body mm-hmm. and this is his vengeance for us. So we are in this land. He keeps telling us to flee. On top of that, you can see clearly that this could not be passed because he says, I'm going to stir up. Now you say the spirit of the king of the Medes, but I'm saying that this is the same as he said, and I'm going to send John the Baptist, the spirit of John the Baptist. Not I mean, yeah, sorry, of Ezekiel. Wait, Elijah, Elijah, the spirit of Elijah. This is not saying I'm going to stir up the king of the meat, the spirit, stir up his spirit, right? This is, I'm going to stir up the spirit, the spirit of the king of the meat. The same spirit that Cyrus had is that spirit that's going to accomplish what he accomplished the first time by that same spirit. So Yah sends particular spirits like as in Elijah to accomplish a specific thing. And so Elijah had a specific job to do and Elijah had to return or John the Baptist returned in the spirit of Elijah and he's returning again. And he, all his path is to break that path of walking straight in repentance before Yahushua comes. So before at the coming of Yahushua, the spirit of Elijah must appear, not Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, right? As we're trying to return to the covenant and the bond of the covenant, 
the spirit of Moshe through someone has to return. Just like Babylon is a nation that would continue in its spirit to the very time of the end, that the one that he declared would destroy Babylon then, the great Babylon was Cyrus. It had a spirit and its spirit, which is the king of the Medes, is going to accomplish what it accomplished before. Same thing. I'm in. Change the side, um, Malcolm. But Babylon was destroyed, you know, with Cyrus by war, this fire and all that, but not a destroying wind, y'all. Completely like that. No, that wasn't this. Verse 12. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. Yahweh has both purposed and done that which he spoke concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. So who's going to declare the destruction of Babylon? The watchmen. Who's the watchmen? The prophets that are in Zion. Mm -hmm. in, in Babylon or outside? Outside. Okay. Outside. Mm -hmm. You who dwell on many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come, the measure of your covetousness. And and so here it's like, I think we're saying the same thing, but it's what one nation dwells on so many waters. It's, That's right. So many waters mm -hmm. and sits on the neck of so many waters, nations, right? Mm -hmm. But for, that's the fornication, y'all. That's that's the fornication, the covetousness. How that's if you want to stay the system, there it is, right there, and everybody that's in it is full of it. The measure of your covetousness, unjust gain. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, Yahweh Zebaot has sworn by himself, saying, Surely I will fill you with men, as with the canker worm, and they shall lift up a shot against you. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding has he stretched out the heavens. When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings forth the wind out of his treasures. This is a hmm. Every man has become brutish and is without knowledge. Every goldsmith is disappointed by his image, for his molten image is falsehood. And there is no breath in them. They are vanity, a work of delusion. In the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Mm -hmm. The portion of Jacob is not like these, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. Yahweh Zebaot is his name. So we were talking the other day um, how our people would live off the land how we were uh, raising the dust in the bushes and we had to draw water, we had to build houses, you know, just the rawness of it. And then when we were colonized or not even colonized, they called civilized. Then they brought in, uh, you know, chairs and um, uh, electricity and running water and things like that. And so we become so accustomed to it that to eat the, the, the appearance of returning is not, it's not alluring to our people in America because we've just been so used to having, even though we're slaves still in America, it's difficult to even fathom coming out and returning back to tents or, re or returning to even a communal living where you've had people who are uh, you know, used to solitude. They uh, just read in here, they dealt brutishly without knowledge. They have their hands working in vanity and all of it is delusion. It's not real. 
And so to return to the past of Yah, which is the real of who we are, a lot of people are not going to come out. A lot of people are not even going to try to, are not even going to hear a lot of what we're saying. Only a remnant. Only a remnant. All right. Jeremiah 51, verse 20. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. And with you will I break in pieces the nations. And with you will I destroy kingdoms. And with you will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with you will I break in pieces the chariot and him who rides therein. And with you will I break in pieces man and woman. And with you will I break in pieces the old man and the youth. And with you will I break in pieces the young man and the virgin. And with you will I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. And with you will I break in pieces the farmer and his yoke of oxen. And with you will I break in pieces governors and deputies. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea. All oh, their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, said Yahweh. And and here it, it's talking about you are my battle axe. And no, he's not talking to you back in Babylon, uh, you warriors. Uh, uh, I, no, he ain't talking about you. He's talking about Russia. So stop being proud and arrogant. The war, the, the war is in our hearts and in our minds outside of Babylon right it's a, and, so you so he's saying with you you're a battle axe right but once again he's already declared who he's using right that's Russia we just read it we see it all he told us to do was flee but we already saw the prophecies where he says once we come out we are the ones that's going to call it right we're going to call the destruction of Babylon. So that's how he's using us as his battle as well. But we're not the one to actually do it, right? Mm -hmm. How do we know this? I will render to Babylon and all your habitations to that Chaldea, all the evil that they have done in you, in your sight. Yahweh says, right? Says Yahweh. We will see it. How are we going to see it? We're going to be standing there in the middle of the nuclear war yeah. mm -hmm. and see it. How are we going to see it? The smoke. No, we'll see the smoke. Is, yeah. But y'all, TV will still be there. <laughs> uh, the captains. <laughs> you said the TV. TVs and the tents. That's yeah. The captains. The AI didn't go nowhere yet. The uh, phone didn't go nowhere. The captains of the ships and all of that is going to. You think they, the whole world going to see this. But the whole world is going to see us when we call it. It's going to make big news, y'all. Watch it. Yeah, we're going to be the ones that call it, but we're not going to do anything. There's no command for us to pick up anything. What's the battle axe of Yah? Word. The word that breaks in pieces, right? That's the battle axe. Mm -hmm. and, and even a uh, to say when uh, when Yehoshua was getting uh, when when they came at Yehoshua that night and Peter picked up the sword and, and cut off the the priest's uh, helper's ear, Yehoshua said, "That's not that's not what I told you to do, Peter. Put your right, sword that's away." That's not what I meant. Right. He said, "Pick up two swords." Mm -hmm. It's not what I meant, and that's the same stupid mistake these Negroes <laughs> is doing today. They have a bunch of Peters <laughs> with Satan in them, mm -hmm. talking about they the head, they the rock. They still got Satan in them, y'all. They, they ain't comprehending what's going on. No. And like I was saying earlier, we we only being mentioned as the bride, the woman that's in travail. That's right. We about to give birth to Yehoshua. That's right. Be the light. Be to be the light. Mm -hmm. We're not about to go out there and fight nobody war. That's right. And nor are we saying we're gonna go down swinging. And, and once again, how you determine that when we just showed you all the prophecies of how he going to destroy them with nations, you, oh, Israel is not destroying 
the nations. You're not fighting. The nations are going to do that for us. He just told us to come out. Mm -hmm. That's like he told the Maccabees to flee. They didn't understand. Nope. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand. Behold, I am against you. Destroying mountains, says Yahweh, which destroys all the earth. Mm -hmm. I will stretch out my hand on you and roll you down from the rocks and will make you a burnt mountain. Mm -hmm. It shall not take of you a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but you shall be desolate forever, says Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Set up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat. Many in Ashkenaz appoint a marshal against her. That's Cause marshal. the horses to come. Yeah. yeah, appoint a marshal is the head, a leader. Um, and so, as you, you just say, set up a standard in the land, right? We blow in a trumpet among the nations hmm. to prepare the Watch nations out. against her. We're not in Babylon. We outside. We're the ones that's going to blow the trumpet. Mm -hmm. The 144,000, the elect that have come out will be sealed before this happens and we will call it. We'll prophesy it. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. uh, one second, sorry. Cause the horses to come up as the rough canker worm, verse 28. Prepare against her the nations, the kings of the Medes, his governors, and all his deputies, and all the land of their dominion. I have, I have a note that says, uh, Iran, basically it says, Turkey, Russia, Iran, and Syria, the, the, the mm -hmm. ten-toed nation that's coming mm -hmm. up against Babylon. Those are the main force, yep. Mm -hmm. So this is Zechariah, when he says, I see four carvers and four horses. Well, who is these four carvers? These, oh, who's right? Who's these four horses? He said, These are the ones that's coming to destroy the one, the fours that scattered you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we know there's 10 all together in the end, but the fours are the main heads of them. Mm -hmm. Verse 29. The land trembles and is in pain for the purposes of Yahweh against Babylon do stand to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitants. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They remain in their strongholds. Their might has failed. They are become as women. Her dwelling places are set on fire. Her bars are broken. So you can see the battle axe is not us doing anything. He's still going back to how she is going to be destroyed. Has nothing to do with us in it. Mm -hmm. One runner will run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every quarter. Mm -hmm. The passages are seized. And Real the quick, reeds they have... Yes, sir. I just, I just wanted to hit on 31 as far as one post shall run to meet another. And in this time, from our understanding, we this is during a blackout. So they will have to send one messenger to another messenger just to get a message across. Yeah. You get a to, nuclear strike, it's going to be a blackout, obviously, because her defense is going to be taken down. It's going to, yeah, they ain't going to know what happened. Mm -hmm. 32. And the passages are seized, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are frightened. For thus said Yahweh Zibaoth, the Elohim of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden. Yet a little while, and the time of harvest shall come for her. See, we know when mm -hmm. it's happening in the time of harvest in the summer. Verse 2. And it's already hot. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. 
He has, like a monster, swallowed me up. He has filled his mouth with my delicacies. He has cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be on Babylon. Shall the inhabitants of Zion say, so what, my so blood be on the inhabitants. So you can see what all we're doing is calling, speaking this, we're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And my blood be on the inhabitants of Chaldea, said, shall Jerusalem say. Therefore, thus says Yahweh, behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you. And I will dry up her sea, make her fountain dry. Babylon shall become heaps, a dwelling place for jackals, an astonishment, and a hissing without inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall yell as lion whelps. Verse 39, when they are heated, I will make their feast and I will make them drunken that they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, says Yahweh. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with male goats. How is Shishak taken and the praise of the whole earth seized? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? The sea has come up on Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of his waves. Well, you're saying that that right there, this war, you, you see it right there. The sea yeah, has come yes. upon Babylon. There's many scriptures that talks about how Mitzrayim is coming up like a sea, and it talks about how they're going to bring war upon a nation. And so that's right. the sea is war. Yes, that's right. It's war with other nations. Mm -hmm. Her cities are become a desolation, a dry land and a desert, a land in which no man dwells. Neither does any son of man pass thereby. I will execute judgment on Bel and Babylon, and I will bring forth out his mouth that which he has swallowed up. Mm. And the nation shall not flow any more to him. Yes, wall of Babylon, you shall fall. Mm. And we see again, we continue to see that the wall of Babylon shall fall, the, the economic system shall fall, and I'll bring forth out of his mouth that which he has swallowed up. And you know, he swallowed up us and what and basically what we've had given to we we built Babylon up, and he so he swallowed us back, swallowed us up, and so he's gonna bring on the judgment two times. And so mm -hmm. come in, they ain't gonna get it. Verse 45, my people, go away from the midst of her. No, go get land. My people, <laughs> go away from the midst of her and save yourselves, every man, from the fierce anger of Yahweh. So you can clearly, so so Ola, you can clearly say that his message is not saying sit there, uh, watch a nuclear atomic missile strike and bomb go from one end of the nation to the next. You can see this is not just New York City, right? Um, it, he's not saying that. He, he's saying all this to say, now, this is why I'm telling you to flee up out of her, right? But I said again, I showed you that before this war happens, they are going to plunder us right before it. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. The nations are going to be shocked that they did this to us. And when they the nations see that they did this to us, even though they're going to be like, oh, they, I guess they deserve it. Uh, they said they was the people, but they destroyed, right? There's a, that's, a, that's a double thing going on right underneath that, right after that, Russia coming in. Well, the, they say, y'all say, don't buy a plane ticket, but clearly he's telling you right here, save yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. You better get that plane ticket, get up out of Babylon. So plan. this is the fierce anger. Yeah, how do you save yourself from the fierce anger of Yah if he says, "I'm bringing nations to right to destroy her with missiles from afar, fiery missiles and the destroying wind"? Get out of her after. <laughs> Don't make no sense. <laughs> Sit there and watch it, praise Yah, and then find a way to escape. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. I mean, that, that suggests that there's still going to be flights, flights coming in, mm -hmm. or ships so, docking, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and 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 two, how my brother just said, get that plane ticket. Don't let. I don't even know how much a plane ticket is anymore because y'all waited so long. But <laughs> don't let a few hundred dollars you lose your soul over a few hundred dollars. Get your passport. Get the plane ticket. Come out. Don't let your heart faint. Just don't don't have have faith in y'all. And that and that's and he and him and maybe he might bless you with a plane ticket. But start saving your money up and, and get that plane ticket and get the passport out of there. That's right. Stop buying all that weed. Uh, you know, you gotta do the I don't footwork. Think. You gotta do the that footwork. Give you a lot of money. You gotta do the footwork and them Jordans and all that. That's uh, right. All, right. all that. That's right. And chains. Stop Gucci buying peaches. All that. Yeah, I'm selling all that stuff. <laughs> Make them sorry. Keep, 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 keep the passport and a plane ticket. That's <laughs> right. The, the money that it costs to get those, he already gave you with that money that America printed back in 2020. So that he is sure did. the whole world. He sure did. A lot of people that messed up. That with. was the opportunity. They really messed up by not taking that. But there's another window. You might come out a little more poor than the first time. Who knows? I, I know, right? Yeah. There's a lesson, yeah. right? He said he's going on try us through the furnace of, of poverty, poverty, affliction. So, hey, but nevertheless, <laughs> there's a, a, a window open right now, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And the, those paths, those seven streams of Zion, the highway, is being laid. Get on it. Okay. It don't have to finish me being paved at the end. Get on the first brick. We already rode that. We already stepped yeah. on that brick, right? Right. You don't even have to act like it's your own faith, but we have like stepped on it for you to let you know A is there. Okay, don't worry about the brick before us. When we step on it, we'll let you know it's there. It's stable, it's stable. Right he didn't fall yet, but we'll tell you how to walk straight on it. <laughs> No, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. And so hey. if you don't read this and you're not afraid and you'd rather listen to the man pleasers who are telling you to stay because they really just want your money. Because they can't afford to come out because they That's in right. debt. That's right. Or they, child support. You deserve it. Or yeah. well, got that. a criminal record. Yep. Or they just cowards, y'all. They just cowards. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, 46. Don't let your heart faint, neither fear for the news that shall be heard in the land. For news shall come one year, and after that, in another year, shall come news and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. That's that's Therefore, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's so, so don't let your heart fear, right? We're gonna hear news yeah. of war. You're gonna hear this is this is Matthew 24 that they keep saying already happened. No, nope. nope. there's not 87 either, right? Nope. Don't let your heart fail. He said, Don't be afraid, for you shall hear wars and rumors of wars. That's that news. One year and then another year, at least two years of hearing that they go into war and violence, and right? Russia. And after that, in another year shall come news, right? And then after that, violence in the land, right? Mm -hmm. Ruler against ruler, right? That's not Russia against us just yet. yet. That's what he said. Nation against nation, kingdom against ruler, race against race. This is the race war that, that they, are, they are scared of right now. This is the violence that's going to happen in the land. And that violence, he said, the end is not yet. That violence is the violence that's going to plunder us while we're in it that get us to flee. Right? That's going to get us to flee, right? And we've been fleeing by hearing the news. Not, not that we are, we're not afraid of that. It's not that we fear, we, but Yah says leave for the destroying that's coming, for the, for the sword of oppression. It's coming, right? You're hearing it. We, we fleeing before it happened, right? We're leaving before it happened, right? Therefore, go ahead. This is, uh, Isaiah talks about this, but he said it's going to be in the kingdom of Egypt, in the land of Egypt. What's Egypt? So ruler against ruler, kingdom against kingdom, nation against race against race in the land of Egypt? 
That's this. That's Matthew 24 right here. It's going to happen in the land first. Once that happens, behold, there the days come. Then he's going to execute his judgment. Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will execute judgment on the engraved images of Babylon. And her whole land shall be confounded. The whole land. And all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. So, but 45, he said, get out. Get out, but don't let your hearts faint. Right. Mm -hmm. So that don't mean don't fear necessarily what's coming. He's saying, get out. I got, <laughs> I got this. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Then the heavens and the earth and all that is therein shall sing for joy over Babylon. For the destroyer shall come to the slain of Israel to fall. So at Babylon shall fall the slain of all, all the land. No, we skip, uh, it skipped because it went back. Could you read that again, 48? So once again, battle mm -hmm. acts is not you. It's, it's right. You're not the one that is going to be, all you're going to be doing is calling it out once you get out. This North country, this, these nations are the ones that's doing it. Go ahead. You have- Verse 48. They frozen. And the, the same for joy over Babylon. For hold the destroyer shall come frozen. to her from the north. Said. Hold on, hold on, y'all still frozen. Y'all still frozen. One second, I don't know how to, what to do. Whoops. Where was I? Yeah. Move y'all, are y'all moving? Nope, they're still frozen. Let me pause this. There y'all go. Okay, you gotta go. Okay, go ahead. We missed everything. We were frozen. What was everything? 48. 48. Oh. Verse 48. Then the heavens and the earth, and all that is therein, shall sing for joy over Babylon. For the destroyer shall come to her from the north, says Yahweh. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so where Babylon shall fall, the slain of all the land. So that's what I'm saying. This land, this this news of war, there is going to be a flood put out. Hopefully, that we die in it, in the land. The 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 race war, the anarchy, the uh, in all the stuff that's coming that white people is running from, right? Is really a over to destroy us. And it's gonna half there look like they done killed all of us. We gonna all be consumed in this, this thing that's about to happen, right? In the land, in the land first, the nations amongst us. And then after that, the destroyer is coming, right? And once again, we're not the battle ax. If it clearly tells you that it's a great nation and it tells you what those nations are from the North coming to destroy her, then how are we the battle axe in the sense that they think we're going to pick up swords and fight inside and that what is you picking up? Stop it. That's no, that
They about to kill all of us, y'all, over there. And, right. and this would this would be the Lamentations four, correct? That's right. Yep. And last, we're not finished, but last night we we gonna we gonna find the Lamentations four, where he where he said when we just read that yes, you gonna get it, and Edom is gonna be the end of her too. Why? Because she did it to us right there. We're gonna see it again in the Psalms that they gonna do it to us in the land. And they're going to what? Cheer over us. And now y'all's anger is going to be like, watch this. Mm -hmm. You who have escaped the sword, go. Don't stand still. Remember Yahweh from afar. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. If, if that ain't saying it right there, I don't know what is. That's if right. If you don't understand that. If that's that's telling you whoever done got away, you in if first off you escaping something. It's telling you to go remember Yahweh and get your mind right. Now why get would your heart right? Yeah, why would y'all tell us to wait till the sword? Mm -hmm. It don't make sense. So I'm gonna prophesy to you a sword is coming, flee, but wait for the sword <laughs> so you can flee. Where you can see the prophecy says leave right before this happens so you don't have to make haste and don't have to leave as a fugitive you got a choice but some of you will so i want you to remember this we talked about when we read about uh in lamentation he says that i i, I we are cruel we don't even give the breast to give nurse mm -hmm. our babies tongues is cleaved to the roof of our mouth we didn't give them no knowledge wisdom or the word of yah right no bread no ponga right so they're going to they gonna thirst. They're going to, by the sword and by famine, right? Mm -hmm. So we see here that he says, let Jerusalem come into your mind. Mm -hmm. Keep that in the note. As you just said, this Lamentations, I'm going to show you once again how all of these tie in to each other and complete each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 51. We are confounded. Because we have heard reproach, confusion has covered our faces, for strangers are coming to the sanctuaries of Yahweh's house. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that I will execute judgment on her engraved images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. So in 51, while he's telling you, escape the, school, escape the sword, remember Yah from afar, why? Because he's not there. He's not there. He won't be found there. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. Is, is he talking about just that actual city, Jerusalem, in, in Jerusalem? No. But he's talking about in the borders of these lands where we have started to gather. That when he put his names in the assembly, right? Let it come into your mind, right? Why? He's saying, we are confounded, right? You're confused. You're stumbling. Why are you stumbling about your return? Because we have heard a reproach. Who did you hear a reproach from? These evil niggas that Satan sent to give an evil report that what? Strangers has come into the sanctuaries. Of, strangers is in our land. Foreigners are in our land. And you've heard an evil reproach that some of us could be going through some things here. That's so nice situations and all of that. But that is not going to be compared to you getting slaughtered. Right. It's just a test of faith. Yeah, this is our test of faith. There was a reproach in the land when, um, when Abraham came. He didn't have peace. So confusion has covered our faces. For strangers are come into the sanctuary sanctuaries of Yahweh's house. This is why you're confused. You don't want to, when you're getting a bad, evil report. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Therefore. Verse 53. Mm -hmm. Though Babylon should mount up to the sky, and though she should fortify the height of her strength, yet from me shall destroyers come to her, says Yahweh. The sound of a cry from Babylon, 
and of a great destruction from the land of the Chaldees. <laughs> For the destroyer is come on her, even on Babylon. Her mighty men are taken. Their bowls are broken in pieces. Yahweh is Elohim of recompense. He will surely requite. I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her governors and her deputies and her mighty men. And they shall sleep a perpetual sleep. Mm -hmm. Not wake up, says the king, whose name is Yahweh Zibaot. Thus says Yahweh Zebaoth, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly overthrown, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor for vanity, and the nations for the fire, and they shall be weary. And so in, in, one, in some of the Proverbs, it talks about uh, a rich man's a rich man's gate, and basically his money, his prosperity is That's his right. gates. And yep. so again, we show again it, the walls. Burn down, burn down. There's, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we we got well, down the here fire. 55. Yeah, well, the fire that they're going to see. How did I got 55 there? Oh. Oh. Did I miss something? 54, we missed one, 55. Oh. 55 is at the bottom instead of the top of the page. That's yeah, I don't, yeah. Oh. Man, it's her. Hold on. Let me pause this again and fix it. We'll read it again. Okay, go ahead. You can start it over. Wait, Tali. Uh, wait, is that it? Because the other way is ravaging your son. Uh, oh, sorry. That's it. Okay. Yahweh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Verse 55. For Yahweh lays Babylon waste and destroys out of her the great voice. And their waves roar like many waters. The noise of their voice is uttered. For the destroyer is come on her, even on Babylon, and her mighty men are taken. Their bows are broken in pieces, for Yahweh is Elohim of recompense. He will surely requite. I will make drunk her princes and her wise men, her governors and her deputies, and her mighty men, and they shall sleep a perpetual sleep, and not wake up, says the king, whose name is Yahweh Zibaot. Thus says Yahweh Zibaot, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly overthrown, and her high gates shall be burned with fire, and the people shall labor for vanity, and the nations for the fire, and they shall be weary. And, and so Proverb speaks of uh, a rich man, his walls are his money, his, his prosperity, and so it's going to be burned with the fire of Yah, and the people shall labor for vanity. And that's every vanity is everything we strive for. Everything we do in this life is vanity, except to praise, praise Yah, to seek out his commandments and mm -hmm. to seek out his ordinances and his statutes and to do them. That's the only duty of man. And so everything yeah. else is vanity. That's your first duty. Mm -hmm. um, and so the nations for the fire show what um, be weary. What nations? The ones that's watching it from a distance. Because they don't know what this means now. They're going to faint for this. Oh, you know, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my head. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the word was Yeremiah, the prophet, commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, when he went with Zedekiah, the king of Judah, to Babylon in the fourth year of his reign. Now Sariah was chief quartermaster. Yeremiah who wrote in the book, all the evil that should come on Babylon. Even all these words that are written concerning Babylon. Yeremiah who said to Sariah, when you come to Babylon, then see that you read all these words and say, Yahweh, you have spoken concerning this place to cut it off, that none shall dwell therein neither man nor animal, but that it shall be desolate forever. It shall be when you have made an end of reading this book, that you shall bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the, of the Euphrates. And you shall say, thus shall Babylon sink, mm. shall not rise again because of the evil that I will bring on her. 
-hmm. And they shall be weary. Thus far are the words of Yeremiah. Oh, yeah. And so this yeah, can't be Revelation that ancient Babylon because Babylon rose again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we finish off with mm -hmm. 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat. Yes, we wept when we remember Zion. He said, let Jerusalem come into your mind. Remember Jerusalem, flee, flee and remember Jerusalem, right? On the willows in the mist, we hung up our harps. For there, those who led us captives asked for us songs. Those who tormented us demanded songs of joy. Mm. Sing us one of those songs of Zion, those nigger spirituals. Mm -hmm. How can we sing Yahweh's song in a foreign land? What is he telling? Get out. Mm -hmm. If I forget you, Jerusalem, don't forget Jerusalem, you will forget my right hand. That's how to read. You will forget my right hand. My tongue will stick to the roof of my mouth if I don't remember you, right? That's what he said to those that don't feel, we have become uh, 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 cruel that we don't even give the breast and our children's tongue is cleaving to the roof of my mouth. We don't even talk, or we haven't even given them this word to return anywhere. If I don't exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember Yahweh against the children of Edom. Why is he invoking Edom again? Just like he invoked in the other prophecy of come out. The day of Jerusalem. Who said raise it or pour it out. Make it naked. Raise it. Pour it out. Make it naked to her foundations. One would say this is talking about 8070 when the Edomites helped the Romans tear us down then. True indeed. But no, this is Edom, the land of Edom, the land of Uz, which is Babylon that we're in. They're going to make a determination to finally take us out. Finally destroy the niggas. Where the nations are going to be like, no, they didn't. They killed the niggas, right? Daughter of Babylon, that's how we know, right? Edom, why is he invoking Edom? That's the land of Babylon. Daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction. He will be happy who repays you as you deserve or have served who? Us. What did they do? Happy shall he be who seizes and dashes or scatters your little ones against the rock. That's what they're going to do to us in the land, y'all. We just read it in Isaiah. I think it was 47 and 48. We just read it. They're going to do it to us. And then in turn, Yah is going to do it right back to them. Right? He says, I'm going to plunder them, plunder them for plundering you. He who has touched you has touched the people of my eye. They're going to do it though. But Yah has allowed it to happen. Why? Those that get touched, why did he allow it to happen? Because you have false prophets that you listen to and they were in covetousness and they kept you in their covetousness and you didn't listen to the real prophets that Yah sends because you keep saying that Yah don't have prophets and prophetesses anymore. We got false ones, rebels. though. Mm -hmm. So it's going to happen. And there will be a last remnant when that siege happens against us. There's a difference between the siege and Russia coming in, utterly destroying, called the end. But it's happening right on top of each other. Because he said, immediately after the tribulation of those days, immediately. The tribulation of those days is Jacob's trouble when he do something to us like he's never done before, nor will it be done again. Say I'm lying. It got up. Daniel said, are you going to utterly? Oh, my goodness. Ezekiel said, are you going to utterly destroy them? I got a remnant. It's going to look. I have to make it look like that, though. There is a remnant. All right. And so, yes. After Edom does what the land of Uz, the land of, does this to us, 
He's going to do it right back to them. Full out. Amen. Anything to say? And if I could just note on verse four, the songs of Yahweh are songs of the return. That's right. Songs of singing of Zion, of singing how good Yah has Mm -hmm. been to us, how um, he's been merciful of his character, of his of his name. And so when it says, how can we sing a song of Yahweh in a foreign land? You didn't even sing it. You're not in Zion. Yes, it's hypocritical. Yeah. How you going to sing about your return and you like, I'm going to stay right here? <laughs> or how are you going to sing a song of joy after hearing this? Of your in return the land. and of your redemption and you still... <clears throat> yeah. It's confusion. it's confusion. That's right. All right. So... This is a prelude for the next message. All of you that hate me and love to hate me and hate to love me. <laughs> I told you that Messiah is not coming to get your behinds out the sky. No black drunk Jamaican is flashing out the sky like Ninja Turtles to come and get you. That's not it, y'all. How do we? He's sending his servant with the blast of a trumpet, you heard, there's a call. I called you to come out and return. You come out. That's his voice. That's his presence. Matthew 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, everything I just read is going to happen to us. The sun shall be darkened. This is Russia now doing what it's going to do. Immediately, it's suddenly, Russia's going to do a sudden destruction. Russia is being held back. For who? For the last of us to come out. But once Russia sees that they have plundered us, that's the end of it. He's not holding back no more. Immediately after those days, the sun shall be darkened. The moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. What's the sign? Okay. Go back to my, yes. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. We're mourning. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall what? How He shall send his angels, plural, That's another term for messenger. What's a messenger? Prophetesses and prophets. With a great sound of a trumpet. Who blows trumpet, y'all? The watchmen and the prophet. Why do they blow the trumpet, the prophets and the watchmen? To tell you that trouble is coming and what to do before it happens, right? The and he shall is not after the tribulation. It's before. Right? With the great sound of a trumpet. And the trumpet is there to tell you trouble is coming. The wrath of Yah is coming. Destruction is coming because of sin. Come out of sin. Come out of her. Come out. And they shall. Who is? What? No, I'm just going to sit back and wait for Messiah. Who's the they shall gather together? His elect from the four winds. His angels and messengers. The messengers. Tell me that's not a prophet. Tell me that's not a watchman. A watchman is another name for a prophet. Somebody is no more prophets. That's who's y'all sending to collect you. With what? The sound of a trumpet. It's the call. We're calling. They shall gather his elect from the four winds. They shall do it, y'all. Not Messiah manifested himself like some ninja turtle cracking out the sky. His messengers, prophets, with the sound of a trumpet, that's their voices hollering and calling out your sins and telling you to repent and to shuva, return, come out. Now, from one end of heaven to the other, one end of heaven to the other is wherever we are, because we are the heaven and the earth. Now, 
Learn the parable of the fig tree. This is almost like going backwards. When his branches are yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer kites, the end is nigh. When we start falling, the fig trees and all of that, that's the sign that the end is at hand. All right, prelude. So I challenge all of you scholars and newbies and babies and poopies um, to show me any other way how you are being gathered. Don't tell the people cliches. I'm just going to wait on y'all. We're going to go into that word wait, which means I'm a hope in y'all. What do you hope for in y'all? A word A what? A sure word of prophecy from who? A prophet. This Negro said that it couldn't, that in that day when we, when he read Jeremiah, that it couldn't have be today because he says that the people shall stumble for they don't have a word. They don't see the, pro, right? They don't have a word of prophecy. That's what this Negro said in that time, right? Or in the time of 70 AD. But he said it couldn't be today because now we got the Bible. We have a more sure word of prophecy. Yeah. I said, oh, the words wasn't written then? That didn't make no damn sense. Wow. All of the prophecies y'all was written by the time they went in to Babylon. What is you talking about? AD 70, the whole book was already written. They had the more sure of word of prophecy. Yahweh never left the people without prophecy. When he says that you shall be without it, it's because you continue to listen to the false ones. And after he has continued to speak and speak and speak, he's going to remove them from you. And all you got is false prophets because you refuse to believe it. So now I challenge you. How are you getting gathered? How are you getting gathered? Yahushua said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He's in Jerusalem. How can he be talking about Jerusalem? How I have longed to gather you underneath my wings. What? He was in Jerusalem saying this to Jerusalem about gathering them? That doesn't make any sense. He wasn't talking to the Jerusalem there. He was talking to the scattered in the end. Until how you stone and kill the prophets. You will no more see me again make it make until it. you learn to bless those who come in the name of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Those are the ones that bring the glad tidings of your peace. Come out. Your peace is returning to Jerusalem. That is not specifically that city, it's Yahweh city of peace where we are establishing it by putting his name in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And are we going to walk in peace or not? That has nothing to do with the turmoil on the outside of us. They could put us in jail. We can still be at peace. Why we can't be like the 12 apostles right. after we get beat, we laugh. Right. How many stripes you got? <laughs> oh, girl. Oh, they right. got you. I mean, like, come on. You know, like your parents made. Oh, yeah, Right, but you we still alive. You got more than me. Right, <laughs> while you getting beat and be like, "Girl, take it. I got you. We are gonna make it." Mm. Mm. Why we can't be like the apostles, right? Singing in prison. Singing Hallelujah. in prison, right? Um, Why? They got the, they had to flee from city to city. Mm -hmm. They got kicked out of cities and stoned. Mm -hmm. But he said, Wonder. "You should not pass through all." When they persecute you, who's persecuting us? Mm -hmm. Our own people, they the ones that's turning us in to the governors and the, uh, the authorities of the land. But when they persecute you, your people who betray you with the people flee to the next and keep fleeing and going in circles. But what we are not doing is going back to Babylon. Hello. Hallelujah. 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 That's, Hallelujah. That's what we're not doing. Amen. Amen. A living testimony, y'all. A living testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's gonna be the next lesson. How are how is y'all gathering us? With a rubber arm 
popping out of the sky. <laughs> Not a rubber arm. <laughs> With a black drunk Jamaican cracking out of the sky. A dark Nephilim that Yoshi keep putting up. Yeah. A Power Ranger ninja nigga turtle. Yeah. From the <laughs> sewers of the streets of New York. <laughs> <laughs> With swords, <laughs> teenage nigga turtles. <laughs> With donkey black legs. <laughs> it's terrible. So, once again, Ezekiel 38. This is the last battle of Ezekiel 38, the war of Armageddon. This is not Babylon's destruction, this is the beast. Right, that comes up against us in the wilderness. After many days, thou shalt be visited. Go ahead, of Ezekiel. Who are we talking about? Who's going to be visited? After many days, Rosh, Gog, and Magog, Russia and China. In the latter years, right? This is not the end. This is the Ba'akrit, the end. Thou shalt come into the land that has been bought back from the sword. That's us. And is gathered out of many nations or peoples against the mountains. Now we all mountains. I was a mountain that came to holler, come let's be a bigger mountain, right? Against the mountains of Israel, which have been always wasted. We've been wasted always from beginning to end, never not. They had flu. Well, yeah, we, yeah, we did fly. They uh, grew wings and disappeared. <laughs> they had waited for a ninja nigga turtle to pop out the sky. <laughs> they had left, exited out of the nations. And all of them dwell or live safely, oh, all of them. Hallelujah. After Russia destroys Babylon, we've escaped. He's about to set up the new world order. But he's not going to know that we escaped for three and a half years. It's going to darn it look like all niggas was killed. Or we're going to become a part of the new world. Yeah, some of our niggas that came out uh, like the Mona and like a lot of people in Israel is going to become a part of that new world order. Yeah, they're going to become a part of that. that right? Yes, they are. And they're not going to know what happened to us? Oh. But we had left. And so after they discover us with his reign after many days, after he's reigned for three and a half years, right? Russia's been so anxious. He's been so wise to conquer, but he's going to be a fool in his rule. Mm. Right? He's been wise to destroy, but he's not going to save y'all <laughs> and his rule is going to be so tyrannical y'all that y'all is only giving him three and a half years mm. and then this fool is going to be so power, power hungry because he's taking the whole world now Babylon has never had the whole world Russia going to have the whole world nobody has ever had the whole world that he going to think mm. that he is the L above the stars yeah. mm -hmm. then when he discover the niggas escape. They in the wilderness chilling. This nigga going to become so zealed up that he going to come after us in the wilderness. And Yah is going to show up. Show up. We ain't going to pick up a sword. No, we not. We going to shout and call out the name of Yah. And y'all know the rest. Go back and look at my message, right? I'll post it up there what you need to look. What, what message is that? Hello? The no, uh, no, the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. The Feast of Tabernacles. What that's about. The cloud that covers the Shekinah glory. Mm -hmm. Right? We'll put cards up here on the video. So All right. Click on it. So that'll be the next lesson. Look forward to it. Stop letting these false prophets lie to you. I'm hollering as much as I can. You know they want my voice to go. They be like, her voice is only going. Dang, she's still talking. I'm still talking. I'm gonna still be talking until it's gone. It'll and then it. when it's gone, I've already like made duplicates of me. <laughs> <laughs> and other duplicates, right? <laughs> I'm in. It's Good. called Good. women Good. in black. <laughs> to continue, and my brothers, right, right, and duplicates of the spirit of the prophets. 
to holler to our neighbors, come out. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. The oh, ones that go yeah. before we are laying yeah. the path. One brick at a time, two bricks side by side, one, three bricks, and you got a road to the kingdom. Amen. I think that's it. All right. So, <coughs> hallelujah. Yeah, it's good. Hey. Hallelujah. That I would just like to say for those who are really listening and truly seeking, don't be afraid. Just fear we all made the jump. We all we got yeah, fear, yeah. Fear you got to fear yeah. Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom, and He's giving you the wisdom now to flee Babylon. And so get out of her, come out of her, and 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 truly see that Yah is trying to he, he's, he's chosen the people from the beginning of time. And so we're here to walk it out as best as we can. We're not perfect. We got work to do. We're not saying we're perfect. But we're just we're, we're calling to those that are willing to listen and willing to hear. And so that's that's this just come 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 on out of her. If you listen to the whole message, you are now held accountable. That's right. Mm. <laughs> you call. There you go, police. <laughs> yeah, make a choice. Make a, make a choice. Amen. No, and there's a video actually the, that. Uh, Subai has put up. It's it's count the cost as well. Amen. Before you and don't don't come over here acting a fool as we said. Count they the cost. Right. Yeah. All and right. That, and that don't mean you're flocking over this way. Because <laughs> <laughs> right? people will hear that and be like, oh, I got an assembly to go to. No, so we, there's a path, yeah. there's a highway, there's seven high, yeah. there's seven paths carved out, y'all. Mm -hmm. I cannot be on seven paths at one time. And no way is everybody going to be on the same portion of the path that I'm on. But those of us that are willing to be the forerunners, y'all know the, that's called the front ranks of the line, y'all. Yeah. Those are the ones that's fearless. If you ain't that, you can't walk with me. If you still not shutting off, if you don't want to repent, if you scared of your life, you can't walk with me. You dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're not ready. You go, Let somebody lay down the foundations of faith first so you can help walk. You be helped in your walk. But walking with somebody when you weak is only going to hold other people back and become a burden. Mm -hmm. I said again that I never called nobody to be walking with me like that. However, y'all Negroes have stalked me, scoured through my videos and try to find out every Word. piece of information oh and to find out where I am. Oh my Y'all, I'm running from y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running from sure y'all. Yeah, yeah. Right. You make sure you the shepherd. But you know, that's right. She was a shepherd. Y'all yeah. not gonna put that on me, right? Yeah. I'm running from y'all. Sure. Go ahead. Make sure we leave in that mentality of Babylon and Babylon as well. That's right. Because if you come out here with the mentality of Babylon, you're not gonna last long. You you damning yourself. Mm -hmm. So you gotta physically and mentally come out of her. Mm hmm Okay. Mm hmm And strip the covetousness. Pull of it, y'all. And that's the fornication mm -hmm. and that's the idolatry. Where mm -hmm. brother Brett at? Shma Yisrael. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, bark, Brett. <laughs> give, give him that old man. Uh, Coming up, be a believer. Don't get caught in the unbelief. The unbelief is lost. And be, be obedient. Be obedient, yes. Follow the word of Yah. That's the pathway out. Come on, bark some more, Brett. <laughs> 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 yeah, what more can I tell you? I mean, what? Um, Get like angry. Man, like, and if you like don't come out, the, like the man that was in the ocean, drowning, asking for Yah to come to him to save him, mm. and the man comes by the rowboat, and he tells him, "No, that's okay. I'm waiting on Yah." Yeah, Ooh, that's, oh, yes, yeah, like, that's right. Right. in a motorboat. He said, no, no, that's okay. I'm waiting on Yah. Mm -hmm. you know, a yacht comes by. And he tells the yacht, no, no, that's okay. I'm waiting on Yah. Mm -hmm. A helicopter. And, and he goes to meet Yah. And he said, I was waiting on you. What happened? I told him, I came to you three times. You didn't listen. Mm 
Yep, right. rejected me three times. Three times. Foolishness. Yeah. Don't be caught up as a fool. The uh, enemy of your faith is doubt. Come in. Believe. Don't get caught in the unbelief. Mm -hmm. You call me nigga all day if that means that I don't die in the rapture. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is what they say. Right. But no, we're not getting called nigga left no, or right. Mm -hmm. Right. And in fact, uh, if we can find our persecutors and enemies that actually we are, that's happening. We all also find comfort in, in a handful that is blessing us along the way to keep us comfort that we know. I'll be like, I'll see you in the kingdom. Right. I'll, I'll save you later. Yeah. And we're definitely laying down a reputation that when we go ahead of y'all, y'all think I'm here. I'm not. I'm there. And I'm there, and y'all think I'm here, and I'm all, everywhere and nowhere, and right? everywhere and nowhere, <laughs> and all you gotta ask for is the way to Zion. Where is the singing Zionos? <laughs> Where is the singing Ziana, Zion? And you'll find us, the black people <laughs> that escaped. <laughs> yeah. But uh, by the time you find us, I would have fled again. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shout out. We can joke all day. Um, and it's not a joke. Everything I'm saying is, is truly true. I'm just saying it in a joking way to be so you can receive it. Uh, and I'm gonna shut up again and regress and retreat and do as we always do. Uh, y'all can close us out. And then we're gonna close out with y'all, oh remnant. And we're gonna do the memorial of Yahushua amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, so we want to thank y'all for his word today so that we may get it in our hearts, that we may understand, and that we may continue to not be prideful because we came out and we still got to shed, and so there's still continuous work that we must do, and so we know that a man take, let a man take heed lest he falls, and so let us, let us continue to remember that and put that in our hearts. And so we bless your story together. Baruch atah Yahweh, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Asher natan lanu Torah emet, Lekai olam natah betrukenu, Baruch atah Yahweh, Notein ha'torah. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh. King of the universe, who has given us your Torah truth and implanted within us everlasting life. Amen. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. On that note, shalom, shalom to the remnant. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 shalom.